Hey guys. Here's a fanfic called A New Cause. Summary, Naruto gets fed up with Konoha and leaves. On his journey he runs into an unexpected group and decided to join them. After several years Naruto returns, but what are his intentions and how far will he go to accomplish them? Naruto trained by Itachi, Kisame and Kyuubi. Enjoy, Chapter 1, Rethinking. It had been two weeks now since Naruto, Neji, Shikamaru, Kuji and Kiba had returned from their mission, which had been a success. Not all was well though, Neji and Kuji were in ICU and Kiba was going to be bedridden for at least a month. Shikamaru's wounds weren't that bad and he was on back active duty within a week. Naruto, even though his injuries were by far the worst of the group with the exception of maybe Neji, recovered and was released from the hospital in three days. Sasuke had recovered surprisingly fast and was now on a recovery program that consisted mostly of training, with the exception of several hours of psychiatric therapy. Of course he was under Anbu surveillance 24-7 as ordered by the Hokage. Naruto's house. Late at night Naruto was sitting on his bed lost in thought. Since the mission had been a success, Naruto expected the villagers to actually praise him or at the very least reduce the cold stares, but that was not the case. The villagers actually blamed him for being a bad influence on the Uchiha air and treated him even worse. Damn that Sasuke. He never does anything beneficial and he's still loved by everyone, thought Naruto angrily. If anything, he's responsible for Neji's, Kuji's and Kiba's condition. And as soon as he's out of the hospital guess who decides to train him. Kakashi, of course. Why the hell does that traitor get all the attention? Naruto's tone was becoming even angrier. I saw that bastard not too long ago. Dobi this and Dobi that, was all he said. As if nothing even happened. Ah. This damned village is getting on my nerves, Naruto was now screaming inside his head. Damn it shut up kid. Roared the QB dot if you're so angry why don't you just kill them? Oh that's right, I forgot, you're so innocent you wouldn't hurt a fly, said QB sarcastically. I'm not like you fox, I don't just go on killing sprees because I feel like it. You are so weak, you know that? I'm not weak. Don't you dare call me that, stupid fox. You know you should rebel against these people. Leave the village, leave your so-called friends, get away from all the pain they're causing you. You don't owe them anything, why should you stay? Question the QB. We can train far away from this village, what do you think kid? I can make you really strong. So strong even the Hokage won't be able to rival your power. The QB grinned evilly in his cage. If I can make him leave the village it would be so much easier, though the QB hoping that he made his argument strong enough for the boy. On the outside Naruto was heavily considering the QB's offer. The QB was right Naruto didn't owe the village anything, more like the village owed him, and if this was their way of paying him back then screw them. If kind words didn't get through to them, then maybe violent actions would. That's right, I don't owe these bastards anything. They can rot in hell for all I care, announced Naruto. All right QB, let's go. Let's leave this godforsaken place. Naruto quickly packed up some bare essentials, a change of clothes, toothbrush, money and all of his weapons. He didn't bother packing food since he could always hunt. He suddenly noticed the necklace Tsunade had given him and his forehead protector. Naruto ripped off the necklace and threw it on his bed. However, when he went to do the same thing with his forehead protector he was stopped by the QB. Kid keep that. It may be a painful reminder, but if you ever need to get back in the village it would make things a lot easier. Yeah you're right, thanks Fox. Cut it out with the that call me by my name, snarled QB. Alright QB, will do. Then what are you waiting for, let's get moving. Better to leave this place secretly so that they don't send Anbu. Having spent all his life in Konoha, Naruto knew many ways to get out of the village in secret. However, luck wasn't on Naruto's side today. Just as he was about to jump over the northern wall, a Chonin guard grabbed him by the shoulder and demanded to know what he was doing. Naruto's emotions ranged from shock, at being caught, to very pissed that he hadn't been able to slip out. Before the Chonin guard could raise his defenses, Naruto smashed his fist into the guard's stomach knocking him out and proceeded to quickly leave. However, he had forgotten that the guards always patrolled in pairs, thus he did not notice when the other Chonin disappeared in order to report to the Hokage. Hokage office. Tsunade was sleeping with her head on her desk surrounded by mountains of paperwork when suddenly there came a frantic knock on the door. She barely had time to wake up as the door burst open and a babbling Chonin burst in. Shut up and calm down. I can't understand a word you are saying, yelled Tsunade, who was angry at the rude awakening. I'm sorry Hokage-sama, it's just that I just saw a ninja running away from the village, said the frightened Chonin. 
This caught the Hokoye's attention. Who is this ninja? She asked in a serious tone, afraid that Sasuke was attempting to leave again. Uzumaki Naruto, announced the guard. What? screamed the god I'm. Send out an Anbu team to bring him back right away. Alive, mind you. Ordered Tsunade. Yes, Hokage-sama. And get Jiraiya and Kakashi in here. It will be done Hokage-sama, said the Chonin as he left. I hope this doesn't turn into something serious, though Tsunade, I hope Naruto doesn't do anything stupid, like try to fight the Anbu. Chapter 2, Not Coming Back. As soon as Naruto was outside of the village the QB pointed out that someone will definitely notice that the guard had been knocked out. Well what the hell was I supposed to do? Countered Naruto angrily. Damn it kid, I'm not saying you did anything wrong replied the QB with a snarl, I'm just trying to say that your Hokage might already know. No, she's not my Hokage anymore interrupted Naruto. Whatever, you should quicken your pace before. But before the QB could finish his sentence Naruto smelled something. The weird thing was that Naruto's mind registered it as four people with medium to high amounts of chakra. What the hell is going on here? Wondered Naruto. My chakra is enhancing your senses. Those people that you smell are most likely an Anbu team, looks like our escape wasn't perfect, like I suspected. Shit. I'm gonna have to take on four Jounins. Yelled Naruto. Before the QB could answer, the Anbu had already caught up and surrounded Naruto. Uzumaki Naruto said an Anbu in a bird mask as he approached Naruto. We have orders from the Hokage to bring you back. Please come with us peacefully, we don't want to kill you, unless it's absolutely necessary. Hmm, they are all releasing substantial killer intent, but there are also traces of fear. How the hell do I know all this? Wondered Naruto as he processed the information. Must be those improved senses the QB was talking about, but I don't have time to ponder that now. Never thought Konoha would fight to keep their precious little demon, said Naruto in a taunting voice with a slight smirk. Then suddenly Naruto's eyes and voice turned frighteningly cold. Well sorry, I'm not going back and you can't force me, Birdman. Inside Naruto's head. QB, I'm gonna need your help with this. Obviously, said the fox in a taunting voice, and Naruto scowled. Alright, here's what we'll do, I'll give you some chakra to fight with, but if you're still losing then I'll take over, QB compromised knowing how much Naruto didn't like losing control of his body. Yea whatever, just give me back control as soon as you kill them, agreed the blonde. Back to reality. The Anbu shook a little as they felt Kyuubi's chakra being released. So he's actually going to fight, thought one of the Anbu with a cat mask. This could be difficult if he's using the demon's churka, thought another with an ape mask. I'll finally have my revenge on the demon fox, happily thought the last one with a ferret mask. Scared already? Asked Naruto. Huh? What did you say brat? said the bird-masked Anbu scoffed. Take him down, he ordered. You'll never take me alive, Naruto shouted with barred teeth. All four Anbu disappeared from Naruto's line of vision. I might have underestimated them, frowned Naruto. No matter, they have no chance against me and the fox together. Stop calling me fox, you damn brat, said the QB. Try this demon boy, said the cat-masked Anbu while throwing several kunai at Naruto. Within a blink of an eye Naruto disappeared from his spot and the kunai hit nothing but the tree trunk Naruto had been on. Where is that monster? Said the ferret-masked Anbu. Nobody can disappear like that. That's inhuman. Up there, shouted the one with the cat mask as he pointed towards the moon. Nice try demon. Screamed the ferret-masked Anbu. It took less than a second before the next wave of kunai, this time with explosive notes, flew toward Naruto. Try something more original would you, sighed the blonde. Naruto kicked the kunai and deflected them toward the bird-masked Anbu. With his quick reflect the Anbu threw shuriken straight against the incoming attack and they exploded on contacts. The bird-masked Anbu's face turned into a smile, only to be replaced with a frown as soon as he saw Naruto appear behind the smoke, without a scratch on him. Naruto lunged his fist toward the said Anbu only to be met with a kick from the cat-masked Anbu and before Naruto could recover, his back received another blow from the ferret-masked Anbu. Naruto flew through many branches, but right before hitting a huge tree trunk with an expected loud crack, the boy concentrated it to his feet and stuck to the trunk. No way, exclaimed one of the Anbu. He's still standing. I guess it is my turn to join the fun, thought the ape-masked Anbu jumping off from the tree where he was perching and observing the battle. Bastards, said Naruto while wiping blood off the corner of his mouth, you guys are not going to win. Cage Bunshine no Jutsu, 
the image of Naruto suddenly blurred as he split into countless copies of himself. If you want to outnumber your opponents might as well go for a larger number than four. All of the clones reached for their kunai, in unison, and split into four groups each attacking a different Anbu member. However, before the clones could even reach their enemies, the ape masked Anbu jumped into the air and made several hand seals, rain of 1000 needles. Out of nowhere needles start showering the clones and one by one they disappeared in a poof of smoke. The ape masked Anbu landed on the ground lightly on one foot, while the other Anbu sighed with relief. Not yet. He's still there, warned the ape masked Anbu. In the middle of the needles, the real Naruto was still standing with half a dozen needles sticking through his right arm, which was shielding his head, and several more dozen in his torso and legs. The four Anbu trembled as Naruto's previously disappearing chakra suddenly starts to burn around him. I will not give up so easily, Naruto said and slowly raised his hands to pluck the needles off his body. Losing too much blood and chakra in the process he started to lose concentration. His vision blurred and his knees gave away slowly. Let's just kill him. Everyone knows that he is a monster. No one is going to blame us if we kill him, persuaded the ferret masked Anbu. Ya let's, agrees the cat masked Anbu, I want to get my revenge too. The four Anbu surrounded Naruto and prepared hand seals. Sutan, water tower no jutsu, exclaimed the cat masked Anbu. Doden, land crush no jutsu, yelled the ferret masked Anbu. Fuuatan, gale wine no jutsu, said the bird masked Anbu. The ape masked Anbu instantly followed the rest and connecting hand seals together. He stopped suddenly and with a jerk, stared at Naruto, raising his fingers to his mouth and aiming at Naruto, Katan, fire tornado no jutsu exclaimed the ape masked Anbu. Naruto looked up toward the four Anbu to see the four massive ninjutsus heading straight for him from different sides. The four Anbu just smiled and chuckled when the fire, water, wind, and earth attacks hit the spot where Naruto was standing, wiping it out completely. Chapter 3, A Turn in the Road Unbelievable. The kid's body is still in one piece, exclaimed the ferret masked Anbu. Let's just bring his body back to the village. I'm tired, said the ape masked Anbu lazily, inside Naruto's head. Kid. Wake up kid. What was that, huh? They beat you so easily, teased QB. Shut up. I am trying, you know. There are four of them, growled Naruto. You will never cut it. Now let me take over already, QB urged impatiently. Fine, Naruto says hoarsely, but when you are done give me my body back. Back to reality. What is going on here? Asked the bird masked Anbu. They all stared at Naruto's body with awe as the seal on the blonde's stomach started to glow, then spin and fade until it was barely visible. This kid is freaking me out, said the cat masked Anbu, is he dead or not? Want to take a guess? Kyuubi's voice asked through Naruto's mouth. Naruto stood, but kept his head down. Suddenly a huge amount of chakra surrounded his body. As his body seemed to burn in the middle of the chakra, all of his wounds started to heal. The cuts and burns closed up and leaving no scars. Bones were put into place with several cracks and pops. When Naruto went through the next change, the four Anbu started to tremble in fear. I don't think this is the same person anymore, says the ape masked Anbu, look. Naruto's fingers tensed and slowly his nails grow longer. His whisker marks widened, and fangs lengthened. You're right monkey. I am not Naruto, sort of, Kyuubi said while grinning. The Kyuubi possessed Naruto slowly tilted his head up so that the Anbu could see his eyes, which were not blue and innocent anymore, but orange-red and feline-like. Let's get out of here, now. Suggested the ape-masked Anbu. This is beyond us now. This is the demon. What's the sudden rush? Don't you want to stay and play? Says the Kyuubi with an evil sadistic smile and licks his lips. I thought you wanted to get revenge? The Anbu seemed to be even more shaken by this and started to run away. The QB only chuckles as he watched the four, supposedly elite shinobi, scramble through the tree branches. I think that is a fair head start, mumbled the demon as he smirked. With extreme speed QB jumped through the trees and landed in front of the Anbu. You've got to be kidding me. Is that your best? Asked the QB. ARHG. I'll take you on myself, demon, screamed the ferret masked Anbu as he concentrated his chakra on his palm and slammed his hand on the ground. A rocky handle shot out of the ground. The said Anbu member grabbed the handle and pulled out a katana from the ground. Jumping from the ground, the ferret masked Anbu tried to strike QB midair. The fox expertly dodged the attack without any difficulty. The ferret masked Anbu uses his free hand to throw shuriken toward QB, who simply caught all the shuriken in one swift move and chucked them back at his opponent. 
the ferret masked Anbu deflected the shuriken with his sword and lunged toward Kyubi. The demon raised his left palm against the sword. With a loud crack, the sword shatters as soon as it touched Naruto's palm. Instantly Kyubi snuck in and grabbed the Anbu by the neck. Isn't it sweet to have your own body? Too bad I'm going to take yours away, Kyubi says with a snarl. The fox tightened his grip around the neck and it started to crack under the pressure. The ferret masked Anbu squirmed, trying to escape the grip, but it was futile as his neck snapped only a moment later and the ferret masked Anbu suddenly stopped moving. Just to make sure he was dead, the QB uses his claws to rip the right side of neck completely open. He savored the taste of blood as it poured out of the wound and helped feed his bloodlust. Let's see if you can beat both of us? Asked the cat masked Anbu and the bird masked Anbu together. They jumped toward QB with kunai ready. The QB deflected the first strike by the bird masked Anbu with his claws. All three keep on jumping on and off branches around them, while sparks shot off from colliding attacks. The bird masked Anbu reached into his vest and pulled out a windmill shuriken. He opened it and threw it toward the Kyubi's back. Kyubi quickly turned around and caught the large shuriken before disappearing. Where did it go? Asked the cat masked Anbu, this thing is too fast. Cage shuriken no jutsu, a voice yelled out above them. The two Anbu looked up in horror as hundreds of windmill shuriken flew right at them from every side. Both Anbu let out a scream that echoed through the forest. What just happened here? Asks the ape masked Anbu in a trembling voice, my whole squad has been eliminated. Well. There is still you, Kyubi says from behind him. The ape masked Anbu froze in from the killer intent. His body tensed and he couldn't move. Pathetic humans, Kyubi scoffed. Thanks for the windmill shuriken, it was very useful. The ape masked Anbu slowly turned his head only to see claws lunging toward his neck. No. Screamed the human right before he died. Anbu this, Anbu that. They are nothing but a bunch of sissies, scoffed the QB as he took a look around. Ah, the free world. But it seems it's time to go now, QB said sadly as he felt Naruto trying to regain control. The orange-red swirling chakra disappeared and Naruto fell to one knee breathing heavily back in control of his body. He slowly stood up and looked over the disaster area of where the Anbu were killed. He stares in disgust, fear and, surprisingly, awe at what had just happened. The QB sure has a shitload of power, was the only coherent sentence that Naruto was able to construct from all his random thoughts. That was fun. Kid, you really should let me out more often, said a satisfied QB. Can't you do any clean kills? God. This is sickening. Thought Naruto with a frown on his face. I'll remember that next time you ask me for help. Damn fox, mumbled Naruto. Little did either of them know, but two figures had watched the entire battle from a safe distance and had now decided to make their appearance. Even with his increased hearing, Naruto barely heard the two land on the ground behind him. Who the hell is it now? Thought Naruto in annoyance. What the hell do yo? said Naruto as he was turning around, but shock rippled through his body and the words froze in his throat. In front of him stood two tall figures in black cloaks with red clouds painted on them and high collars that covered the bottom of their faces up to the nose. They both wore straw hats that had cloth hanging down all around the edge completely covering their heads only thinning out a little in the front, so that they could actually see. Since they both had their heads raised, Naruto could plainly see each person's forehead protector. The tall one, who looked to be about 6 foot 8 had a wrapped up katana on his back the tip of which almost touched the ground and the handle ended about a foot over his head. His forehead protector was that of the hidden mist and had a line cut across the surface from one end to the other, the calling card of a missing nin. He had small white eyes and had markings on both cheeks that looked like gills. The other one, who was about 5 foot 6 had a hidden leaf forehead protector that also had a line cut across the surface from one end to the other. His most distinct feature was the fully developed Sharingan in both eyes. Hello, Naruto, greeted the shorted of the two. Meanwhile in the Hokage office. The Anbu have been dispatched over 20 minutes ago, but still no sign of Kakashi or Jiraiya, where the hell are they? Asked an angry Tsunade. Just then the door opened to reveal two white-haired people. Damn IT Kakashi. Why are you always late? Yelled Tsunade. Is something the matter? Asked Kakashi in a completely calm tone. Yes something is the matter, a certain student of yours, Tsunade pointed at both Kakashi and Jiraiya, has beaten up a guard and fled from the village. What? yelled the Jounin and Senen at the same time. That impossible, why would Naruto leave? asked Jiraiya. That doesn't matter right now, we have to go after him, said Kakashi. I've already sent a team of Anbu after him. 
under strict orders to bring him back alive, but since he's your student, and your responsibility, I want you to go and make sure that he is brought back safely. Ordered Tsunade. Hi, Hokage-sama, they said before disappearing in a poof of smoke. Please be all right Naruto, thought Tsunade. Though something tells me that, unlike with Sasuke, we won't be able to get you back. Back in the forest. Naruto was way too shocked to even respond to the greeting. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. What am I gonna do now? Panicked a terrified Naruto. These guys are strong. If I remember correctly they want my power. This could be a fortunate meeting, thought the QB. Hey kid, see if you can join up with them. What are you crazy? They'll kill me. No, they want my power and if you can use my power then you will be a very valuable asset for them. And they will probably train you to, reason the fox. That'll be a load off of my shoulders, thought the QB. QB didn't mind making his vessel stronger, but Naruto was so stubborn and annoying that it would just be easier and less nerve-wracking if someone else did it. He couldn't, however, entrust this to anyone in that godforsaken village, oh no, they would only keep him weak. You sure about this? Asked a now less scared and more skeptic Naruto. Yes. Trust me damn it. Growled the QB. Hmm, if the QB is right then this wouldn't be such a bad deal. No, not a bad deal at all, mused Naruto. The blonde shock had already worn off and he was now standing proud and tall, beaming with confidence. It seems we were never properly introduced, my name is Uzumaki Naruto said the boy proudly. However, I am no longer part of the hidden leaf. This reversal in attitude confused both Akatsuki members, but they didn't let it show. I am Uchiha Itachi, said the shorter of the two hidden leafs missing nin. And I am Hoshigaki Kisame, hidden mist missing nin, said the one with the katana. You should consider yourself a missing nin too. Especially after what you just did. Whatever I don't care, Itachi-san. Kisame-san. Itachi's head jerked suddenly Itachi-san? What the hell does he mean by calling me that? Kisame was a little surprised that the kid would instantly respect him, especially after the circumstances surrounding their last meeting. What does the Akatsuki want me for? Asked Naruto. I don't know, our orders are just to capture you, answered Itachi in a cold tone. Cold eyes, cold tone, cold everything. Now I see where Sasuke gets his attitude from, commented Naruto in his head. Remembering his old teammate made Naruto frown, that bastard, son of a bit. No, no use in remembering him and worrying about him. I have a new life ahead of me now. Well. Um. Do you think it would be possible for me? To. Join the Akatsuki? Asked Naruto hesitantly. Itachi and Kisame exchanged glances. He wants to join? By his own free will? Whispered Kisame. Well from what we just saw the kid does have potential. I don't think our higher echelons would refuse, whispered Itachi. Not that it really matters, as long as we bring him back with us we're fine. Then turning back to Naruto, Itachi said, I don't think that would be a problem, however the decision isn't for us to make since we do not run this organization. Then can you take me to the ones that do make the decisions? Asked a hopeful Naruto. Yes, we have orders to bring you back anyway, said a satisfied Kisame. Oh good, no more chasing after this kid. Then let's go, this scene is bound to attract attention, said Itachi while looking cautiously in the direction of Konoha. With that the company of three leapt up into the trees and was gone. Chapter 4, New Arrangements It was getting brighter now, light was starting to graze the mountaintops in front of them. They had been running for several hours now, exactly how long Naruto did not know. His mind was more focused on the destination rather than the journey and even though he hadn't slept at all in the last 24 hours he still managed to keep up with Itachi and Kisame. This kid is really something, thought Kisame. I was sure we would have had to take a pit stop, but he doesn't even show the slightest signs of exhaustion. Great stamina, for a kid his age, thought Itachi. Even thought it is probably due to the QB. We will soon be crossing into the mountain country. They don't have a hidden village so getting in will be a lot easier, informed Kisame. Don't the border guards stop you to ask questions? Won't they see that you are missing Nin? Asked Naruto referring to their forehead protectors. That's what Genjutsu is for, Naruto, curtly replied the Uchiha. Right, Naruto nodded in embarrassment. Let's slow down to walking speed now, ordered Itachi. We don't want to attract attention by continuing like this. Understandable, blending in with the crowd, more or less, reasoned Naruto looking at how the Akatsuki members were dressed. Yes, the less attention you attract the better, this is one of the basic principles of stealth, lectured the QB. You'll learn more later. 
The border station soon came into view and the group slowed themselves down almost instantaneously. The station itself wasn't anything impressive, just two houses standing opposite each other on each side of the road. In between them was a small gate that opened outward to let people in and out of the country. Itachi and Kisame performed a genjutsu that made them look like simple farmers. Naruto was also about to change himself, but Itachi stopped him reasoning that he didn't look suspicious and that the border guards haven't received any news yet. Actually, I think he should cover up those whisker marks, suggested Kisame. This way the pursuers don't know where to find us. That's true. Hold on a moment Naruto, said Itachi as he performed another genjutsu that not only hid Naruto's whisker marks, but also made him look like the son of a farmer. I thought you were just going to hide the whisker marks, whined Naruto in confusion. It's not that he particularly minded his new look, it was necessary after all, the problem was just that he didn't like being deceived and or lied to. We can't be too careful, replied Itachi in a stern voice. The eldest Uchiha had never been good at dealing with kids and all their misplaced whining. Once they got to the gate, the guard lazily made his way out of the building and asked what business they had coming to the mountain country. Itachi made up something along the lines of going to visit relatives, or some shit related to family. Naruto put on his happy mask and acted all excited about seeing his sister after so many years. All in all they got through the security quite easily. The trio continued at a leisurely pace until the border was out of sight and then instantly picked up the pace, albeit not nearly as fast as when they were running through the fire country. We don't need to travel really fast now, explained Itachi. We are just going until the nearby town, so we can rest for a little while. Meanwhile north of Konoha. Kakashi and Jiraiya were running through the forest looking for Naruto, following the path the Anbu had taken. I hope we can get to him before something bad happens, thought Kakashi. Damn it Naruto. This is not the time to be running off, with the village in its current state we need every single shinobi we have. I'll have to have a serious talk with him later, angrily thought the Sanin. Suddenly Kakashi and Jiraiya felt an uncomfortable chill go down their spines. I have a bad feeling about this, muttered Jiraiya. We best be prepared for a possible fight, said Kakashi as he raised his defense. However, something tells me that we might be a little too late. About a minute later, both Jounin and Sanin smelled blood. This can't be good, said Kakashi and increased his pace. How can we smell blood, but not be able to see where it's coming from? He wondered. It would be understandable if we were of the Inuzuka clan, but otherwise. Jiraiya's face grew even more serious, there can only be one explanation, there must be a massive amount of blood, gravely concluded the old man. The Anbu tracks seem to be going in the direction of where this smell originates. Maybe they followed it too, Kakashi tried to lighten the situation, but it didn't work. The deeper they traveled into the forest the thicker the smell of blood became. We are definitely closing it on, whatever it is, thought both men as they exchanged worried looks. After several more minutes of running they made it to where Naruto had fought against the Anbu. The sight that lay before them literally shook both of them to the core. The small forest clearing was predominantly covered in blood. Everything, absolutely everything, had some amount of blood on it. It was an absolutely disgusting sight. Kakashi barely held back his dinner and Jiraiya just simply stared at the clearing unable to move or say anything. My god. I haven't seen anything like this in 13 years, said Kakashi in a trembling voice with shivers running down his spine, arms, and legs. Yes, this looks demonic all right, said Jiraiya instantly understanding what Kakashi was referring to. Please god, the seal didn't break. Just please, mentally pleaded Jiraiya. Naruto probably lost control again, said the copy ninja. But as far as I know, the only time that happens is when he's under great emotional stress. Jiraiya took a moment to digest that information. If that was the case then Naruto must have been provoked somehow, said Jiraiya. Since he most certainly isn't the kind of person to give up, especially control of his body. The toad Sanin looked closer at the mess before them, I really wonder what happened here. The good news is this is all still fresh, less than an hour has passed since this fight took place, said Kakashi. Naruto is probably still relatively close to the village, both Leaf Nin silently prayed for that to be true. Considering the fact that we can't feel that demonic chakra anymore, I'd say that Naruto has calmed down, at least a little bit, said Jiraiya with a small glimmer of hope of his face. The two of us can't possibly handle all this territory, sighed the Sanin pointing in all the directions Naruto could have gone. Kakashi, report back to Tsunade about this and tell her to gather up some manpower to search for him, he ordered. I'll stay here and try to track him. If I find anything I'll draw arrows on trees. Kakashi nodded and was gone instantly. 
Tracking him is going to be rather difficult since the smell of blood is covering most every other smell in the area. Looking around Jiraiya noticed that there were several footprints in the bloodied grass. They were all small. A child's foot, mused Jiraiya. Well, it's good that he's still alone. Jiraiya then started looking for clues as to where Naruto could have gone. He looked around the outside of the clearing and noticed that no footprints led in or out. Hence the Sanin reason that Naruto must have been traveling through the trees. Jiraiya instantly jumped up into the surrounding trees and after only a few minutes of search saw a bloody footprint on one of the branches. All right, now I can follow him, thought the toad Sanin. With any luck I'll have him back in the village before sunrise, smirked Jiraiya as he jumped forward. The trail was rather easy to follow since Naruto made no attempt to cover up after himself. After several minutes Jiraiya realized that the trail was a straight line and increased his speed. Good thing Naruto doesn't know how cover his tracks, however as soon as he thought that the tracks ended abruptly. What the? Jiraiya decided to look several trees ahead thinking Naruto might have jumped farther than all the other times. He still found nothing. That's weird. The old man went back to the last footprint for a more thorough examination. According to the depth of the outline, the fact that it's only one footprint and the smudge on the toe side, it looks as if he was still running, but then where the hell did he go? Wondered Jiraiya with a very confused look on his face. Something inside of him told him to backtrack a little in hopes of finding some clues. About 20 footprints back he noticed an abnormality, this footprint seemed to be smudged differently. Aha! It looks as if he jumped to the left here. Clever, clever, but you'll have to do better than that. Jiraiya jumped to the left and didn't have to search long before he found a new trail of footprints there. Just like last time, it's a straight line. I can freely increase my speed then. Though, again after following this new line for a while Jiraiya soon found that it came to another dead end. Not again. Grumbled Jiraiya as he was forced to backtrack again. This time only 10 footprints back, the Sanin found a footprint that was smudged to the left. Damn it. Jiraiya cursed softly under his breath, I need to start paying attention to every footprint. Jiraiya briefly wondered how the supposedly delinquent blonde had suddenly become so good, before completely focusing on the task at hand. After about 30 or so footprints, Jiraiya noticed that Naruto turned left again. Not paying this pattern much heed, Jiraiya simply followed this new trail. In another 20 footprints Naruto again turned left, what the hell is he doing? Thought Jiraiya once again changing direction. Within several minutes, Jiraiya finally noticed that his surroundings looked surprisingly familiar. I feel like I've been here not too long ago, mused Jiraiya and looked around more intently. That's when he realized what Naruto had done, that damn kid. Screamed Jiraiya in his mind, he was already planning a punishment for Naruto for making a fool of him. Find anything Jiraiya-sama? Jiraiya turned around to find Kakashi crouching down looking at the footprints. You're back soon, said that Sanin in a strained tone. Not really, it's been over an hour, stated Kakashi. An hour, yelled Jiraiya. Well yes, I reported to the Hokage. Told her about everything that we found here. Then showed her on a map approximately where this happened, so that she could better strategize where to send other shinobi, explicated the younger shinobi in a calm voice. She is going to gather more forces to look for him at dawn. Jiraiya nodded in understanding, but looked back down at the ground. These are his tracks are they not? Asked Kakashi while pointing at the footprints. Yes, but if you follow them they either end up as a dead end or they keep turning left until you come back here, said Jiraiya in obvious annoyance. That's interesting, Naruto was never been very big on stealth. He prefers loud entrances, if you know what I mean, said Kakashi with a slightly joyful hint in his voice. Yeah, that's what worries me, replied a concerned Jiraiya. How come now, suddenly, he can come up such tricks that can deceive even me? Back with Naruto. Naruto, Itachi, and Kisame were now on the outskirts of a small town. We will spend a few hours here resting and getting a few necessary things, said Itachi. Oi, Itachi-san, are you sure that it's safe? I mean the leaf are probably tracking me already, so shouldn't we still be on the move? Asked a worried Naruto. I don't want to go to back to that fucking village. Naruto, I don't think you realize, but considering the speed we were just traveling at, we are actually about a week's worth of normal travel time away from Konoha, replied Kisame with a grin. Naruto's eyes widened. He knew they had traveled fast, but not that fast. I must have been really engrossed in my thoughts. Plus, Itachi and I used some tricks to fool any pursuers that may be following us, added the blue-faced missing nin. So don't worry Naruto they won't be showing up here anytime soon. First of all, we'll need a hotel, then we need to get you some new clothes Naruto, 
outlined Itachi while looking with disgust at what Naruto was wearing, and only then can we start thinking about food. Naruto looked down at himself and was about to say something, but Itachi interrupted, don't even think about objecting, Naruto, that outfit of yours screams please kill me and we don't need that kind of attention. No, I wasn't going to object, replied Naruto. It's just that, I don't really know what to get for myself, he finished in a timid voice. Don't worry about that will help you out, the Uchiha reassured him. Thanks, said Naruto with a big smile. This is great, no one in the village, not even my so-called friends, would help me with getting an outfit. That is of course if I could handle the stares and glares of the shop owners, customers, and the general crowd to actually get into the store and stay long enough to actually look at more than one outfit. Naruto wanted to shake in anger and resentment, but managed to restrain himself, calm down, Naruto, calm down. You are over and done with that place now. Never going back, so no need to think about it anymore, the demon container told himself. The three companions easily found a hotel, dropped off their stuff in the room and went shopping. They soon found a store that sold suitable clothes and after trying out several outfits and some mixing and matching Naruto was set in his new outfit. The blonde sandals were replaced by actual shoes, reason being that the mountain country was a lot colder than the fire country. Naruto's body was now clad in black pants and a black sleeveless mesh shirt. On top of the shirt was a dark red jacket that had several pouch pockets on the chest, two regular pockets on the sides and even a pocket on each sleeve. He was now also sporting a face mask that Itachi had suggested so that Naruto couldn't be identified by his whisker marks. They were considering a hat, but because of Naruto's free-flowing spiky hair they decided against it. After that the trio went to get some breakfast, after which they went back to the hotel room and slept until mid-afternoon. Best to leave now, said Itachi as he roughly woke up Naruto. We still have about a day's worth of travel, since we will be moving at a much more relaxed pace now. They left town without any trouble. Naruto was surprised to see that even though their group was drawing looks from the crowd that the looks were of amazement, surprise, or even admiration. This feels really. Nice. So good to be away from home, thought Naruto, instinctively calling Konoha home, and immediately mentally kicking himself for it. During the trip, Itachi explained that the mountain country, since it didn't have a hidden village, was in alliance with the earth country. So if anyone from this country wanted to hire a shinobi they would go to the hidden stone. Itachi politely answered all of Naruto's questions about the mountain country and about some other countries, except the water country because that was Kisame's specialty. Naruto found that both Itachi and Kisame were quite talkative and didn't seem to be so bloodthirsty as long as there was no one else around. They didn't arrive at the next village until midnight. Not wasting any time, they had a light dinner and went to sleep at the only hotel the village had to offer. They slept in late, since they had no deadline to keep and weren't really worried about Konoha Shinobi crossing the border and finding them. During lunch, Kisame showed Naruto a map of the entire ninja world, on which he pointed out approximately where they were in relation to Konoha. Naruto was amazed to have traveled that far in only a few hours. Kisame on the other hand was amazed that Naruto could keep up with them for such a long time, but of course did not tell the boy this. Once on the road again, Itachi announced that they would reach the Akatsuki lair by nightfall. As they got closer and closer to their destination Naruto became more and more worried. What if they don't accept me? What if they only want the power inside of me? What then? Oh shit, what have I gotten myself into? Maybe I shouldn't have come along? These were the kinds of questions that were floating around in Naruto's head. Hmm, the QB's not answering, I guess he must be asleep. Well that's alright, I don't really need him right now anyway. Itachi noticed Naruto's discomfort, but decided not to say anything. What could he say? He didn't know what the Akatsuki really wanted with Naruto, it wasn't even his concern. So they just continued walking. The group of missing Nin had been walking for about five hours, the sun was setting and the road was now going through the mountains. Suddenly to the right a narrow path came into view, it tightly passed right between two slabs of stone. The trio moved off the road and walked on this path until it ended in a dead end. Um, Itachi-san, are you sure you know where you're going? Asked Naruto looking up questioning at the stoic man. Itachi just glared at him. Well I mean it is dark and maybe you lost your way since. Before Naruto could finish Kisame picked him up him by the waist and jumped halfway up the mountain, using the sides of each slab to push off of. After several seconds they were standing about 500 feet above their former position, on a wide open ledge. Itachi landed right behind them and walked right up to the side of the mountain and started doing some hand seals. He then touched the stone in a few places and did a few more hand seals. Naruto was watching this in absolute confusion, what the hell is he doing? 
first he leads us to a dead end and now he's trying to perform some sort of jutsu on a wall. Weird. Just then a part of the wall simply dissolved right in front of the trio to reveal a dark tunnel. Chapter 5, New Life Naruto stared down the dark passage that seemed to have no end. Itachi and Kisame calmly started walking in, but noticed that Naruto wasn't following. Come on kid, let's go said Kisame. Noticing that Naruto wasn't even moving, Kisame grabbed Naruto by his arm and dragged him in. Naruto tried feebly to resist, but Kisame just pulled harder, forcing Naruto to follow him. They walked for what seemed like eternity down this dark corridor, which occasionally turned to the right or left. Naruto looked back at one point and noticed that he could no longer see the light of the entrance behind him. You can't go back now even if you want to, the boulder has moved itself back into place and is being held there by ninjutsu explained Kisame. Well isn't that reassuring thought Naruto sarcastically. Don't worry too much about it, said Itachi to the obviously scared Naruto just whatever you do don't be disrespectful. H. High stuttered Naruto. Soon after Naruto could see a faint light in front of them. As they got closer he made out the outline of a door right next to the torch that turned out to be the light source. Itachi opened the door and went in followed by Naruto and Kisame. The inside was well lit and it took Naruto a little while to get used to the brightness. The trio was now in what looked like a waiting room. Naruto caught sight of Itachi talking to some holes in the wall on the far side of the room. There was another door on the opposite the one they had come in. Kisame, what's Itachi doing? Asked Naruto. He's arranging a meeting, said Kisame. Oh. An hour later. The door next to the holes in the wall opened to reveal nothing but darkness. Itachi walked through the door and seemed to disappear into the darkness, Kisame tapped Naruto's shoulder and beckoned him to follow as he made his way to the door. Naruto hesitantly followed. Once inside the room he immediately noticed Itachi standing right in front of him and had to move slightly to the right, so as not to bump into him. I wonder if that's ninjutsu or genjutsu thought Naruto and started looking around the room. With the exception of a three candles, that stood equally spaced several yards in front of them, the room was absolutely dark. Behind each of the candles, Naruto could barely make out an outline of a person, but could not see their face. These people sure are secretive thought Naruto. Well what did you expect kid, that they would reveal their identity to every stranger? Said the QB in a bored tone. Guess not. Itachi's voice brought Naruto back to reality. Sir, we have completed our mission and brought Uzumaki Naruto back with us said Itachi in a calm voice. So I see, said the person in the middle however, it seems to me that there is more going on. Yes, this time around he came with us willingly, replied Itachi. And what would be the reason for this? Asked the figure on the right. At this point Kisame nudged Naruto a little bit, motioning for him to speak. Naruto gulped, but stepped forward spoke on his own accord, he was surprised when his voice came out calm and collected. I came willingly because I am no longer a part of the Hidden Leaf Village, and I was hoping that I could join the Akatsuki. A soft chuckle was heard from the person in the middle. So you want to join the Akatsuki? Asked the person on the left. Naruto said yes and nodded. And you think that because we've been hunting you we would like that? He continued. Naruto didn't say anything, but you could tell that he was getting nervous and that that had indeed been the reason. Suddenly Naruto could see the middle figure leaning toward the figure on the left, obviously whispering something. The talk between the Akatsuki echelons. A.N. This whole conversation is being whispered. Rito is the one in the middle, Kane is on the left, and Hijeko is on the right, Naruto's perspective. Perhaps we should consider this, said Rito. No we should proceed with the original plan, replied Kane. I know this isn't exactly what we had planned, but if he joins we will still have the power of the Nine Tails, countered Rito. But that kid will have it not us, said Kane. Look this way we can train him to be a weapon, said Hijeko. That's true, said Rito in this way is a lot more reliable. Who knows how many things could go wrong if we went with the original plan. That's true, the original plan is quite risky said Kane. Exactly so if we do this, we are guaranteed to have the power of the Nine Tails work for us and not against us said Rito. Fine, agreed Kane. Good then it's settled, said Rito however we still need someone to train him. I suggest we let Itachi and Kisame train him, said Hijeko. What? No. We need the Uchiha for far more important missions said Rito. No, I must agree, said Kane the Uchiha is from the same village and the Sharingan will most likely be helpful for interacting with the QB. True, true. Alright, yeah, said Rito contemplatively. A.N., 
these characters will be described later on. Back to regular talking. Naruto, we have decided to accept you into the Akatsuki said the person in the middle. A.N., no name since Naruto hasn't been introduced yet. Naruto instantly felt better and smiled a little. However the first three months will be your probation period said the person on the left. Naruto's smile faded a little bit. Now Naruto could you step out to the waiting room for a little while said the person in the middle. All right, said Naruto. As he turned around and was shocked to see that it wasn't a wall of darkness as he had expected. Where the wall of darkness was supposed to be there was nothing, Naruto could easily see the entire waiting room. Naruto quickly recovered from his shock and went back to the waiting room. As he sat down on one of the chairs he quickly glanced back to look at the other room and was shocked once again. The wall of darkness was there once again. What the hell? Did they put that up as soon as I walked out? Naruto questioned in his mind. Suddenly Naruto could hear the QB chuckle lightly, no kid, no, that's was never removed. It's a ninjutsu that on one side is absolutely black and you can't see through it no matter what, but on the other side it's completely transparent. Anyway just relax kid, they are only talking about your life in there said the QB placidly. Yeah, only said Naruto sarcastically hey I thought you were gonna actually teach me some new jutsus. Have some goddamn patience kid. Plus you need to strengthen your body quite a bit before I even bother with you. In the conference room. Itachi, Kisame, you have not completed your mission yet said Rito. What do you mean? We brought back the brat didn't we? Asked Kisame. Yes, but that was only the first part of the mission said Kane. The second part is training him isn't it? Asked Itachi. You always were sharp Itachi, said Rito yes, the second part of your mission is to train him. Apart from regular training we need him to easily be able to use the powers of the QB said Kane. Understood said Itachi. Yes, Sir Kisame reluctantly agreed. Damn I have to spend more time with that kid. I really hate brats. Also Kisame we will need for you to teach him water jutsus, said Rito we want him to be versatile in every element, so when he is done learning water jutsus, Kisame you will be replaced with Reiko so that he can learn lightning jutsus. We are to train him as an assassin right? Asked Itachi. After the next three months are up, you'll know what he is best at, that is what we will be training him as said Rito. Itachi and Kisame nodded and turned to go, but were stopped by Rito's voice. You are to stay here for the next three months. I'm sure you know where the training facilities are said Rito. Yes, sir said Itachi. Good then you're dismissed, said Rito. Itachi and Kisame then walked out to the waiting room to join Naruto. No matter what you said to Itachi and Kisame, you do want him to be an assassin, don't you? Asked Hijeko. Yes. And once he's trained we can finally put some of our long-term plans into action said Rito with a mischievous smile. In the waiting room. Come Naruto, said Itachi as he walked toward one of the walls of the waiting room. He pressed his fingers in a certain pattern against the wall and it disappeared to reveal a well-lit corridor. As they walked down the corridor Itachi explained a few things to Naruto. Naruto, Kisame and I will be training you from now on. Naruto nodded. I expect absolute cooperation, said Itachi. And don't whine, kid, added Kisame I have whining brats. Yes, sensei said Naruto. Good, I'm glad to see you agree, said Itachi now let's go to our rooms and then I'll give you a tour of the compound. After a few minutes of walking down many different corridors, they finally reached a corridor that had one door at the end of it. They opened the door to reveal a door with two beds, a table and several bookshelves. Naruto dropped off his stuff and was about to go out again when Itachi grabbed him by the shoulder and forced him back. He held out a black exercise suit and told Naruto to put it on, which Naruto promptly did. Your training starts now, said Itachi that is a weighted suit, which will help build your muscle mass and chakra control. We are going to start you off with 50 pounds. Naruto's eyes bugged out, 50 pounds already? Naruto half screamed. Shut up, commanded Itachi any more complaining and I'll have you wear 100 pounds. Naruto promptly shut up, but continued to grimace. From now on you will wear that suit all the time, except in the shower. I know I said that this will help with your chakra control, but for the first week I want you to walk around in that suit without using chakra. After the first week is done, you will get more weight added to the suit and you will be able to use chakra to help you walk around. Itachi then put 5 10 pound weights into Naruto's suit and beckoned Naruto to follow him on the tour of the compound. As soon as Naruto began to move, he immediately felt the extra weight. He noticed that it wasn't that bad to walk around with, but when he thought about fighting like this he realized that this would seriously slow him down. 
This sucks thought Naruto. Idiot, this help you like hell said the QB. I realize that, but it still sucks replied Naruto. The Akatsuki compound was a very large place, complete with a training room that was about 50 square yards. Next to the training room was the weapons room, which had every single weapon type imaginable, even some things that Naruto had never seen before. Itachi then showed Naruto the location of some practical rooms such as the bathroom, kitchen, which didn't have any ramen as Naruto sadly noted, and dining room. Hey Itachi-san when are you going to teach me that jutsu for getting in and out of this place? After the three month period is up replied Itachi. What? How did Naruto why? That's what is meant by probation, said Kisame if you do go outside we will always accompany you. Oh good, at least I won't be stuck in a cave for three straight months said Naruto. Well, of course we will be doing training outside said Itachi. Come now it's getting late, said Itachi you need sleep in preparation for training. Yes, sir. By the way Naruto, you'll be sleeping on the floor said Kisame in an amused voice. What? yelled Naruto. Well you need to build up your body, so just consider this part of your training said Kisame. Fine, fine, Naruto agreed reluctantly. The next morning, Naruto woke up with a backache and sore muscles. Damn it, how come I have to sleep on the floor? Naruto scowled. As if to his answer Naruto's mental question Itachi said, don't worry Naruto you'll get used to it and also it will build up your body's resistance. After washing up the three went to the kitchen and Itachi prepared some breakfast. After breakfast Itachi and Kisame took Naruto to the training room. Alright Naruto, now run around the room 100 times, after that 100 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and tree punching said Kisame also you will need to balance on a ball for 30 minutes. What? Isn't that a bit much? yelled Naruto. Shut up and do as you're told, said an angry Kisame. Okay, sensei sheepishly answered Naruto. Now for complaining you are going to be punished, said Itachi with an evil smile, Naruto gulped. You now have to run around the room 200 times. Now go, said Itachi forcefully. Naruto immediately started running not wanting to get even more laps added to his overwhelming several hours Naruto finally finished his assigned task and had some rest. Kisame sensei, I'm too tired to do any more today groaned Naruto while meditating. Itachi had left some time while Naruto while busy with his exercises. Don't complain Naruto sighed Kisame or do you want to get punished again? No sir quickly responded Naruto. Here have some water Kisame tossed a bottle to Naruto. Thanks sensei. Now don't drink too much, you aren't done for the day said Kisame. Now give me another round of everything you did today ordered Kisame. Oh man. Grown Naruto fine, whatever. Kid you need to do this to get strong said the QB. Yeah I guess so. Don't guess. No said the QB in a manner of fact tone now go run those laps and do those exercises they will help you a great deal. After he finished his exercises Naruto peacefully meditated with Kisame for several hours before going to eat dinner. What's for dinner Itachi sensei? Asked Naruto since Itachi was cooking again. Rabbit responded Itachi in a bored tone. Hmm. Meat. Said the QB licking his lips. Naruto slightly raised an eyebrow at QB's comment, it's not human meat so don't get so excited. Idiot, meat is meat, human or non-human. During all my long years in the free world I got to taste all the meat in the world and I can easily tell you which one is good and which one you shouldn't even touch. And how does rabbit rank? Asked Naruto. Well rabbit is good, but it's right below wolves. Wolves are really good said QB as a sadistic tone. Right. I'll give my own opinion when I compare the two. Said Naruto. Then mumbled which will probably never happen said Naruto thinking where he was going to get wolf meat. That's easy you just kill a wolf, skin it in your case, and then eat. Well you humans would want to roast it too. Right, I'll put that on my to-do list. Long-term list that is. Just then Itachi put the rabbit meat on everyone's plate and they all sat in silence eating dinner. When they came back to their room after training Naruto just collapsed on the floor in the middle of the room and fell asleep instantly. Itachi and Kisame chuckled at this, but found it a little difficult getting about the room without stepping on Naruto. It continued like this for three months with only slight variations to the types of exercises that Naruto did. He had not been taught any ninjutsu or genjutsu yet, his sensei's reasons for this being that Naruto had to first have a strong body and strong taijutsu before they could even begin to focus on the other aspects of being a ninja. The leaders of the Akatsuki meanwhile were convinced that Naruto wasn't a spy and decided to have him trained as an assassin. They knew that as soon as the boy was ready they could begin the first phase of their plan. 
meanwhile in Konoha. The god I'm Hokage, Tsunade, was sitting at her desk trying to make sense of all the scrolls and documents that were in front of her. However her mind kept cycling back to that little boy that she had lost three months ago. The last three months had been the worst for Tsunade and the leaf. The morning after Naruto ran away Tsunade had sent more Anbu and other specialized tracking teams to try and find Naruto, but to no avail. Naruto could not be found anywhere. She then issued an order for search parties to be formed to look everywhere in the fire country for the boy. She knew however that not all of the teams would be so diligent in their search for Naruto, not everyone wanted to have the demon fox back. After realizing that she sent out some of the Janan teams because she knew that even thought the Janan weren't so good at tracking, they would want their comrade back and would be more diligent than the older generation. However the results were still negative and after a month the Godime was forced to give up the search and label Naruto not only as a missing nin, but also an S-class criminal since he had killed that team of Anbu. Tsunade told all the ninjas that whenever they were out on missions to try and keep an eye out for Naruto. They all agreed, but she knew that most would forget this order and would rather keep Naruto out of the village. The god I'm Hokage went public with the news of Naruto's disappearance a week after it happened. Many of the older generation had cheered because the demon was finally gone. However the younger generation was hit quite hard with this news, especially Team 7 and the team that brought Sasuke back. Shikamaru and Kiba could not believe that Naruto had done this and Kiba kept insisting that someone must have kidnapped him because the Naruto that he knew would never leave Konoha. Shikamaru led several search parties all of which found absolutely nothing, it looked as if Naruto had just disappeared in thin air. Neji and Kuji were still in ICU when Tsunade had made the announcement. Kuji managed to recover a month after the mission and was absolutely shocked when Shikamaru told him the news about Naruto. Neji however was still in ICU and it wasn't looking good. He was only conscious a few day of the week and even then could barely get out several words before falling back into unconsciousness. Hinata grieved for her lost friend and crush. She felt as if she was left completely alone in the world, but soon convinced herself that he would come back. She had to be optimistic, she had to believe that he would return, then maybe just maybe she could tell him how she felt. But most of all, this event drove her to train more, become stronger so that she could impress Naruto when he returned, maybe this way she would gain more self-confidence. Sakura and Sasuke were absolutely shocked to hear about Naruto from Kakashi. They both desperately wanted to know the reason behind Naruto's disappearance, but since Kakashi was forbidden to tell them about the demon fox, they were told that the reason would only be revealed if Naruto were found again. Sakura couldn't help feeling heartbroken, Naruto had done so much for her, and she couldn't even help him when something was wrong in his life. Sasuke just scoffed and mumbled something to the point of Dobi, I won't go chasing after you, which promptly earned him a slap for Sakura. That action surprised Sasuke, Kakashi and also Sakura. Out of all of Team 7, Sakura was probably the most affected, because she realized that the only thing she had ever done for Naruto was ignore him, tell him off and or yell at him. Now he gone and she couldn't apologize, she couldn't make up for everything she had done to him. She tried to put herself in his shoes and realized that the only two emotions that she came out with against herself were anger and resentment. She wondered how he could always be so happy and optimistic. She desperately wanted to apologize to him, but knew that that was impossible now. Whenever she was alone in her bedroom and not out on missions to look for him, she would constantly remember her lost teammate and tears would always find their way to her eyes and she would eventually cry herself to sleep. Sasuke may not have shown it in public, but did miss his friend slash teammate slash rival and would do his hardest on those search and rescue missions and blame himself when they came back empty-handed. He had finally realized that that old saying was right you don't know what you have until it's gone. He had a friend and now he had lost him. Then he thought about Sakura, she was annoying, but still she was a friend. She may not leave the village, but would she stop being his friend if he kept acting cold? He thought that maybe he should at least try to acknowledge her. The rest of the rookie 9 and guys team, that are in any condition to be told the news, were absolutely shocked by Naruto's actions. Ino tried to label him as an idiot, but no one else seemed to support that idea and she soon gave up especially after she noticed that both her teammates regarded Naruto with respect. Shino, as usual, did not say much except that if Naruto left willingly then he must have had a good reason. Lee, who was now chained to the hospital bed to keep him from escaping, said that Naruto was not the kind of person to leave his dream behind like that without very good reasons and very actively supported the theory that he must have been kidnapped by someone. However strongly hopping that it wasn't Orochimaru. By the time Kuji had recovered enough to be back on his team the search was called off and Kuji was forever left with the guilt of not being able to help his friend. Soon after the teams were rearranged as follows. Team 7 now consisted of, Sasuke, 
Sakura, and Ten Ten. Team Ten, Ino, Kuji, and Lee. Team 8 stayed the same. Team Guy was dissolved and he was given new rookies to train. However he would often hold private training sessions with Lee, that is after Lee had been let out of the hospital. After the end of the three months after Naruto left, everyone except Tsunade, Jiraiya, Kakashi, Hinata and Sakura believed Naruto to have gone forever. Only those five brave souls dared hope and pray for Naruto to come back someday. They swore a silent mutual agreement that they would always keep their eyes open for their blonde, happy, loud and hyperactive friend. Back with Naruto. In contrast to the dread that was being felt by his teammates, these last three months were so of the happiest Naruto had ever had. Naruto now had teachers that liked him, or at least seemed to like him, that seriously trained him. Not like Kakashi or Uro Senen, who would rather be doing anything else except training him, Itachi Sensei and Kisame Sensei wanted Naruto to get stronger. This was probably one of the most important reasons that Naruto finally threw away his mask completely and let his true intelligence and cold mood show. By the end of the three months of probation Naruto was already carrying around an extra 300 pounds in his suit. His morning warm-up was to run around the training room 200 times and do 200 push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and tree punching. He could easily maintain balance on a ball for two hours straight without even breaking a sweat. His chakra control had also increased tenfold, Itachi had Naruto walk up and down the entire mountain. Not only that Naruto could climb up the mountain on only his fingertips, using chakra of course. It was at this point that Itachi approached Naruto and told him that they would begin ninjutsu and genjutsu training. Naruto was excited beyond belief. However before we start Naruto, said Itachi I think we should go have a talk with a friend of yours. Friend? Asked Naruto uncertainly. Then thinking it was someone from Konoha added I'm not going back to that village. No, no Naruto we have no intention of going to Konoha of all places replied Itachi. Then. What friend are you talking about? Asked a bewildered Naruto. A friend that had been with you your entire life calmly replied Itachi. My entire life. Thought Naruto who the. No way. Naruto's face paled slightly, you don't mean? Before he could finish Itachi grinned and said, Oh yes, your furry friend. Chapter 6, Training. Naruto the time has come for us to go talk with the QB said Itachi. But. But. How? Asked Naruto I mean me talk with the QB is no big deal but how are you going to do that? Main Sharingan calmly answered Itachi. Naruto paled when he realized what Itachi was talking about. That thing that he did to Sasuke. And then he couldn't wake up without the old hag's help. Remembered Naruto. Seeing Naruto's scared expression Itachi reassured him, don't worry Naruto, it won't be the same jutsu I used to Sasuke. I won't inflict damage upon you. Alright fine, let's do it said Naruto. Well kid looks like we're gonna see each other face to face again. Itachi and Naruto sat down in a comfortable meditating position and Itachi switched his eyes to reveal the Sharingan. Naruto, just look into my eyes. And relax said Itachi and activated the jutsu. The last thing Naruto saw, before everything turned black, was the redness of Itachi's eyes and it seemed as though the three black dots began to spin around. The next thing Naruto knew, he was on his knees in that familiar murky corridor with the yellow walls and water that goes up to your ankle. Except this time was different, he noticed a black figure next to him, he looked up to see that it was Itachi. So this is what the inside of that seal is like. Thought Itachi. In the distance they could hear growling and snorting. Naruto got up and started walking toward the sound. This menacing aura unnerves even me. Itachi shivered slightly yet Naruto seems to be fearlessly going straight towards it. Naruto looked back when he saw that Itachi was not following, instead he was still looking around the corridor. Come on, said Naruto there's nothing to see here. Naruto and Itachi steadily made their way down the corridors and passages until they saw what looked like a door of light. Stepping thought it, Itachi was amazed to see the great gate looming several dozen feet in the air. It had some intricate designs around the edges and there was a piece of paper with the kanji sealed written on it. Behind those bars lies one of the most powerful demons in the world. This thought made Itachi slightly uncomfortable, since he could sense the amount of power that was behind the gate. Suddenly out of the darkness appeared giant red eyes and white, very pointy, teeth. Itachi shook lightly as he laid eyes on the QB. Wow, it's enormous. Were about the only thoughts that Itachi had at that moment. Long time no see, Fox said Naruto, not very politely. Yes, we can once again converse with each other face to face said the QB. Itachi was still speechless. 
nice to see come visit this dark, ugly, partially flooded home of mine said the QB with resentment. Well what the hell do you want me to do about it? Countered Naruto. Well since it's your mind you may as well try refining it. It's your cage, you decorate argued Naruto. And what the hell am I supposed to use for decorations? You ungrateful little kid roared the QB. Well you seem to have plenty of fur that is going to waste, said Naruto sarcastically. ARGH, roared the QB that is not funny kid. The argument between the kid and the demon continued on for a little while longer, making QB angrier and angrier. I don't believe this, Naruto is talking with the QB as if he's, well, just a normal person you meet out on the street. He doesn't seem to care that he's pissing off a great demon thought Itachi. The QB finally noticed Itachi's presence and decided to address him in an effort to change the subject. Naruto, looks like you brought a friend with you today said the QB. Huh? Oh yay. This is my sensei, Uchiha Itachi introduced Naruto. A guy? Why couldn't you bring a girl? They are a lot tastier you know said the QB licking his lips. Itachi flinched at this last remark. What? Itachi sensei is not for eating, yelled Naruto. Humphrey. So you are the Uchiha prodigy, mused Kyubi so why did you come here? A little sightseeing tour? Said Kyubi with a smirk. Regathering his confidence Itachi was finally able to respond, no I am here to ask you to give you power to Naruto. Give my power to the boy? Laughed the Kyubi and why the hell should I do that? Well he is your host and it is only natural that your image reflects on his said Itachi. And because of that don't you want your host to look good and be powerful? Questioned Itachi. Be powerful and look good. Yes, yes, I want that. Mused the QB. Suddenly an evil grin crossed the QB's face. Speaking of looking good, the Sharingan looks very good. Especially since it became a rare commodity, said the QB in a tone that sent chills down both Naruto and Itachi's spines. Naruto what do you think, we take one of his eyes and then use it as our own? The QB asked with an evil sadistic laugh. Itachi trembled, if he really wanted to take my eye, would I be able to stop him? Damn fox. What's wrong with you? Screamed Naruto adding some other quite colorful words. The QB had finally managed to calm himself down, he enjoyed watching humans tremble in fear of him. It kind of annoyed him that Naruto wasn't like the rest of them, but on the other hand Naruto was more of challenge, harder to crack than the rest of them. And the QB enjoyed such challenges in life. Even though he would never admit it, he respected the boy a little bit. More power huh? Mused the QB well Naruto I think we can make a deal. What kind of deal? Asked Naruto carefully. Hmm. How about this? The stronger you get the more of my power you will have access to? How about Jutsus? Asked Naruto. Well I'll let your scared sensei there take care of that for now Naruto scowled at this. Later on I'll fill in the blanks and teach you some very high level Jutsus said the QB sadistically. Naruto considered this deal carefully, it didn't seem bad. As long as he trained hard the QB would give him more and more power. All right I agree, but first you gotta teach me something for all the hard work that I have put in these last few months said Naruto forcefully. As if. Growled the QB now get the hell out of here. With that the QB sent a wave of chakra at both Itachi and Naruto, and knocked them out to reality. Naruto woke up to find himself back in his room, lying down on the bed. Naruto tried to get up, but the pain in his head forced him back down. Goddamn fox, you didn't have to hit me that hard. As soon as he said that though, he felt his urge to perform some sort of jutsu. What the hell? I don't even recognize this order of seals. Maybe I'll just wait a little bit before doing the jutsu. Contemplated Naruto. But as soon as he thought that his headache seemed to increase even more, as if telling him to do the jutsu. Fine. Damn it, said Naruto while getting up from the bed. Can I get some time to rest and recover mumbled Naruto as he was going through the seals. Seal, dog, dragon, bird, horse, ox, tiger. Fire wave no jutsu yelled Naruto. He suddenly felt himself surrounded by an immense amount of chakra. Looking down and around himself he saw that it was red chakra those physical form resembled that of a foxtail. Kisame appeared in front of Naruto with awe in his face, what the hell is that Naruto? So I guess the QB decided to teach me a jutsu after all smiled Naruto. This is a jutsu the QB taught me calmly answered Naruto. Kisame blinked in surprise, the QB taught him. Well this day just keeps getting more and more interesting. Flashback. After having a talk with the leaders of the Akatsuki, Itachi and Kisame were on their way to Naruto. So, 
Itachi sensei mocked Kisame what kind of ninjutsu are we going to teach him first? Itachi sent Kisame a death glare, but calmly said, no, today I'm planning on helping him utilize the Kyuubi's powers. Kisame was clearly shocked, and exactly how are you planning to do that? By going into his mind and having a talk with the Kyuubi said Itachi as if it was an everyday occurrence. You're gonna go. And. And. Kisame blabbered like his for a while trying to recompose himself. He's gonna go see the Kyuubi? I don't care if it's locked up in a cage, that's a demon for crying out loud. Thought Kisame. Finally after several deep breaths, that's all great Itachi, but what if the Kyuubi refuses? I'm sure we can come to some form of agreement. I hope so. Kisame thought Itachi had finally lost it, but of course didn't say so out loud. Itachi are you insane? This is a demon you're negotiating with. Even you, being you, don't hold anything over it. About an hour later, A.N., this is still in flashback. Itachi walks in carrying an unconscious Naruto over his shoulder. What the hell happened to him? Asked Kisame as he saw Itachi put Naruto on the bed. Passed out Itachi said simply, guess it strained his mind too much. Just then there was a knock on the door. Itachi opened the door to reveal a figure in all black with long dark green hair and emerald eyes. A.N., more on this person later. A few quick words were exchanged and Itachi made to leave, but turned around and said, I'm being summoned by the High Council, I'll be back in. Sometime later. Guess I'll just let the brat sleep. Mental exhaustion, especially when the Sharingan is involved, should be allowed to pass naturally. End flashback. So I take it you and Itachi talked with the QB. It was more of a question than a statement though. Yeah, said Naruto calmly. I can't believe this kid, he's talking about as if it's a normal, everyday occurrence thought a bewildered Kisame. Although Kisame wanted to ask Naruto how come he was so calm, he could risk letting the suspect that he was even the littlest bit scared of the fox. I see. What did you agree on? Asked Kisame. Basically that the more I train the more power the Kyuubi will be willing to give me said Naruto as he released the jutsu. Kisame suddenly remember about the new jutsu that Naruto had and asked him about it. Oh it's a defensive jutsu, the Kyuubi said that it will keep out almost any kind of attacks explained Naruto. He didn't tell me everything though, so I'm gonna have to play around with it later. I see. A demonic ultimate defense. Thought Kisame. Then the door opened and Itachi walked in. Kisame, we have a mission in the waterfall country said a serious Itachi. I see, answered Kisame and began packing his things. Naruto was dismayed, what about me? He asked. You're coming with us replied Itachi, so get packing. All right a mission. Rejoiced Naruto. No, said Itachi the mission is only for Kisame and me, you will just be training. Oh. How did Naruto? Well, at least I get to travel. Better than being stuck inside this hole. The three quickly packed up a few belongings. Itachi presented Naruto with his very own Akatsuki cloak that was of course cut down to fit Naruto. Even though Naruto had grown a little bit due to his intense training routine, he was nowhere neat as tall as Itachi or Kisume. They had a light lunch and set out from their mountain residence. They traveled back the same way they used to come there. After several days of travel they arrived at the waterfall country without many occurrences. However during this trip Naruto learned a very valuable skill, the ability to kill. It occurred at the end of the second day, when they had made camp and were getting ready to go to sleep. Naruto had first watch. About an hour after Itachi and Kisame fell asleep, Naruto picked up distinct sounds of people sneaking about around them. After just several seconds of listening, Naruto could tell that there were four people, two behind him and two in front. However Naruto stayed perfectly still. So they think I don't notice huh? Well that'll be their undoing thought Naruto while faking a yawn, from the feel of their chakra, or lack thereof, they are just bandits. Naruto smiled inwardly as he heard the two behind him start running towards him, game on. One of the bandits smiled as he hit Naruto in the back with a butcher knife. The smile quickly faded when Naruto disappeared in a cloud of smoke, before the smoke could clear three shuriken had already hit the bandit, one in the back of his head, the other two hit the upper back. The bandit collapsed dead instantly, still holding the butcher knife, however it was now clearly seen that the knife was lodged tight in a log. The second bandit, who was running right beside his comrade, saw this and spun around expecting Naruto to attack him from behind. The last thing he saw was the path that he had just come by. Naruto had reappeared right behind him and stuck his kunai through his neck. Blood was spraying everywhere as Naruto pulled out his kunai. Ah! The smell and feel of blood. Isn't it great? 
asked the QB obviously satisfied with his vessel. Shut up. Don't make me lose concentration, I still have two more to take care of yelled Naruto. He spun around prepared to deal with the others in the same way, but found that Kisame and Itachi had already dealt with them. After seeing this he was surprised that he felt. Disappointed. What the hell? Why am I unhappy? Thought Naruto. Because they took away our kill growled an annoyed QB. Naruto still couldn't believe it, I'm. Sad that I didn't. Kill them. Accept it already kiddo, you like blood. Just like me. Said the QB with an evil grin. No. Naruto tried to deny it weakly. Kid, face it this is what you've always wanted. Ever since you were first exposed to people said the QB as he showed him a memory from his past in Konoha. With the memory came emotions. Emotions of hate, loneliness, sadness, anger and. Killer intent? Thought a shocked Naruto. Yeah kid, those were your instincts telling to retaliate against those assholes. Why you put with it is beyond me. I just wanted to prove them wrong. Answered Naruto in a sad tone. And you can still do that, said the QB. What do you mean? Asked Naruto confused I ran away from the village and killed some of their own people. How can I prove them wrong? Don't you see kid? They think, no they believe, that you are weak. That they can kill you at any time. Don't you see it they have been trying to break your resolve to live, all of your life. How do you prove them wrong, you ask? Simple use that hate and anger to become stronger motivated the QB. But look at what that did to Sasuke. I don't want to like that. No, that idiot let his hate and anger consume him, countered QB. I said use your hate and anger. Use it as fuel for your strength, but never and I mean never let it take control of you. That was my mistake. Mumbled the QB. Huh? What do you mean? Asked Naruto. Never mind that I might tell you later. The important thing is that you understand and utilize what I have just told you. Will you do that? I'll try. Said Naruto uncertainly. I won't take any tries from you. Just do it, said the QB forcefully I'll help you out on the way. Yes I will said Naruto determinedly. Now, if you'll please notice what is going on in the real world said QB sarcastically. Oi! Naruto, yelled Kisame. After not getting a response for the third time, he finally punched him lightly in the face to try and wake him up. Ow! That hurts you know, yelled Naruto. Oh, well good to have you back joked Itachi. Get a little freaked out by your first kill teased Kisame with a grin. No. Just. Naruto was unsure whether he should tell them about being able to talk with the QB. Should I tell them about our arrangement? Naruto asked QB. Yeah, but just say that you can talk to me and nothing more. Just what? Asked Kisame still grinning. I was just having a conversation with the QB said Naruto. Itachi and Kisame were both absolutely shocked. You're telling me that you can with the QB? Asked Itachi then added, since we made the deal? No, even before the deal replied Naruto, I'd say since I met him in person the first time, when Uro Senen pushed me off a cliff. Uro Senen, he must mean Jiraiya. Thought Itachi. Why would he try to kill his own student? Asked Kisame. He thought that was the quickest way for me to learn to use the QB's chakra. That's insane. There are dozens of safer ways to learn chakra control thought Kisame. Yawn man, I'm tired said Naruto can we just go to sleep? Of course, as soon as we dispose of these bodies, said Itachi. They threw the bodies in a hole that Itachi made using an earth jutsu and then went to sleep, Kisame taking the next watch. Nine months later. They were sitting in a restaurant in the water country, celebrating the one-year anniversary of Naruto's enrollment into the Akatsuki. While eating his meal Naruto was reminiscing about the last year. The mission Itachi and Kisame had to the waterfall country turned out perfectly and they were soon assigned another one in the earth country. The last nine months consisted of constant missions for Itachi and Kisame during which they traveled through many different countries to finally end up in the water country. Throughout this time Naruto trained vigorously to build up his taijutsu, ninjutsu and genjutsu. The Kyubi kept his word and would teach him some jutsus whenever he felt that Naruto had progressed enough. Since it turned out to be a jutsu ever two or three weeks, Naruto assumed that the QB had so many that it would take Naruto many years to learn everything. During this time Naruto also became a lot more attached to his teachers, especially Itachi. They seemed to genuinely care for his well-being and not just because they were ordered to take care of him. This really showed when they remember his birthday. That day they gave him a day off from training to do whatever, then they took him out to dinner and actually gave him a gift. 
Naruto was disappointed at first since they gave him a book that seemed to just talk about the human body. However Itachi explained to Naruto, that if he was very well familiar with the human anatomy then he would be able to defeat his opponents faster. The most surprising thing, for Naruto, was that the QB also gave him a gift in the form of jutsu. The jutsu turned out to be a summoning contract with the foxes. When Naruto was signing the contract he noticed that his name was the first and only one on the list. This gave him a certain edge in battle since no other person would be able to summon the same thing as him and also because no one probably knew that foxes were available as a summoning. Naruto thanked everyone greatly, for the first time in his life he felt like he had friends that cared. Naruto even thanked the QB, but not as much since he didn't want to get soft on the fox. In terms of training, Naruto now knew most of the fire jutsus, except the forbidden ones. He knew several earth jutsus, many that didn't have a type such as teleportation, special sight jutsus and enhancement jutsus. He was now starting to learn water jutsus, which is one of the reasons that the trio came to the water country. After reading the human anatomy book Naruto memorized all the critical points on the body and did special kunai and shuriken training so that he would hit those points. Naruto also learned high level chakra control, so now he used the exact amount he needed and was also able to hide his chakra completely, only Itachi because of the Sharingan could tell that Naruto had chakra flowing in him. Also during this last year Naruto had changed drastically. No more was he the naive, innocent and loud little boy, now he was calm, collected and very knowledgeable. He learned how to keep his emotions hidden and in check at all times. He no longer joked around, not to say that he lost his sense of humor, he just didn't show it to everyone anymore. Physically Naruto had grown to be only half a head shorter than Itachi, his muscular build was even with Kisame, and his stamina incomparable to wither of them. After their meal, which Naruto insisted on paying for because he said that he had to repay his teachers somehow, the three Akatsuki members went back to their hotel. All the way back to the hotel Naruto kept, thanking them for everything. Naruto, you can stop, thanking us already laughed Itachi. Yeah, I think we have been thanked more times than anyone in the world added Kisame. I know, I know, said Naruto enthusiastically but it's just that you are probably the closest thing I've ever had to family. Oh no, Naruto, your family was a lot better than us said Itachi. You know about my family? Asked Naruto hopefully. Yeah, probably any jounin of the leaf would know about your family said Itachi simply then added, especially your former teacher, Kakashi. Really? Asked Naruto, could you tell me about them? Wait, you mean you don't know? Itachi's eyes widened a little. No answered Naruto sheepishly. Well, I don't know a lot said Itachi, I know about your father, but not your mother. Your father was the Yondaime Hokage, Kazami Arashi said Itachi. An, I have seen this name used for the Yondaime in several fanfics, so I'm gonna use it too. Naruto just stared at Itachi with bugged out eyes and an open mouth. Mmm my father was the Yondaime, stuttered Naruto, then he sealed the QB inside me. Why? Would. He do. That to me? Your father was a very honorable and noble man, Naruto. If he could make the sacrifice then there would be no way he would ask some other family in the village replied Itachi. That's one reason kid, there is another. But it will be better if I show you my memory later said the QB sincerely. Why didn't you tell me before? Said a now angry Naruto. First of all, would you have believed me? Asked the QB. Yes. Replied Naruto. You say that now, but right now that information can't be put to any kind of practical use. And if I were to tell you before, back in Konoha, then you wouldn't have believed me. Calmly explained the QB, but let's talk about this later, after you go to sleep, we'll talk in person. All right, agreed Naruto. I can't believe Kakashi or Jiraiya for that matter didn't tell you, continued Itachi. Why those two in particular? Asked Naruto since he noticed Itachi concentrating on them. Simple, Jiraiya trained your father and from what I've heard they were really close. Kakashi was your father's student, Yondaime regarded him as prized pupil and treated him almost like his own son. Who else could know? Asked Naruto trying very hard to keep his emotions in check. Tsunade, Sandaime for sure, most likely any one that Jounin ranked during the battle with the QB said Itachi. I found out when I was testing out main Sharingan on an experienced Uchiha. To keep his only son in absolute darkness, that horrible, said Kisame finally joining in the discussion. How did you know? You're from the mist asked Naruto. Itachi told me, a little while after we started training you answered Kisame, I didn't say anything because I thought that you knew and it was probably a hard subject for you to talk about. I see, said Naruto with a slight hint of resentment, 
Then after noticing that they registered his tone he added, but, thank you for telling me. And I'm not mad at you in any way. I just found another reason to hate that village. Itachi nodded, let's call it night, shall we? Yeah, said Naruto, but didn't move. Itachi walked over to Naruto and put his hand on Naruto's shoulder, come on, things will look better after a good night's sleep. Wordlessly they each went to get ready for bed and fell asleep soon after, all except Naruto who kept thinking about what he just learned. Damn those bastards, they couldn't even tell a simple thing such as who my parents were. Here I am over 14 years old and now I finally find out. Naruto was very angry right now. My teachers, Kakashi and Jiraiya, couldn't tell me. Especially Kakashi, prized pupil of the fourth my ass. If my father treated him like that, why couldn't he just return the fucking favor? Resentment was now being thrown into the mixing pot of Naruto's emotions. I know why. He's just like the rest of them. Not training me because I'm the QB's container. Most of the older shinobi know that I'm the fourth son. But that doesn't seem to matter to them does it? Oh no, doesn't matter at all. They all see the demon fox. Their precious demon fox. Thought Naruto sarcastically. With these kinds of angry and hateful thought Naruto finally fell asleep. In front of Kyuubi's cage. You know you were right said Naruto I wouldn't have believed you while I was in the village. Now. It just serves to fuel my anger and hatred and in turn fuel my strength. That's all great, but you've got to calm yourself a little bit said the Kyuubi you're letting those two dangerous emotions take a hold of you. True, true, said Naruto and tried to relax, then remembered something. Hey you said that there's a memory you want to show me said Naruto. Yes, said the Kyuubi as he sent out his chakra towards Naruto. Kyuubi's memory. Naruto was dozens of feet off the ground in a forest. It was the middle of the night and he could see a great fire in the distance. Suddenly to his left he saw a giant toad appear. As the toad got closer, he could see the outline off a man standing on top of it. Naruto's view was changing, he was turning to face this toad. That must be Game Abunta. He suddenly saw a bright light appear from the man and felt himself being pulled towards the man. As he got closer he saw that in the man's arms was a baby. And that must be me. So that man is the fourth. My father. Before the was sucked into the boy he heard the man speak, I'm sorry to do this to you my son, but there is no one else that I can trust with this burden. You are my son and I know that you will be strong enough to protect the leaf village. I hope you grow up to become a good man and a good shinobi. He then saw himself being pulled into the baby and suddenly everything went dark. Back outside the Kyuubi's cage. That's it, that's the only memory I have of your father, that's the other reason he chose you and last but not least that's the last of my freedom. Naruto remained silent for a long while trying to sort out everything that he had just learned about his family. Do you know anything about my mother? Asked Naruto. No said the Kyuubi, if you want information I suggest you find an old Konoha nin and beat it out of him. Naruto chuckled at this, but realized that that was probably the only way. Someday I will find out about my late family, Naruto promised himself, but for now I can't risk returning to Konoha. For the next two and a half years, Naruto traveled around the world with Itachi and some other Akatsuki nin. Kisame had taught him all the water jutsus he knew, or at least all he was willing to teach. Afterwards he was forced to leave and was replaced by another member of the Akatsuki. His new teacher was a cloud nin, named Reiko. Reiko was also a tall man much like Kisame, he had short silver hair that was as spiky as Naruto's and teal eyes. Beneath his Akatsuki cloak he wore a blood red jacket, underneath which was a blue shirt. He wore dark blue pants that came down to cover half of his shins, but his tall black boots covered anything his pants didn't. Reiko taught him electric jutsus, for which Naruto seemed to have a natural affinity. After Reiko was done with him, Naruto could infuse almost all of his jutsus with electricity. It turned out that the QB knew several very high-level Raten Kinjutsus that it taught him. After Reiko came a grass nin, named Mia. Mia was about as tall as Itachi, she had long dark green hair and emerald eyes, A.N., sound familiar? Also they all wear the Akatsuki cloak so I won't mention it anymore. She wore a black jacket that had the right sleeve torn off and her right arm was bandaged, under the jacket. Well she never took off her jacket. She wore green and brown camouflage pants and black shoes. Mia specialized in poisons, but also taught Naruto how to summon vines that could hold your opponents and or transmit poisons, or you could just wrap up your opponent in these vines and they would crush him or her. It turned out that because of the QB, Naruto had a natural resistance to poison. This meant that poison would either not affect him at all or the effects would be weakened by a lot. This gave Naruto a serious upper hand, since he didn't have to worry about staying out of the way of his own poison. 
During his training Naruto managed to befriend every single one of his teachers. His relationship with Itachi also grew to a point where they could share anything with each other. An, for those of you sick people out there, no it was not a sexual relationship. Naruto told him about his life early in the leaf, about the people or rather person that he could still consider a friend there, he also told him about Sasuke and his attempt to gain power from Orochimaru. Itachi in turn told Naruto about his earlier life and also explained the events that led up to the Uchiha massacre and why he left Sasuke alive, an, no I won't elaborate. All in all, Naruto saw him as an older brother that he never had and occasionally would address him as Itachi Oni-chan but only in private. It was after his training with Mia was done that Kisame came back and told them that they had a mission. This was to be Naruto's first mission for the Akatsuki. I will elaborate on the details later said Kisame, but now we need to move out. Where are we going? asked Naruto. To the Hidden Stone Village replied Kisame. Chapter 7, Mission We have a mission in the Hidden Stone Village said Kisame. We're leaving immediately then ordered Itachi. Naruto nodded and instantly adopted a serious attitude. They packed up and left, Kisame estimated the trip to take three days. The first day was traveled mostly in silence, except Itachi and Kisame who seemed to be discussing something. Even though Naruto burned with curiosity about his first mission, he decided it better not to ask. He knew that Itachi would fill him in eventually. Patience is something Naruto had to work hard to learn. While he did learn to be reserved, calm, cold and calculating from Itachi and Kisame, patience was different. To sit quietly for hours on end in ambush or espionage was not something Naruto had been very good at. Itachi and Kisame were the middle of two extremes they wouldn't mind to sit in ambush, but they wouldn't do it for very long. If it wasn't working it, they would rather go find the enemy and openly attack them. Reiko, was the type of person that didn't like to wait at all, he wouldn't wait to see what his opponent had in store for him. Better to strike first and kill your opponent before he can do anything to you he would say. But never rush in blindly, and never show off anything high level. Limitations and regulations, they seem to always follow you around, no such thing as freedom. That was one of the reasons Naruto ultimately developed his own fighting style, to not take orders from anyone. Advice is fine, but orders reminded him too much of Konoha. Mia, she was the exact opposite of Reiko, she could sit in ambush for days, annoyed the hell out of Naruto. But did ultimately teach him to be patient, actually it was either that or she would beat him up. It's really your choice you know, either you exert self-control or I force you to exert self-control. However the force part was more like punishment and she always seemed to know exactly how and when to exact revenge. Paralysis juts us at the most uncomfortable moments, like paralyzing his jaw muscles right before dinner. Sadistic bitch was a common nickname Naruto used in the beginning. She wouldn't even get the slightest bit angry and would sometimes smile and thank him for the compliment. Naruto later found out that she was kind of like Itachi, in the sense that right before leaving she left the village a little present. She effectively poisoned their water supply, not to kill them no, rather to make sure every single person stayed in bed for at least a two weeks. Of course the ones with the weaker immune system would die, but hey survival of the fittest right? Anyway she justified it saying that she needed a little head start. Unlike all his other teachers, Mia, didn't start easy on him, she instantly jumped into advanced training. So training sessions such as ambushing Anbu and or Hunter Nin was a common practice for her, and she would always have Naruto do the fighting alone. She would help him of course if he was going to die, but otherwise it seemed like she could care less. Nowadays Naruto thanks her for that since missing Nin can't be taught to rely on teammates, she really prepared him for the harsh really of the real world. It seemed, to Naruto, that most of the members of the Akatsuki were on good terms with each other. The motto seemed to be considerate with friends, ruthless with enemies. Naruto didn't mind that at all, he considered Itachi, Kisame, Reiko, and Mia to be friends and most everyone else would then be an enemy. He had long ago forgotten about his former comrades and so-called friends from the leaf. He saw one of them once, Iruka Sensei was what he used to call him. It was in a small town in the waterfall country, Naruto was on a one-day vacation and was wandering about the business district aimlessly. He saw him in a bar arguing with the bartender about something, there was a team of Janan waiting impatiently outside muttering something about sensei taking too long. Naruto's curiosity peaked, he hadn't seen anyone from his past since he left and wondered if maybe they were gathering info about him. He followed him for a little while, hoping to hear about what's happened since he left. Instinctively he started making mental notes about each person in the group, assessing their strengths and weaknesses. He wanted to stop himself, but realized that if they were searching for him that this would be valuable information. What would he do if that was the case? Well that one's easy. He'd kill them. 
Sorry Sensei Naruto thought in a cold tone but I can't have anyone knowing anything about me. Other than that he didn't have any run-ins with people from the past. Sure there were the occasional Leaf Anbu and or Hunter Nin that he would kill as practice, but that was so routine he didn't even flinch. He remembered that after one of their training sessions, Itachi asked him from which village the ninjas were from and after thinking for a little while Naruto found that he couldn't come up with an answer. He had just killed them and disposed of the bodies like routine work. Itachi didn't reply to that in any way, it was his usual open your eyes to something and then leave you to figure out what it all means by yourself. On one hand it scared Naruto, that he could just kill people so easily. But on the other hand, Naruto figured that as long as they weren't important to him it didn't really matter. Suddenly Itachi's voice snapped Naruto out of his reminiscing, we're going to camp here for the night. Night already huh? Thought Naruto. That's just how his mind worked, replacement, if you can't think of one thing then make yourself think of something else. A sort of mind kawari me no jutsu if you will, Naruto chuckled slightly. As usual dinner, as any other meal, was eaten in silence. This was a practice they observed because they found that ambushes usually came when you were peacefully eating and seemingly unaware of the surrounding world. After dinner they were finally able to discuss the import business. Itachi's voice broke the silence, Naruto, it's time you knew what this mission consists of. Naruto turned his head and listened intently. First of all, we have to sneak into the hidden stone, which shouldn't be too difficult. Second, we have to locate the Kutauji estate, and get in there without alerting the stone Anbu. Third, the actual orders, we have to kill the Kutauji clan members said Itachi in a cold tone. There's something special about this clan, isn't there? Asked Naruto. Yes, they are of an advanced bloodline replied Itachi. Naruto's eyebrow lifted slightly, what kind of advanced bloodline? Asked Naruto cautiously. They have the ability to create golems out of stone, dirt, mud, anything that is part of the earth said Kisame. Don't worry, Naruto said Itachi all that's left of this clan is just a father and son. You will fight with the kid and Kisame and I will fight the head of the clan. Naruto nodded in agreement, not that he could change their decision even if he had disagreed. Well this would certainly prove to be an interesting battle and he had two days to plan for it. The golems would most likely be like his chakra reinforced cage Bushin, I wonder how agile they will be? Since that would ultimately determine who he goes for first the golems or the real enemy. A few things are already certain about the golems, lightning is no good, poison is no good, wind is worth a try, water would probably be good, earth fighting earth doesn't seem productive, and fire is also worth a try. Now for the boy, if he has other things do his biting then he might be weak in taijutsu, ninjutsu will just have to see and same for genjutsu. That's the thing about chakra using techniques you can't tell how good a person is with them until you either observe them fighting or fight them yourself. Since the former was definitely out, Naruto would have to find out the hard way. Perhaps take a few hits, make himself look weak, all the while working on a counterattack. Two days later. They stood in front of large metal gates with the stone symbol carved into them. This was it, the point of no return, once inside they would have to complete the mission. However the trio was unfazed, they simply kept walking forward with absolute confidence. Itachi activated his Mangekyu Sharingan and the guard didn't even question them. Part 1, Complete Thought Naruto, even though he knew that he didn't do anything. Finding the Kutauji clan residents was no problem, they seemed to be well known in the stone. Getting in was done in much the same way, just a lot more cautiously and also Itachi made sure to disable the guards, the bodies of which were quickly hidden. Part 2, Complete Thought Naruto Now Comes the Hard Part. Part 3. They are on the far side of the compound, whispered Naruto training most likely. Heightened senses made search and destroy missions, or training sessions as it was for Naruto, so easy. His senses confirmed the information, there were only two people training and the guards didn't seem to be numerous or paying too much attention. We best attack while they are training, said Itachi in a low voice we can't take chances on other ninjas showing up. Kisame and Naruto nodded in agreement and moved toward their enemies. They soon saw two figures, one was resting against a tree and the other was doing some sort of earth jutsu. Based on chakra levels the latter is the kid thought Naruto. The boy suddenly stopped his jutsu halfway through to look at the intruders, diverting his father's attention to the approaching trio. The man got up and yelled out, who are you and what are you doing here? Our identities do not concern you, calmly replied Itachi and we are here for your heads. The boy visibly stiffened for a second, then became relaxed once again, however this small change did not go unnoticed by Naruto. So a little scared of death now aren't we? You are not our enemies, replied the man once again leave now or we will be forced to fight you. 
then you shall have to fight us said Itachi coldly. As Itachi and Kisame prepared to battle, Naruto beckoned to the boy that he was going to fight him one-on-one. -on -one. The boy proudly accepted Naruto's challenge and they both jumped a ways to the side to have more room to battle. Let's start off simple, thought Naruto. He then gathered the required chakra and made two cage bushin appear on either side of the stone nin. Not normal cage bushin, but chakra reinforced cage bushin. Naruto always makes this special kind nowadays since the normal kind are just worthless in a real battle. The boy was shocked that Naruto was able to perform ninjutsu without the use of seals. Naruto smirked at the stone nin's reaction, training pays off. Even if I can only do this with simple jutsus. The clones attacked the stone nin using only taijutsu, one going for the legs the other for the torso and head. The stone nin was able to dodge the clone's attacks and after gaining some distance did several hand seals and slammed his palms into the ground secret jutsu, clay golem. Naruto then saw three mounds of earth rise up and form themselves into the shape of a person. So this is what they look like, mused Naruto now to test them. He instantly had his cage bushins attack the golems. While the golems certainly lacked in speed and couldn't always block or dodge his clone's attacks, they sure packed a punch. Both of his special cage bushins were destroyed in just three or four hits. Without a moment of hesitation the stone nin had his golems attacking the real Naruto. Naruto parried and dodged the attacks easily and noted that the golems were fighting on a chonin level. Just when he was about to counterattack, Naruto felt some chakra below him shit, he's going to attack me with ninjutsu while I'm distracted fighting his golems with taijutsu. Then I have to get serious. Naruto jumped upright before the ground under him exploded. He pushed himself off the heads of one of the golems, sending it into the others slowing them down a little bit. While in mid-air, Naruto already started doing the necessary hand seals for his jutsu. He completed the hand seal several seconds after landing, Sutan, water explosion no jutsu said Naruto in a faint voice. Before the golems could react they were swallowed up by the water and carried away about 50 feet before being slammed into a wall. The water had torn apart the clay and hence rendered the golems useless. Naruto attention was now switched to the stone nin and Naruto smirked at the frown on his face. The stone nin then started doing the same hand seals as he had done a little while ago. Naruto knew better than to let him finish and instantly charged at him whispering, split. From the stone nin's perspective there was only one Naruto charging at him, but in reality the stone nin was just seeing the clone and the real Naruto was stealthily making his way behind his opponent. An, split copy cage bushin, split, the clone comes out of the user's body. Basically imagine a soul leaving a body, same type of image except it's not the soul but a clone. If the clone charges forward it looks like the real person is charging forward. If any other direction most people would write it off as genjutsu. Both being terrible mistakes in battle. Naruto's clone charged forward, but right in front of the stone nin he suddenly disappeared and reappeared behind him and made to punch him in the back of the head. The stone nin countered via kawarimi replacing himself with a rock. The stone nin smirked, doden, spiked suddenly the ground under the clone spiked up into a spear and sliced the clone's left leg. Doden, land bind the earth crawled up the clone's legs up to about his knees and solidified. Thinking that victory was his the stone nin relaxed and calmly walked over to the clone. Just as the stone nin raised his kunai to slit the clone's throat, he felt a presence behind him and cold metal against his own throat. You underestimated me, said Naruto in a cold tone and you assumed too much. The stone nin shifted uncomfortably and tried to break from Naruto's hold, but was unsuccessful. Now I can assume a fact. Naruto pulled his katana away slightly, but then returned it with full force and chopped out the stone nin's head. As the body fell to the ground lifeless he added, that you're dead. Naruto wiped his bloody katana and put in back in its sheath that hung behind his head. Then looked over and saw that Itachi and Kisame seemed to be winning and sighed contently. Hey kid, take that scroll your enemy has suddenly said the QB making Naruto flinch in surprise. Naruto took the scroll and looked at it, Dotenjutsu Mastery was written on the cover. It's probably something to do with their blood limit thought Naruto. Maybe or maybe not calmly replied the QB, then noticing the hesitation in Naruto's mind added just take it. If it is worthless you can practice one of your fire jutsus on it. The fire jutsus I need practice with are all a bit too big for a scroll. Get off your high chair. You don't know everything there is in the world. Growled the QB. Fine, fine. Grumbled Naruto. Although it was true that Naruto wasn't that good with earth jutsus. He knew some, but he didn't use them very often mostly because he said that by the time you put your palms on the ground your enemy could have already gained a better position. Even though Itachi didn't share his point of view, he didn't bother pursuing him with further training for two reasons. 
1. Naruto, being as stubborn as he is, wouldn't back off his point. 2. Naruto was already proficient in Raten, Suten, and Katan. So Doden wasn't really necessary. Naruto pocketed the scroll, grabbed his enemy's head and went to meet up with Itachi and Kisame, who he saw had now completed their battle. Itachi took a look at Naruto, saw the head he was carrying and nodded in approval. Kisame threw Naruto a bag to put the head in. Let's get out of here, said Kisame we are unwelcome. With that the three vanished running towards the nearest exit. Naruto noticed that getting out always seemed to be more bothersome than getting in. They always fight to hold you in, but are much more mellow when it comes to holding you out Naruto pondered this while slitting a guard's throat and jumping over the wall to disappear into the surrounding forest. A.N. Kisame taught Naruto how to use a katana. Several days later. They appeared before the Akatsuki Council and reported their mission complete. The three leaders acknowledged this and for the first time in three and a half years actually introduced themselves to Naruto. Rito was the leader of the Akatsuki, it seemed that he started it with the help of Kane who was second in command. Hajeko was the first member and resided on the council because he didn't have any missions. Rito also informed them of the death of one of the teams of the Akatsuki, Rito did mention the names but since they didn't mean anything to Naruto he simply forgot them. This combined with the fact that Naruto was now ready, is why they decided to split up the trio. Itachi and Kisame would go back to being a two-man team and Naruto would join up with Reiko. Rito then dismissed Naruto and bade him to make himself comfortable here until Reiko arrived from him mission. Itachi and Kisame were no doubt given another mission since Naruto didn't see them later that night. Reiko arrived in a few days and they were given another mission for which they set out immediately. Year and a half later. Naruto was relaxing on the couch of his room at the Akatsuki headquarters after getting back from a mission. A lot has happened during the last year and a half. He did several missions with Reiko for the next six months. Some were assassination missions, others were to steal something or other usually scrolls. It was after returning from one of these missions, he learned that Kisame was killed during his previous mission. The teams were rearranged once again and Naruto was back with Itachi as a teammate. Naruto mourned the loss of one of his dear friends, but did not let it get in the way of his job. He asked Itachi for the details many times, but Itachi either turned him down or managed to change the subject. Naruto finally gave up, hoping that one day Itachi would tell him, but until Naruto would give him his space. More missions followed, although the missions didn't seem to have any sort of logic to them. It looked as if the Akatsuki was using random hit and run tactics. This of course did not sit well with the members at all. Considering all of the Akatsuki members were class S missing nin who could just as easily be doing random hit and runs on their own and get a lot more out of it. Sure they were paid, but it seemed that it wasn't nearly enough. Half of the stuff they were stealing was easily worth three times as much on the black market. Tensions were high, yet the organization seemed to hold together. Naruto didn't care about this much, knowing that if there was a split he would follow Itachi. What was the Akatsuki for Naruto? Well what began as a way to rebel against Konoha was now nothing more than a shell that told him who to kill or what to steal. He had to admit he didn't like being ordered about by a bunch of strangers. Why did he stay there? The only reason he could find was his big brother. Naruto respected, trusted and looked up to Itachi. Itachi knew all this of course, but he wasn't a person to openly show affection. Itachi also sometimes wondered whether Naruto could beat him or not. Neither would challenge each other to a real fight though, sparring was fine but neither wanted to fight to the death. For Naruto because Itachi Oni-chan was like the family he never had and for Itachi because Naruto was also like family, but in a different way. Naruto understood him. Naruto understood why he did what he did, Naruto understood his relationship with Sasuke a lot better than Sasuke did himself. Sasuke no Baka. Chuckled Naruto. Someday maybe Naruto would beat it into Sasuke but for now he was content with the knowledge that the so-called genius couldn't even figure out his own family relations. Just then Itachi walked in with a scroll in his hand and slammed the door to bring Naruto back to the real world. Naruto glanced at Itachi, so. New mission? Yeah, this one's interesting said Itachi in an amused voice. Hmm really, so what are we doing? Asked Naruto in a passive tone. It's more like what you are doing? Itachi continued in the same voice. Great guessing games again. Itachi just loves this stuff, he has information which I have no way of knowing and then teases me with it. What do you mean? Asked Naruto in a half-bored tone. It's a solo mission for you, replied Itachi with a slight smile. Naruto raised his eyebrow slightly, since when does the Akatsuki send me on solo missions? Hell since when does it send anyone on solo missions? Where? 
asked Naruto. A very interesting place replied Itachi. Amuse me, said Naruto in a very bored, but slightly frustrated tone. Itachi smiled and said the one word that almost made Naruto fall off the couch, Konoha. Chapter 8, Happy? Reunion. A solitary figure stood outside the wooden gates of Konoha. He was clad in almost all black. He had black travel shoes, black pants with multiple pockets and had a kunai holster on his right leg. He had a black jacket, the left sleeve of which was cut off at the elbow. His left arm was bandaged from the shoulder down to the wrist. He wore a black face mask. His dark blue eyes seemed to be somewhat violet and his dirty blonde hair had streaks of red going through it. If his hair didn't completely cover his ears, one would see that they were slightly pointed and had orange-red hair growing on top. He wore his forehead protector tied around the upper part of his left arm. The forehead protector had the hidden grass village's symbol on it. Never thought I would come back here again. Especially under these circumstances, mused Naruto. Five years. And here I am. Last time my back was to the gates, this time my front, Naruto sighed deeply, my source of pain is right there in front of me. Images flashed in Naruto's head, the stares, the glares, the abuse, the mocking, the put-downs, and much more. Naruto shook his head to rid himself of all this shit, this isn't a revenge trip, can't let my feelings get in the way. Flashback. I'm going where? yelled Naruto jumping up to his feet. Konoha, calmly answered Itachi. Konoha? Yes, the hidden leaf village in the fire country. I know what Konoha is, said Naruto in an annoyed voice. Then why do you keep asking? said Itachi with a grin. Naruto let out a frustrated sigh, but seemed to calm down a bit, Konoha, huh? Naruto scoffed, why are they sending me of all people? asked Naruto in a disgusted tone. Then continued in a sarcastic tone, what, do they want me murder everybody? Itachi sharply breathed out of his nose and threw Naruto the scroll. Naruto opened it and quickly skimmed through it, his eyebrows rising more and more as he went through the scroll. Well, this is certainly interesting said Naruto. Wouldn't it be better to go after the Jounin exam is over? Asked Naruto in a contemplative tone, I mean the security will be less, once the hype is over. Getting in, for foreigners, is easier this way replied Itachi. True, all I have to do it take an identity from some other village, said Naruto but wouldn't it be better if both of us go? I mean it'd be less suspicious. Yes, it would be better, said Itachi however management said something about testing your power or showing off your power. If a single ninja can do this, then what about a group? Right? Questioned Naruto rhetorically this would be the Akatsuki's show of power. Interpret it as you will, that's what Rito said. In that case, I'll have to choose a village with an initially small amount of people. If you unroll the scroll a bit more you will see that the list of contestants is already prepared and formed Itachi. Naruto did as instructed and saw the list, so management is being helpful for once. Hmm. Either this one or that one. Wait a second the grass will do perfectly, mused Naruto, they are only sending two people. I just hope at least one is a guy, I wouldn't want to fight while in sexy no jutsu form. Chuckled Naruto, come to think of it, I have done that in a long while. Ah. The memories of youth. Naruto's smile quickly faded, the happy ones at least. The leaf always seems to have the most, said Naruto. The hosting village does usually have the most participants, explained Itachi. All right, off to find the grass participants and get a new identity said Naruto heading to the door. Good luck, Naruto said Itachi with a small smile, I'll be on the outskirts of the village, throughout the exam, just in case. Thanks, take care of yourself said Naruto and rushed out. You too, kiddo, you too said Itachi in a caring voice you've got the more dangerous assignment. Going back to your home village is always difficult for people like us, whispered Itachi in a distant voice. The list is as follows. Leaf, 11, Sand, 3, Stone, 6, Snow, 3, Mist, 6, Waterfall, 4, Rain, 7, Grass, 2, Cloud, 5. And flashback. Well here goes. Mission start. Naruto thought as he calmly walked toward the gates. As soon as he got close enough, a guard motioned him to stop and asked for his papers. Not Sashi of the grass, huh? Asked the guard attending the Jounin exam? Yes, answered Not Sashi. A.N., from now on, until I say otherwise, I'll refer to Naruto by his fake identity. Aren't you coming a little late, I mean the exam starts tomorrow said the guard. I was delayed. Answered Not Sashi simply and then added, on a mission. 
Understandable. Replies the guard still looking through the papers. Hey, it says here that there should be two ninjas from the hidden grass, question the guard. There should have been, but. She was killed on her previous mission, not Sashi managed to answer sadly. It's partly true. She was killed. By me. Well both of the ninjas from the grass were. But we don't have to go into details. I see, said the guard well your papers are in order, so you are clear to pass. You'll find the hotel about half a mile down this street. As easy as a walk in the park. Thank you replied Natsashi politely and walked away. Back in Konoha. Still can't get my mind around that concept. Focus, Natsashi, focus you have a mission to do and it's not to get reacquainted with old comrades. Naruto found and checked into the hotel without a problem. The reserved room had two beds that Natsashi moved together to become one. He dropped off his bag and sat down on the bed, should I scout now or do it later? Natsashi decided to get some needed rest, since the exam was the next day. As he unstrapped his kunai holster, he held it in his hand for a second and looked thoughtfully at it. Just when I got used to throwing knives, I'm forced to use kunai again. But I can't help it, gotta blend in and throwing knives don't commonly replace kunai. Natsashi held out an open hand with his fingers outstretched and tightened his muscles slightly. Watching amused as his fingernails lengthened into claws about two inches long. It's like holding five kunai, Natsashi smiled, and these are a lot more versatile. Another thing is that if I pour more chakra into them they'll grow even more. Natsashi sighed deeply, of course, all this came at a price. Flashback. Naruto is standing in front of Kyuubi's cage, watching in shock and confusion as the Kyuubi's chakra leaks out of the gates and all over the walls and floor. Kyuubi, what the hell is going on? Yells Naruto. Kid I don't have much time left said the Kyuubi. Huh? What do you mean? Asked Naruto in confusion. I'm sure you have noticed that during the past week your chakra supply seemed to have been growing said the Kyuubi and Naruto nodded. Well that is because I'm merging with you. Merging? What will be the effects of this and what's going to happen to you? Your body will probably have some physical changes and perhaps psychological. I'm not sure exactly what will happen. As for me I'll be absorbed into you. And won't have to sit in this cage anymore said the QB with a slight smirk. Will I still be able to talk to you? Not likely kid said the QB in a passive tone anyway I called you here to give you a farewell gift. Really? What is it? Just take off your jacket and hold out your left arm instructed the QB. Naruto did as he was told. The QB then sent some chakra toward Naruto, which then surrounded Naruto's left arm completely and swirled around for about a minute. During this time Naruto felt such great pain in his left arm that he had to drop to his knees and grit his teeth to keep from screaming. He had experienced this kind of pain before when QB modified his eyes to accommodate a special aijutsu, so he knew that the rewards were well worth the price. Finally the pain stopped and the chakra was absorbed into Naruto's body instead of returning to the QB. See kid, my own chakra doesn't return back to me. Naruto looked at his left arm and saw burning red symbols painted on it. It's a tattoo, kid, the glowing red will soon cool down to black. Tattoo? What kind of tattoo? Asked Naruto looking at his arm from all different sides. A summoning contract tattoo, said the QB with an evil smile. The tattoo consisted of a fox's head drawn on the biceps. From the fox's chin a goatee in the form of a tail extended down from the inside of the elbow all the way down to the wrist and was in the form of a helix. The fox's head also had eight whiskers, four on each side, which snaked around Naruto's arm and the helix, in an intricate design to meet at one point in the middle of the wrist. A.N., this contract will be explained later when Naruto uses it. Naruto was sick for three days with a high temperature, he was constantly thrashing around in bed and had occasional chakra flames surrounded him that would destroy anything in their path. When he finally woke up he found that he grew about a foot, his muscle mass almost doubled, his eyes, ears and hair had changed, his whisker marks were thicker, he had two very sharp fangs that could easily break bones and of course he had the tattoo that the QB had given him. When asked about the tattoo by Itachi, Naruto simply said that it was a farewell present from the QB and didn't elaborate anymore. Psychologically Naruto was mostly unchanged, he became a little bit more possessive of things that were his. He would only need about 3-4 to four hours of sleep, occasionally five if he were really exhausted. His chakra was seemingly unlimited, a Rasengan wouldn't even take away a percent. He never seemed to use up more than 25% of his chakra. He was now blessed with night vision and could interchange his own scent with that of a fox. The scary thing was that he was constantly figuring out new things that he could do. It seemed that after every battle, 
or at least after serious ones, there was something new that he learned. Not that Naruto minded at all. And flashback. That was six months ago. After staying with me for 18 years of my life. He left. Thought Naruto sadly. He had gotten used to having the QB inside of him. When the QB merged with Naruto it felt like Naruto had lost a part of his soul. That little voice in the back of his head that advised him. Naruto sighed, never thought I'd miss that fox. Naruto shook his head slightly, enough now, time to get to bed, so that I will have a good 5 or 6 hours to do some scouting. Next day the Jounen exam participants were set to meet by training area 44 at 9am, Natsashi showed up at about 10 minutes to 9. Forest of death, again? Please not another scroll hunt thought Natsashi, well may as well look around and pretend to show some curiosity in the other participants. Natsashi noticed that the villages weren't interacting with each other, but rather stayed in their own groups talking quietly amongst themselves. Natsashi looked around until he spotted the Konoha group and slowly made his way closer to them hoping to hear some interesting details about what happened while he was away. As he got closer he was able to make out who was taking the exam, he recognized everyone except three people. Sasuke, Ino, Shikamaru, Hinata, Kiba, Tenten, Lee, and Shino. Were the ones he recognized, the others he couldn't even tell which clans they were from and he surely didn't know them. Well that's not good. I need to know who is a liability. Sasuke looked much the same except a bit taller. His hairstyle was the exact same and he also had short diagonal lines going across his cheek, but they were a lot less distinct than Itachi's. He wore the standard chonin vest over a black shirt with the Uchiha fan on the sleeves, black shorts and standard blue sandals. He looks so much like Itachi, it's simply amazing. Ino had tight black shorts and dark red shirt over which she wore her chonin vest. She had grown out her hair again and it was in the same style as it was five years ago. She looks a lot more attractive, smirked Natsashi. Shikamaru, he looked exactly the same except he was taller and had a beard. My god. Is he so lazy that he doesn't bother to change his appearance over five years? Hinata still wore the traditional Hyuga clothes, but had grown her hair out and it was now a bit below her shoulders. Also she now had an aura of confidence around her. Seems like the shy girl grew up to become a beautiful woman. Kiba wore long black pants with his old grey jacket, not Sashi couldn't tell if he wore a shirt under the jacket or not. He looks grown up, but does he act like it? Next to Kiba was Akamaru that now stood as tall as Kiba's mid-thigh, his white fur had taken on a more reddish colour. That dog means business now. Tenten and Shino seem to not change at all except in height. What is it with this village and lack of change? Damn conservative sons of bitches, everyone probably has the same old mentality about the QB and their damn demon child. Natsashi had to mentally slap himself to stop these thoughts, since his left hand was now slightly shaking in anger. Lee had become an exact copy of Guy, I mean exact. I wonder if he has a rivalry with Sasuke? Natsashi decided to keep his distance and instead activated his advanced hearing. Hey Lee, how are you feeling about going into this place again? Asked Kiba. I'm a little nervous about the whole exam, but this place still gives me the creeps, answered Lee. Well I think we are going to kick ass. With all the training we had, we will certainly pass, said Kiba in a cocky tone. Same old show-off thought Natsashi. How are you doing Hinata? Asked Kiba. Fine, I'm pretty confident said Hinata in a calm voice, then added a bit softer I have to do this. For Neji. And Naruto-kun the final name was in a whisper that no one could hear. Kiba seemed to understand and nodded sadly, it's really a shame that that had to happen. He would have been a great ninja, especially since he managed to rid himself of his superiority complex. Yes, thanks to Naruto-kun. The last part was whispered. You still think he'll come back? Asked Kiba. I have to believe. Believe that we didn't lose two ninjas in that one mission, she gave a slight glare in Sasuke's direction. Nice to see he's not well liked, Natsashi smirked behind his mask. Yeah, said Kiba sadly, with Neji dying and Naruto going away. So Neji never did recover. Interesting. Naruto then shifted his attention to Tenten, Ino, and Shikamaru. Hey how come Kuji isn't participating? Asked Tenten. He can't, said Shikamaru sadly. Why not? I've worked with him several times and he's pretty strong, said Tenten. His health doesn't permit him to become a Jounin, said Ino his body just won't be able to handle that kind of stress. Oh yay that's right, he never fully recovered from five years ago. Sorry I asked apologize Tenten. No, it's alright, said Shikamaru. Seems that so much shit happened on that one mission, 
not Sashi's side at least he was able to become a Chonin. He's a good person and a good ninja, he deserves it. Ten Ten suddenly smiled slyly, anyway how are you two Naras doing? Hey, we aren't married yet retorted Ino pushing Ten Ten slightly. Shikamaru just looked bored as usual and mumbled something about troublesome women. So, Ino and Shikamaru. Interesting. A lot has happened while I was out. Akamaru's barking, made Natsashi refocus his attention on Kiba. Natsashi noticed that Akamaru seemed to be looking at him. What is it boy? What do you smell? Asked Kiba. Natsashi instantly hid himself in the crowd, his little espionage session over. What, you smell a fox? The grass nin is suspicious? Kiba repeated what Akamaru said. Shit, maybe changing my scent to a fox's wasn't such a good idea. I forgot foxes are taboo in Konoha. Gotta be careful not summon one here. Just then the examiner for the test appeared in Storm of Leaves. He was dressed in regular jounin clothes with his forehead protector on his head, except it was tilted down to cover his left eye. A.N., if you don't know who this is, re-read the whole manga. Out of all the possibilities it had to him. Seems I'm gonna have no luck here, Natsashi's right arm shook in anger at the sight of his former teacher. Oh how I hope to go up against his prized student. I wonder how good Sasuke is with the Sharingan and whether or not he has Mangekyu. Welcome everybody, to the Jounin exam, my name is Atake Kakashi. Now for the first part of the exam, you will each get a scroll with a special number on it explained Kakashi. Oh god, not again thought aboard Natsashi. For the next five days you will be living in there, said Kakashi pointing behind him, the forest of death. Some of the Chayunans cringed slightly at the name, but most didn't seem to care. Now try not to lose your scroll, since in your hands it is worth three points. In anyone else's hands it is worth one point. To pass this part you have to have at least four points by the end of five days. So each person has to fight at least one other person. Easy enough. You will not be allowed to leave the forest for the next five days. Anbu will be posted right outside to make sure of that, anyone who leaves will instantly be disqualified. At the end of the five-day time period you are to report to the tower in the middle of the forest. The tower's doors will open only after the five-day period is up, explained Kakashi any questions? No one said anything and Kakashi told everyone that the exam would begin in one hour. As Natsashi went to the stand to take his scroll, he overheard the conversation between Kakashi and Kurenai. I'm surprised you were on time said Kurenai. Kakashi put his hand on the back of his head, well, you see the Hokage threatened some horrible things if I were late. Really? Like what? Asked Kurenai. She said she would personally come into my house and burn all the Come Come Paradise books I owned answered Kakashi. Kurenai's eyebrow twitched a couple of times before she finally socked him in the face, then just turned around and walked away from him mumbling something about perverts. And some things never change. One hour later. Natsashi was jumping through the forest looking for Kiba, when he suddenly smelled three ninjas in front of him. It's those three leaf nin that I don't know. Natsashi instantly created a cage bushin and sent it to explore on the ground, while the real Natsashi followed in the trees. The clone ran into the clearing to find that no one was there. Suddenly it noticed that several shuriken were flying at him. It dodged them rather easily, but was kicked in the stomach by someone and sent flying into a tree. The three leaf nin then jumped down from their hiding places and started moving towards the fallen clone. What idiots! Thought Natsashi with a small sigh. Natsashi waited until the three ninjas were right next to his clone and then finally jumped down performing hand seals in mid-air. He landed with absolute silence, whispered Kaden, Karu Enden, brought his fingers to his mouth and breathed out fire. The ninjas barely had time to turn their heads around when the fire upon them. They screamed as the flames consumed them. Once the jutsu was done, Natsashi looked the burned corpses of three ninjas. Idiots. Gathering like that over a clone. PSH. Rookies. Natsashi searched them and found the scrolls were unharmed. Seems they are smarter this time and actually put a barrier jutsu on the scroll. Thank you, said Natsashi to the corpses as he pocketed the scrolls and ran off to find Kiba. Kiba was walking through a small clearing with Akamaru at his side. Suddenly Akamaru turned his head and growled. What is it Akamaru? asked Kiba looking around. Akamaru barked. That fox smell again, huh? Kiba contemplated then yelled out come out and fight like a man. Natsashi chuckled and walked out into the clearing, hello Kiba. How the hell do you know my name? Yelled Kiba. Don't recognize? Said Natsashi in a flat tone that's too bad. Natsashi tilted his head to the side and asked, how about now? What the hell? 
thought a bewildered Kiba his scent just changed. That's impossible. Yet it's somehow familiar. Don't remember? Natsashi continued in the flat tone seems your memory isn't that good Kiba. My memory? Wait a second chills ran down Kiba's spine could it be? Could it be? Who? Continued Natsashi. Naruto? Asked Kiba uncertainly. Yes Kiba, long time no see. Natsashi's tone was beginning to unnerve Kiba. Also the fact that Natsashi's eyes were completely cold made Kiba shiver a little bit, but he didn't pay attention to it. So you finally returned? Asked Kiba in a happy tone so good to have you back. Natsashi couldn't help but smirk under his mask, he's relaxing, his defenses are falling. Thank you Kiba you're making this a lot easier. For as long as I'm back. Countered Natsashi. What do you mean by that? Said Kiba with a hint of confusion in his voice. Let's just say I'm not planning to stay for long answered Natsashi in a sly tone. You've joined another village haven't you? Asked Kiba motioning to the forehead protector on Natsashi's arm. Oh this. This is borrowed, in the interest of getting into Konoha. Borrowed? Asked Kiba slowly raising his defenses once again, then why are you here? Then as an afterthought added, to get the Jounin title right? Thank you Kiba you kept your defenses down just long enough for me to set everything up. It's not about the title. It's about the skill replied Natsashi in a cold tone. Natsashi's heightened senses told him that they were completely alone, so he didn't mind disclosing this information to Kiba. And I'm not here on behalf of any village, but I am here on behalf of an organization, said Natsashi slyly. Organization? What the hell could he mean by that? But by the looks of it he expects me to know. Kiba mused thoughtfully Hokage same mentioned something about an organization some time ago. Wait. If I remember correctly she said that that organization had been looking for Naruto. But no way. Natsashi noted Kiba's eyes flash in confused realization and said, Yes Kiba it is the one you are thinking of. The fear was clearly written on Kiba's face for several seconds before he finally composed himself and that fear turned to anger. You. You betrayed the leaf. Growled Kiba and Akamaru. Natsashi laughed slightly, What's the matter Kiba, didn't expect me to be an enemy. I'm gonna kill you yelled Kiba you will die a traitor's death. There he goes again telling me his goal. And it looks like he's blinded by emotion, betrayal if I'm not mistaken. You're making this too easy Kiba. Beast effect Ninpa yelled Kiba beast human Bushin. Kiba grew claws and Akamaru transformed into Kiba. Piercing Fang yelled Kiba, as he and Akamaru spun about their center wildly and headed straight for Natsashi. This old technique? How do you expect to win against me using something I have already seen? thought Natsashi in a bored tone. Natsashi merely placed his hands in the chakra summoning position, Raiten, electric wall no jutsu he whispered. Suddenly the outlines of a chain-linked fence made up of electricity became visible right in front of Kiba. Kiba saw it, but could not bring himself or Akamaru to stop in time and forcefully collided with the wall. As the electric current made its way into Kiba's body he screamed as his muscles were being burned, Akamaru was forced to return to his original state and also whimpered and howled in pain. Natsashi smirked, thank you Kiba, you lowered your defenses just enough for me to be able to set this up. Otherwise I would have had to go through a lot more hand seals. At that point the wall seemed to collapse, but did not fade, rather it became more like a net through which the electricity was still circulating. Oh dear me, said Natsashi in a fake carrying tone did I forget to mention that this is an electric wall, chakra net combo. Natsashi then stretched out his right hand, with the palm pointing upwards and wiggled his fingers in what seemed to be a random order. However every time he wiggled a finger Kiba and Akamaru would howl in pain. You see Kiba, through the use of chakra strings I am controlling the amount of chakra going into the chakra net. This way also allows me to contrast and expand the net as I see fit. The chakra is actually being converted to electric energy, hence the name electric chakra net. Natsashi suddenly shook off his hand and the chakra net disappeared. Natsashi quietly surveyed the damage he had done. Akamaru was completely knocked out, perhaps dead, and Kiba was struggling to get to his feet. Ah, sighed Natsashi enough is enough Kiba. Time to end this, said Natsashi in a cold bored tone. Suddenly Kiba felt pain in his back and chest. He looked down and his eyes widened in horror. A hand, a clawed hand completely covered in blood was sticking out of his chest. Kiba's leg muscles no longer held him up, this hand was the only thing that was keeping him from falling. He suddenly noticed that the Natsashi in front of him disappeared in a cloud of smoke, that was a cage Bushin? Blood was now pouring out of Kiba's mouth like a river, he was finding it difficult to breathe. He coughed, but more blood just kept coming out. 
the world around him seemed to get hazy and spin a little, somewhere far off in the distance it seemed he heard a voice, goodbye Kiba, this was a nice reunion we had. The voice seemed to continue to say something else, but he couldn't make out what. Suddenly his head dropped down and the last thing he saw was blood red before the world faded to black. This was a nice reunion we had, but you're a liability Kiba. I can't have you exposing me, said Natsashi in a completely cold tone. I'm sorry it had to end this way, seems another person about five man team has died, but. Such is life. Natsashi took Kiba's scroll and stood for a second thinking, now who else could be a liability? Sasuke? Not really. Lee? Definitely not. Shikamaru? A potential, he'll pick up on clues easily enough. Shino? Probably not. Hinata? Also probably not. Tenten? Nope. Ino? Hmm. With her mind jutsus and all, a potential. Natsashi then ran off on a random course through the forest hoping to meet up with Shikamaru or Ino. Ino was running through the forest when she suddenly spotted someone out of the corner of her eye. She slowed down and quietly crept up to see who it was. There she saw the grass nin seemingly sleeping with his back against a tree. A smile slowly crept its way to her lips, perfect I'll just use my mind-body switch jutsu and take his scroll. Ino positioned her hands in that special seal and said, Shintenshin no jutsu. Instantly Ino's body went limp, while Natsashi's body began moving. Ino slash Natsashi stood up, took his scroll out, walked over to Ino's body and put it in her pouch. Ino slash Natsashi then went back to where he was before and Ino then released her jutsu. Ino woke up in her own body, checked to make sure she had the scroll, and smiled a little bit, good I got a scroll. Now I have to keep it for the next five days. I better find Shikaku. However Ino was unable to finish her musing, because she felt her right arm being painfully twisted behind her back and felt cold steel graze her neck. Ah, cried Ino and struggled against her captor. Calm down Ino-chan, said a cold voice behind her wouldn't want Shikakun to mourn you now would you? Ino froze, H how D did you know? My name? Nobody seems to recognize me after five years, continued the voice I suppose that's a good thing though. Considering the circumstances. Five years. Ino then saw the body that she had occupied vanish in a push of smoke, a cage bushin. No way. Naruto. Is that you? Asked Ino in a shaky voice. Guilty as charged, answered Natsashi in a slightly amused voice, however it's Natsashi now. Or at least for now. Ino hesitantly reached for the scroll she had just stolen only to find the pocket completely empty. No Ino-chan, that scroll was a fake. Did you really think someone would just fall asleep like that? You have my scroll, now let me go Ino whimpered. Ah yes, but you know who I am, said Natsashi. I won't tell anyone. I promise Ino whimpered in pain. Natsashi immediately noticed this, am I hurting you Ino-chan? Could you just relax the grip you have on my arm? Asked Ino. Then you would have a higher chance to escape, replied Natsashi in a flat tone and I don't see why I should have to chase you, if I already have a tight hold. Release me, commanded Ino, or. I'll scream. And then more people will come and your identity will be found out. Natsashi's cold laughter sent a chill down Ino's spine. You scream and I'll shove this kunai straight through your voice box, said Natsashi in a cold voice after abruptly ending his laughter. Ino trembled visibly. And another thing Ino-chan, there's nobody around us in a half mile radius Natsashi stated simply. WW what do you want with me? Asked Ino. Ah. Getting down to business, are we? Said Natsashi as more of a statement. Well if you must know, Natsashi then leaned in and whispered into Ino's ear, I consider you a liability. LL liability? Questioned Ino uncertainly. Yes, a liability. A liability that a missing nin like myself doesn't need. Are you going to kill me? Asked Ino in a surprisingly calm tone. I like you Ino-chan, said Natsashi while running a finger through her hair, you gave me a much better welcome than Kiba said Natsashi instead of an answer. You've met Kiba? Yes, and you will meet him soon too stated Natsashi in an amused cold tone however. Since you're so much nicer, you will go there more quickly and easily. Natsashi's head shifted slightly and Ino could hear sharp, short inhaling noises. Hmm. It seems we are out of time, stated Natsashi. So, sorry that we have to cut this joyous reunion short, I would have loved to stay and chat about old times, but I must leave now, said Natsashi and brought the kunai closer to Ino's throat. Natsashi then leaned in a whispered softly into Ino's ear, Goodbye, Ino-chan. Don't worry if circumstances permit I'll be sure to tell Shika-kun that you loved him very much. 
Eno's body shook and several teardrops fell out of her eyes, she kun. Why does it have to end like this? And with that Natsashi dug his kunai into one side of her throat and pulled it all the way to the other side. Too bad it had to end this way Eno-chan. But. My mission comes first, said Natsashi while gently placing Eno's body on the ground. Poor Shika kun he was always nice to me and he I go and do something like this. I may as well. Natsashi took out a piece of paper, wrote something quickly in Eno's blood and put it in her vest pocket. He then stood up, did a few quick hand seals and disappeared. Standing on top of the tallest tree in the vicinity Natsashi surveyed his position in the forest. Hmm. Just my horrible accursed luck. I'm on the far edge of the forest, directly opposite of the place I have to scout. Natsashi looked once more at the scenery memorizing the approximate path that he would have to take. Since he wanted to avoid the tower, he would have to go on a slight detour. No real problem. About 20 kilometers so at non-suspicious speeds that would take me about 2 or 3 hours, one and a half if I don't encounter resistance. Six hours later. Natsashi was at the edge of the forest and was preparing to sneak out of the testing area. First it's five leaf nins, now it's five random ninjas. And why is everyone so hell-bent on killing me? I would've just pounded the crap out some of them, but no they give me shit like I'm not going to give up until I die and many other variations. Then when I do kill them, fear is the dominating emotion clearly written in their eyes. Natsashi was just appalled at the absolute stupidity of some of the ninjas. Why is everyone so stupid? I know I'm good at hiding my chakra and erasing my presence, but this is sad. How hard is it to understand that I always move in doubles, my clone is in front and I'm slightly lagging behind. God, the QB was right, stupid, arrogant and ignorant humans never thought I would actually believe him. Natsashi now considered himself more like a half-demon or something, but absolute not a regular human. He had just finished bandaging his right forearm, which was damaged by a wind attack and was now swapping his grass forehead protector for his old leaf forehead protector. Who would have thought that I actually would need this someday? Now let's see. The guards are only posted at the fence, so I'll just use shadow step and teleport myself up to its maximum of 500 yards. Natsashi started doing the hand seals, but suddenly stopped when he remembered a little detail, I can't go like this, I'll need to change my appearance. Natsashi smirked and laughed slightly, seems I only use this jutsu in the leaf. Henge, Natsashi whispered and transformed into his girl form. Sexy no jutsu. With clothes this time around. Now shadow step and I can go scouting after dinner. Five days later. Most of survivors had already made it into the building and the examiners were going to close the doors, when they felt a slight chakra signature heading toward the tower. Natsashi was the last person to enter the tower. He would have forgotten about the exam, if he hadn't reached into his pocket and pulled out one of the scrolls. In his hurry he almost forgot to switch back his forehead protectors. Once inside Natsashi walked up to a jounin sitting behind a desk that was covered in scrolls. Give me your name and your scroll order the jounin. Natsashi of the grass said Natsashi and handed the jounin his scroll. All right I have verified that this is indeed your scroll, so you now have three points, now give me any other scrolls you collected. Natsashi then reached into another pocket and pulled out ten other scrolls. The Jounin's eyes widened at the amount of scrolls Natsashi had. Wow. Well you certainly set the record for the most scrolls, stated the Jounin in a somewhat dreamy voice. The Jounin noticed that five of the scrolls were that of Leaf Nins, did you kill anyone to obtain these scrolls? Natsashi knew that the Jounin was mostly asking this in relation to the Leaf Nins, this is the real world. Shit happens. Now where do I go? Said Natsashi in a cold voice. Um. Just go down the corridor and take a left you will arrive at a small arena. Upon walking in he was lined up along with the other participants. Natsashi looked around the room to survey who was still there. Seems I was the only person to take out any of the leaf ninjas. Natsashi came up with the following list for the remaining participants. Grass, 1, leaf, 6, sand, 2, stone, 1, mist, 2, rain, 2, cloud, 1, snow, 1. In the front of the room a jounin seemed to drop out of nowhere and land calmly in front of the crowd. Good day everyone that survived it through the first part of the exam, my name is Mido Guy and I will be your examiner for the next test. Oh god, he hasn't changed a bit. He's still a freak. Thought Natsashi as he looked at Guy trying very hard to hide his disgust. Still if he's the examiner, then the test must be taijutsu related. Not that I really care. The next part of the exam will commence in two days at training area 29 at 11 a.m. This should give you plenty of time to relax, said Guy with his signature pose. 
Natsashi noticed all the leaf nin sweat drop and shake their heads in disapproval, while Natsashi just sighed deeply. Oh yes and the next test will consist of one-on-one -on -one fights, taijutsu only, yelled Guy. After that all the Chuyunins were dismissed. Natsashi made a few hand seals and vanished, not wanting to deal with any of his former comrades anymore. Taijutsu only, huh? Better make sure I don't use any lost arts. It really depends on who I'm going to be fighting though. Chapter 9, Taijutsu Exam. Two days later all the participants came to the 29th training area. The training area was kind of like an arena except no stands and it was all underground, as a sort of pit. It was obvious that they were going to be fighting down in the pit. At exactly 11 a.m. a cloud of smoke appeared next to the participants and outstepped the examiner. Good morning everyone, yelled Guy. First it's Kakashi, then his eternal rival, thought Natsashi exasperated who's next to Urosen and doing the third exam. Damn it. If only the mission were going a bit better. I might have already been out of here already. We will now start the second exam. The fighters will be picked at random, continued Guy the only weapons you can use are Shuriken and Kunai. However it will be watching to make sure you don't chakra enhance any of your weapons. Also you may not use any blood limits, from now until this exam is over. That includes the times when you are not fighting. That first rule was meant mostly for me, thought Natsashi while surveying the people around him and not finding anyone else with a katana or any other type of midrange weapon. However it is nice to know that my skills won't be copied by that bastard. All of the fights will occur down there, said Guy while pointing into the pit the pit of doom. Everyone sweat dropped. Well that's the UN official name at least, said Guy. Idiot. Sighed Natsashi. Guy then made his way down into the pit and the participants seemed to sort themselves out, in terms of village again, on the ledge above. Natsashi found himself standing on the far side away from the leaf nin, closer to the cloud and snow ninjas. First match will be, Uchiha Sasuke vs Umino of the Stone. An, I don't want to introduce OCs that will probably never be used again, so I'll just BS a name and say which village they are from. Sasuke and the stone nin jumped down to the floor and stood facing each other. Begin, yelled Guy. Sasuke instantly pulled out three shuriken and threw them at the stone nin, who threw his own to counter. The shuriken collided in midair and fell to the ground. The fighters at this time had already launched themselves at each other and were fighting a kunai battle. Sasuke tried to punch and kick at the same time, only to have the stone nin easily counter. Natsashi stifled a yawn, geez, it's an elementary battle. I know they are testing each other, but this is pathetic. How can Chonin be testing each other on a Janan level? Losing a little interest in the fight, Natsashi threw his attention over to the remaining leaf nin. This is so troublesome. Even if blood limits can't be used the Hyuga have a definite advantage over everyone and I kind of feel sorry for anyone that has to face Lee, said Shikamaru annoyed. Yea that's true, and anyone who fights Lee is sure to lose, replied Tenten. It also seems as if Sasuke is playing around with his opponent. You worried about any of the foreign ninjas? Why do you ask me? Said Shikamaru in an annoyed tone. Because you're the genius and probably already know who to watch out for, replied Tenten in an amused voice. True I have been observing everyone since before the test started. And that grass nin is somehow unsettling, thought Shikamaru. I'd watch out for the grass nin, and also the snow and cloud, said Shikamaru. You seem to single out the grass nin, said Lee joining the conversation any reason? He seems more relaxed than anyone here, and didn't even care that he's not allowed to use his katana replied Shikamaru. So? Most people that use a katana are good at taijutsu said Lee. But katana wielders get used to having their katana and become somewhat dependent on it in close combat, mused Shikamaru. Well we'll see, said Lee. He really does seem like a worthy opponent, thought Lee of Natsashi. That grass nin doesn't strike me as a taijutsu expert, yet I can't seem to sense any chakra around him and have to concentrate to be able to sense his presence. In combat the ability to erase your presence could be a deadly advantage, thought Shikamaru and I'd not Sashi cautiously. Damn that Shikamaru. Maybe I should have killed him instead of Ino. Although he doesn't seem to suspect me for me, which is a plus, but. I need to find a way to throw him off. Fighting him to the death might do the trick, that is if I get that lucky. Mused Natsashi anyway, back to watching the battle. As Sasuke parried yet another kunai strike, his lips curved into a slight smile as he twisted his foot and disappeared. His opponent was shocked. Sasuke then reappeared right behind the stone nin and punched him straight in the back of the head, sending the stone nin flying across the arena. Fast, to the normal spectator, but I can easily see. 
His vest seems to be weighted down and also his shins. I wonder how much, commented Natsashi thinking about his own weights. Namely the 500 pounds in his jacket and 250 on each shin. I wish I'd brought my cloak it has another 500, but it does have the Akatsuki pattern on it. Sasuke waited until his opponent got up and then ran straight toward him. His opponent, thinking this was a reckless frontal attack, simply waited in a semi-defensive stance. Right before reaching his opponent Sasuke disappeared and throwing off the stone nin once again. Sasuke then reappeared with a vertical kick straight into the stone nin's jaw, sending him flying through the air, and jumped after him. This move, ha huh Sasuke? Thought not Sashi I wonder if you're actually going to use Lee's technique or if you're going to do that one combo you have? Sasuke then put his hand on the stone nin's back and went to kick him. The kick of course was blocked, but that was the plan. Sasuke instantly twisted around and hit him in the jaw sending him down to the ground, then he brought the back of his foot to his solar plexus to reinforce the collision with the ground. Sasuke, Sasuke. Natsashi slowly shook his head you developed that five years ago, don't you have something better? He then took a moment to reanalyze the last part of the battle, foolish Sasuke, you're too used to that move. You do it by instinct, and assume that your opponent will play along. But you simply can't do that. I mean look at you, even before your opponent fully blocked that kick you were already going for the punch. A more skilled opponent will read through that as easily as a hot knife goes through butter. The stone nin was knocked out instantly, winner, Uchiha Sasuke, yelled Guy. There were a few cheers by some of the leaf nin, but the participants mostly stayed quiet. That's what's been bugging me. Thought Natsashi as he felt a slight mental pressure lift, where the hell is Sakura? Why isn't she here cheering on her boyfriend? There were a few silent congratulations as Sasuke rejoined his comrades. Kakashi appeared out of nowhere and congratulated him. That damn bastard and his prize student. Oh how I wanna just. Natsashi had to stop that train of thought of else he would end up releasing his killer intent or worse. After a few deep breaths he decided to just listen in on their conversation. Hey Sasuke, not much support for you now that your fangirl isn't here, huh? Said Lee grinning. Yay! Replied Sasuke in a bored tone. They said they might come visit during lunch break, said Shikamaru. That would be nice, I haven't seen Kuji or Sakura in quite a while, said Hinata. Yea since they started teaching at the academy, they don't go on regular missions like the rest of us, so it's only natural, replied Shikamaru. So Sakura is an academy teacher. Well she could easily be, with her brains and all. She's probably replacing Iruka since, I'm guessing, he's a jounin, thought Natsashi. She didn't participate in the last jounin exam either? Said Tenten is more of a question. No. She seems content where she is now. Don't know how anyone could be content teaching a bunch of brats, said Shikamaru with a slight smirk. Their little conversation and Natsashi's listening in session was interrupted by Guy, the second match will be, Rock Lee vs Natsashi of the Grass. Yes, it's finally my turn yelled Lee. Everyone around him sweat dropped, it has only been one match, said Ten Ten. But I should have been first, said Lee with fire in his eyes. The sweat drops got bigger. Natsashi chose to ignore Lee's antics and instead unstrapped the katana from his back and put it on the ground beside him. He then proceeded to jump down into the pit, soon after followed by Lee. Of all the people to fight, I get the most difficult thought Natsashi with a smirk, this should be interesting. However, I'm not quite sure which style to use on him. Hmm. I suppose I'll play around, let him hit me a few times and it should come to me. This guy is way too calm. Thought Lee, and that cold look in his eyes reminds me of. Neji. Begin, yelled Guy. Lee instantly went into this signature stance with his right hand stretched out, palm facing away from the opponent. Natsashi didn't even move a muscle, instead just kept staring at Lee dead in the eyes. Damn. His gaze is unnerving, such coldness. And he's not even bothering to get into any kind of stance. Lee shivered at the thought that just hit him, he's so much like. Gara. You can begin Lee, thought Natsashi with amusement. Lee then instantly dashed forward and attempted to kick Natsashi. Natsashi simply ducked right before the kick would have connected. Lee spun back around, preparing a low kick that would hit his crouching opponent in the face, only to find that Natsashi was nowhere to be found. Lee turned around to find Natsashi standing at the other end of the arena in that same stance with his arms crossed. He's fast, thought Lee. Lee then rushed over and performed a series of fast consecutive kicks and punches that were aimed all over Natsashi's body. Natsashi managed to dodge all of them except the last one, which he had to block. Lee had performed a kick aimed at Natsashi's right side, 
Natsashi blocked with his right arm and disappeared, to reappear right behind Lee and kick him in the back. Lee was a little surprised that Natsashi went on the offensive so suddenly and being unable to block, ended up flying into the wall in front of him. The observing Leaf Nins were shocked to see that Lee was caught unawares with his back open, damn that guy is fast, commented Shikamaru, I was right, he is strong. To be able to dodge and block Lee like that. That's impressive, but Lee isn't using his full potential yet, thought Kakashi, I might need my Sharingan to keep up with the battle, later on. That was just a lucky opening since he was distracted by attacking and he is most likely not going all out yet. Mused Natsashi, his mind instinctively reanalyzing the last segment of the battle. I need a way to slow him down. Injury is probably the best option. He's much too fast for launching shuriken. Kunai, I haven't used them in a long time so I don't the necessary speed to be effective. That narrows it down to just my hands. Perhaps I could. Yeah. That will work rather well. Natsashi jumped back a little bit and waited for Lee to get back up. Lee bounced up and seemed unaffected by the attack, excluding the bruises on his face. He proceeded to take off his Chonin vest and threw it on the ground with a loud thud. Just as I suspected it's weighted, but he's carrying less in that vest than I have in my jacket. Lee rushed at Natsashi again this time he was significantly faster and even though Natsashi did a great job blocking and dodging he was finally caught off guard as Lee punched him in the middle of the chest. Natsashi was thrown back by the impact, did a flip in midair and landed on his feet several yards away. Lee, meanwhile, opened and closed his fist several times, so your jacket is weighted too? Asked Lee and Natsashi shrugged a little. That's got to be quite a bit of weight if Lee had to check his hand like that, thought Sasuke. Lee ran at full speed toward Natsashi, he's obviously going to do the vertical kick. Now, do I dodge or show off the counter I developed? Natsashi smirked. Lee disappeared right before reaching Natsashi, however Natsashi just stood there unmoving and waited with his hands at his sides. He's not the least bit surprised. Thought Shikamaru worried. It's as if he's waiting for it. Thought Kakashi. Lee then reappeared in front of Natsashi with a vertical kick straight to his jaw and sent Natsashi flying through the air. Natsashi waited patiently for Lee to begin the leaf shadow dance. Once he felt Lee's presence below him, Natsashi began preparing for his own move. Lee quickly undid the bandages surrounding his arms and was about to bind Natsashi with them, when he suddenly felt a slight tug at the bandage on his left hand. The next thing he knew Natsashi had turned around and was staring him dead in the eyes. As soon as Lee had released his bandages, Natsashi instantly grabbed the bandage on his left side with his right hand. Natsashi then pulled the bandage sharply and while twisting his body at the same time. It had worked perfectly, Lee was thrown off by what Natsashi had done and had given Natsashi the opportunity of first strike. Natsashi punched Lee in the solar plexus, causing the distance between their bodies to grow. Within two seconds after the punch, Natsashi bent his legs and brought his knees up to his chin, all the while causing himself to do a quarter of a backflip. He then kicked Lee in the face with both his feet, sending Lee down to the ground at a rather fast speed. Everyone in the crowd, especially the Leaf Nin, was absolutely shocked that Lee's technique had failed. The Leaf Chonin didn't even have time to gasp before Lee slammed into the ground at full force. A large cloud of dust rose from where Lee had crashed. Lee then proceeded to tumble for several seconds and finally his body came to stop several dozen yards away from what was now the crater that his impact had created. Natsashi meanwhile landed softly in a crouching position, in the middle of the arena and stood up at a leisurely pace. The Leaf Nin gasped loudly and stared in absolute shock at Natsashi. They could not believe that Natsashi had not only successfully countered it, but had also managed to give Lee about the same amount of damage that the Leaf Shadow Dance should have done to Natsashi. Natsashi noticed that all eyes were on him and decided to speak for the first time during the match, Leaf Shadow Dance counter, he said in a cold tone. A counter? No way. Thought Kakashi wide-eyed, though it is possible, but to be able to think of one instantly. That's too unrealistic. How the hell? That counter was thought up and executed within 5 seconds is he a genius? Sasuke was absolutely bewildered. I couldn't even see a counter with my Sharingan that fast, but he. Who is he? Shikamaru suddenly broke the silence in a shaky voice, he knew Lee was going to do that. Everyone instantly looked at him, I knew something was wrong when he didn't even budge as soon as Lee rushed him. That counter was not thought up just now. No. He already knew it. That's impossible said Ten Ten then he would have had to have seen it before. Yes, that is the only logical explanation, replied Shikamaru. Oh good, so he's not a super genius. But still how did he know about the technique? Thought Sasuke relieved and worried at the same time. 
still to be able to come up with a counter for this kind of technique. Truly amazing, said Kakashi I'm not sure. But he may have done something else too. Lee slowly got back up to his knees, and coughed out a little bit of blood before jumping up to his feet once again. But something was wrong. Lee tried lifting his arms, but to no avail. He could easily move his shoulders and even raise his elbows, but couldn't really move anything below his elbows. His wrist, hand and fingers shook as he desperately tried to do something with them, but his muscles seemed to not respond. What the hell is going on here? Thought Lee confused and a little scared that he was now at a disadvantage because of his arms. At this point Lee didn't even care about the blood at the edge of his mouth, nose and forehead. Don't worry too much about it, said Natsashi in a cold and slightly amused tone, those pressure points will release naturally. After the match. All the Chonin were shocked, none of them had even managed to see when he pressed the pressure points. There's no way he could have pressed anything, without me seeing it. Plus he must have been pretty distracted trying to perform that counter combo perfectly, Sasuke stared at Lee's condition, still I can't deny the fact that Lee's lower arms are now useless. This guy must be some sort of pressure point specialist. Kakashi suddenly spoke up startling the Chonin, he pressed them right before punching Lee in the stomach. I was right, that guy is definitely a force to be reckoned with, thought Shikamaru his eyes wide at the entire scene. He lured in Lee. Shikamaru started, that time when Lee punched him in the chest. He was thrown back, but landed very gracefully. Shikamaru started explaining, he gave Lee the perfect distance for the shadow dance and intentionally let the vertical kick go through. All the while knowing that Lee wouldn't be able to do any significant damage, but instead would be in a position to take significant damage. Natsashi couldn't wait any longer, knowing that those pressure points are not the kind to hold for very long, Lee was already figuring out that his lower arms were becoming more and more responsive. He rushed at Lee using his normal attack speed which was about the same as Lee's speed without his vest. Natsashi jumped up and kicked Lee in the right side of his head. Lee would have flown halfway across the room had Natsashi not grabbed him by his right arm and pulled him back, instantly pressing a point on Lee's right shoulder. Natsashi then rotated around, kneed Lee in the stomach with his left leg and at the same time crouched down and hit a pressure point on Lee's thigh. At this time Lee could only bend over, cough out more blood and try to stand up. Natsashi then jumped up, preparing a mid-air kick that then connected with the left side of Lee's chest and sent him into the wall behind him. A.N., think Trinity in the Matrix. The impact caused a Lee to make a rather large indentation in the wall and fall down into a crawling position. He coughed out more blood, but did not give up and struggle to stand up. Once back up on his feet he rejoiced when he found that he could once again move his left hand, it was extremely sore, but that was better than nothing. However his happiness instantly disappeared when he found that he had lost all control over his right arm. It wouldn't even twitch slightly, but just hung useless. He also found that if he put more than 30% of his weight onto his left leg, that it wouldn't hold him. Damn it. What the hell is he doing? He's somehow numbing my muscles. Oh no. Thought Lee as his eyes slightly widened in horror. He must be using some form of the Kyusho style. Pressure point techniques. I have no idea how to fight this style. Now that his arm is going to be out for several hours, I could play around with him, hitting more pressure points and make this a very painful defeat, mused Naruto, but I have nothing personal against Lee, I actually somewhat respect him, so I'll just end it. Natsashi then suddenly disappeared and reappeared on Lee's right side, he made it look like he only grabbed Lee by the right shoulder, but in reality he was actually pressing a hard to reach pressure point on Lee's cerebellum. Natsashi then punched Lee in the lower back, However Natsashi's hand wasn't in a traditional fist formation instead his index finger was sticking out slightly. This enabled Natsashi to hit a pressure point with a lot more force than one or two fingers could provide. Lee fell face forward onto the floor of the arena and didn't get back up. Everyone including Guy was horrified. As far as the Leaf Nin were concerned some unknown ninja from the hidden grass was able to beat their taijutsu specialist in a pure taijutsu battle. Everyone just sort of gaped at him for several minutes. Natsashi looked at Guy, calmly and patiently waiting to be announced the winner. Guy was just looking at Lee as if waiting for him to get up any second now. Natsashi was getting annoyed, Lee is not going to get up any time today, so this match is over, said Natsashi forcefully enough to gain Guy's attention, but not enough to appear rude. Not get up today. No way. Lee. Cried Guy in his mind, then slowly regained his composure. Winner, Natsashi of the grass, said Guy somewhat uncertainly. There was no clapping mostly because everyone was still gaping. Lee you were a strong opponent, thought Natsashi it was an honor to have had the opportunity to fight you. Natsashi nodded slightly and jumped back up to the top, to where his katana was. 
While the medics were removing Lee's body and Natsashi was re-strapping his katana, the leaf nins were able to come out of their days and talk amongst themselves. HH how did T that just happen? Asked Sasuke shocked. What was that style he was using? Asked Hinata confused. HH how? JJ just how? Asked Tenten bewildered. Shino and Shikamaru just stayed quiet, but were asking those same questions in their mind. Pressure point techniques. Replied Kakashi slowly, I don't really know any. We'll ask I after the test. I've read about pressure point techniques and styles, said Shikamaru uncertainly, but I couldn't recognize any stances he did. However some attacks did look familiar. Familiar? Asked Tenten. Yes, the one where Natsashi need Lee and then bent down a little lower to hit a pressure point in the thigh, replied Lee the problem is those are individual techniques, but that guy uses them in combination with something else. He's combining styles, said Kakashi. Huh? What are you combining style? Aren't you supposed to use only one at a time? Asked Sasuke somewhat confused. That's not what I meant, high-level taijutsu masters take all the styles they know and combine into one. Their own style. Explained Kakashi. Wait you said high level so how strong do you think that Natsashi is? Asked Shikamaru. Jounin level probably, replied Kakashi it's difficult to tell, I haven't seen his ninjutsu and genjutsu. Though I don't really think I need to. Guy had finally regained his composure enough to get the fights underway again, third fight, Sato of the Sand versus Shalomo of the Rain. Anyone could clearly see that Sato was faster and stronger than Shalomo. Sato rushed at the Rain Nin and fiercely attacked him from all directions. At first Shalomo was able to parry and block, but soon took several kicks and punches to the stomach and was thrown back. The Sand Nin immediately rushed at Shalomo covering him in punches and kicks. Just as Sato was going to deal the final blow, the Rain Nin panicked and used Kawarimi. The match was instantly stopped and the Rain Nin disqualified. Winner, Sato of the Sand. Proclaimed Guy. The Sand Nin was going to win anyway, thought Natsashi. That guy's speed was pretty good, I liked his taijutsu style a sort of a no-mercy attack and don't give your opponents any time to recover thought Sasuke passively. The fourth match, Abarame Shino vs Kurano of the Snow announced guy. Shino and Kurano both jumped down to the arena floor and glared at each, Shino threw his sunglasses and Kurano threw her bright green eyes. Begin, said guy. Instantly Shino took out three shuriken and threw them at Kurano, while himself jumping off to the right. Kurano took out her kunai and easily deflected two of the shuriken and dodged the other one and instantly did a spin kick backwards. Shino barely had time to duck to avoid her kick. He took out his own kunai and tried to cut her other leg. Kurano noticed this and jumped back throwing two shuriken at Shino. He deflected one, but the other hit him in the left shoulder. Shino cried out in pain and looked up at his opponent only to find an empty arena. Where the hell did she go? Thought Shino looking around. Just as Shino turned his head to look behind him. A foot connected with his jaw and sent him flying, head first, into the wall on the opposite end of the arena. Shino collapsed and lost consciousness. Winner, Kurano of the Snow, said Guy. Smart girl. Mused Natsashi approvingly. Wait, that's not fair, exclaimed Tenten, Guy Sensei said that you couldn't add chakra to your attacks. No, he said that you can't chakra enhance your weapons, replied Shikamaru he didn't say anything about your body. A ninja must read underneath the underneath said Kakashi proudly. The fifth match, Sumeto of the Mist vs Keely of the Rain yelled guy. The fighters were about equal in strength, but Sumeto was definitely faster. After several punch slash kick and kunai slash shuriken attacks the Rain Nin started getting visibly worn out and it was then that the Mist Nin caught Keely from behind and held a kunai to his throat until the Rain Nin surrendered. Winner, Sumeto of the Mist, said guy. The Mist specialize in stealth killing Muse Natsashi. Plus, the Rain Nin seemed to be a long-range type anyway. The sixth match, Nara Shikamaru vs Haruko of the Mist Yelled Guy. Good luck Shikamaru, said Tenten. This is so troublesome. Thought Shikamaru, but jumped down anyway. Shikamaru stood there facing his opponent with his hands in his pockets looking like he didn't give a damn. Which he probably didn't. His opponent on the other hand was standing in a battle position with stern expression on her face. Begin, yelled Guy. Immediately Haruko launched three shuriken at Shikamaru, which he dodged easily. She then appeared right behind him and attempted to kick him in the back, but Shikamaru dodged that too. Is he too lazy to attack? Wondered Natsashi. The Miss Nin did not relent in her attacks and came at him once again punching and kicking at high speeds. Shikamaru managed to block and dodge most of her attacks, 
but was hit by several punches in the chest and a kick to his right side sent him tumbling on the ground. The Miss Nin waited until Shikamaru go back up and then threw two shuriken at him. This time Shikamaru parried the shuriken with his kunai. Then suddenly jumped forward, while throwing his kunai behind him. Shikamaru smirked when he heard the Miss Nin cry out in pain, Shikamaru's kunai had hit her in the right shoulder. Shikamaru then jumped back and did a spin kick which hit the Miss Nin on the left side of her head and knocked her down to the ground. He bent down grabbed his kunai and twisted it while pulling it out, making the Miss Nin scream out in pain. Wow, I didn't know Shikamaru had it in him, commented Ten Ten. Yeah, agreed Hinata. Just then an Anbu appeared next to the group and walked over to Kakashi. Kakashi-san may I have a word? Asked the Anbu. Of course, said Kakashi as he excused himself walked out of earshot of the participants. What is it? Asked Kakashi. We found the missing leaf Chonin. Answered the Anbu somewhat hesitantly. Kakashi looked at him significantly, expecting the worst, and when the Anbu shook his head, he got it. All of them? Asked Kakashi. Yes. How? Asked Kakashi somewhat angrily. Three by fire, one had her throat slit and the other. The other? Asked Kakashi suspiciously, who? And what exactly happened? Kiba, we found him. With a hole in his chest, answered the Anbu uncertainly, and his dog seemed to have been electrocuted. A cloud nin? Asked Kakashi. Perhaps. Does look like a Raten Jutsu. But? Inquired Kakashi. Well, as you must know, there was only one person who brought in leaf scrolls Kakashi nodded, and that person was not of the cloud. Yes, but he might have taken the scroll from the cloud nin afterwards said Kakashi trying to be objective. That is possible. Considering the three groups were all killed using different styles. Wait, three groups? Said Kakashi. Yes, when I said three people killed by fire, I meant they were all killed in a group. Using one fire jutsu? Kakashi was surprised. From the looks of it, yes. Hmm. Well, thank you for the information, said Kakashi. Oh there is one other thing, said the Anbu while reaching into his pocket and pulling out a note. He handed it to Kakashi and said, this was clipped to Ino's jacket. On the cover it read, to Shikamaru. I would appreciate if you gave it to him, said the Anbu. Of course, by all means replied Kakashi. The Anbu turned to leave then stopped and said, the bodies are being delivered to the morgue and the funeral will probably be in two days. With that he disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Kakashi pocketed the note and walked back to the testing area, refusing to answer any questions about the Anbu. Meanwhile, Shikamaru held the bloody kunai in his hand for a second without moving, then jumped away letting his opponent get up. The Miss Nin got up, but found that because of her shoulder wound she could barely control her right arm. Damn it. I don't stand a chance if I can't use my arm. She pulled out her own kunai and rushed Shikamaru. She viciously attacked him kicking, cutting and stabbing at him, but was greatly hindered by the fact that she couldn't use her right arm. Shikamaru read through this and managed to lead the fighting in such a way that he soon found himself at her right side. Knowing that she couldn't do anything, Shikamaru jumped behind her and held his kunai to her throat telling her to surrender or else. The Miss Nin knowing that resistance would be futile, gave in and surrendered. Winner, Nara Shikamaru, yelled Guy. Yay! Bravo Shikamaru! You did it, yelled Tenten. Shikamaru quite calmly took the stairs back up to the ground level where his friends waited. After the congratulations were through, Kakashi approached Shikamaru and beckoned him to follow him a little ways away from the arena. Shikamaru followed silently. Kakashi took out the note from his pocket and gave it to Shikamaru, I'm sorry Shikamaru, said Kakashi as he placed a hand on the Chonin's shoulder. Shikamaru looked down at the note in his hands and noticed that the words were written in blood, his heart skipped a beat. With shaking hands he opened the note, it read. Shikakun. Ino chan loved you very much. Her last words were about you. But this was a calculated risk. I'm sorry. Shikamaru couldn't take any more of this and broke down, falling to his knees with tears rolling down his cheeks. Why? Was the only coherent thing that Kakashi could make out of Shikamaru's muttering. I'm sorry. I don't know, said Kakashi sadly. By now, Ten Ten had noticed that something was wrong and ran over to her friend. What happened? She asked. Shikamaru couldn't answer properly just sort of motioned to the note, which had already fallen out of his hand. Tenten picked it up and read it quickly, then instantly hugged Shikamaru and tried to comfort him. Kakashi was able to hold his emotionless mask and walked away slightly, making a note to call Tenten when it was her turn to battle. When he came back to the group, 
he was instantly bombarded with questions about Shikamaru. He told Sasuke that he could go and talk to Shikamaru, but did not allow Hinata to go reasoning that she hasn't fought yet. Hinata reluctantly agreed, but vowed to talk to Shikamaru after her match. The seventh match, Monato of the Sand vs. Haikoma of the Cloud, said Guy. Haikoma used an interesting tactic, in the very beginning she pulled out three shuriken, but never threw them all of them, just two. At the same time she charged at his opponent, still holding the one shuriken. The San Nin thought that Haikoma had thrown all of her shuriken, so relaxed a little bit after parrying the first two. Haikoma meanwhile had thrown the last one, when she was on the San Nin's side and so when the Cloud Nin attacked the San Nin from behind the shuriken freely hit Monato in the middle of the chest. Not willing to lose the opportunity, Haikoma kicked the San Nin in the back then grabbed his shoulders and kneed him in the stomach, causing a mass of blood to pour out of the San Nin's mouth. Haikoma then jumped up a little bit pulled her right knee up to her chest and proceeded to kick the San Nin with the sole of her foot right where the shuriken was still lodged. The result was a sickening crunch as the shuriken made its way further into the body and the lifeless body of the Sanin fell onto the floor of the arena. Most of the other participants were shocked that Haikoma had actually killed her opponent. Natsashi on the other hand was pleasantly surprised that at least some villages had ninjas that weren't afraid to kill. Winner, Haikoma of the Cloud, said Guy. The eighth and final match, Tenten vs Hyuga Hinata. Announced Guy. Kakashi walked over to Tenten and told her it was her turn. She nodded slightly and went down into the arena where Hinata waited. As the two fighters stood there facing each other, anyone could clearly see that Tenten was not in a fighting mood. Shit. I shouldn't have told him until after this exam, regretted Kakashi. What the hell has her shaken up that bad? Wondered Hinata. Begin, yelled Guy. Hinata immediately rushed straight at Tenten, Tenten however seemed to recover a little and threw three shuriken at Hinata. Hinata dodged them and continued her charge. Tenten leapt sideways hoping to avoid Hinata's strikes, knowing that she stood no chance in hand-to-hand -hand combat and would have to rely on her weapons. Hinata noticed that her opponent was simply dodging and trying to lengthen the distance between them, so she increased her speed and managed to catch up. She then instantly hit Tenten in her shoulders, thighs and arms, her hands becoming a blur to the observers. Wow. This isn't the Hinata I remember from five years ago, thought Natsashi, she's good. As fast, if not faster than Neji. Natsashi was impressed. Hinata decided to end it and for her final move, hit Tenten straight in the jaw sending her flying halfway across the arena. Tenten tumbled on the ground for several seconds and then lost consciousness. Winner, Hyuga Hinata, yelled Guy. Good job, Hinata. A lot better than your fight with Neji thought Natsashi. Damn, really, so much has changed around here. Congratulations to those of you who have passed this test, said Guy. The next part of the exam will take place a week from now, said a voice behind the participants. As Natsashi turned around he saw the familiar face of a Jounin, but could not remember his name. My name is Asuma, I will be the examiner for the third test. Oh yeah, him. He was Shikamaru's teacher. That's why I couldn't remember him, he's not smoking thought Natsashi slightly amused. The third test will also be one-on-one -on -one fights, but without rules. The fighters have already been randomly selected, said Asuma. They go as follows. Nara Shikamaru vs Sumeto of the Mist. Hyuga Hinata vs Haikoma of the Cloud. Kurano of the Snow vs Monoto of the Sand. Natsashi of the Grass vs Uchiha Sasuke. Natsashi grinned contently, good. I get to see how much he has advanced among other things. Sasuke was also pleased with the arrangement, a strong opponent to test my strength. As I said you have a week to prepare. The next test will take place in the stadium, it will not be a public event, however some shinobi may come to watch. The Hokage will definitely be there and maybe another cage. Asuma talked and or babbled about the next test for about 15 minutes, most of which Natsashi tuned out and simply disappeared when they were dismissed. Several days later, Natsashi was sitting in his hotel room, contemplating the recent events, when suddenly a familiar voice kicked him out of his thoughts. Shouldn't you be starting the mission by now? It says. I know how much you're enjoying these reunions, but you do have a purpose here, Natsashi. Geez. Can't you like say hello? Natsashi said in an irritated voice. Did you at least soundproof the room? Of course, I'm surprised you didn't notice. By the way that was supposed to be my hello to you, said Itachi. So, about the mission you really should start it. Have you seen that place? Cried Natsashi angrily, it's harder to get into than the Akatsuki headquarters. 
I can't even get within 50 yards without being spotted. God, how I wish I could just obliterate it to hell. Angrily replied Natsashi. Well since you can't do that, then perhaps you need another way in, coolly said Itachi. Yay. I just don't know what yet, said Natsashi calming down, I'm sure there will be an opportunity in the future. What makes you say that? inquired Itachi. Instinct. Something is telling me to stay in the exam. A sort of wait for it, replied Natsashi. Telling you? Or you just want to kill a few more leaf nin? Chuckled Itachi. My habits seem to be rubbing off on you. Hey! I only took care of a few liabilities. You would have done the same, I know you. Natsashi countered and Itachi just shrugged. Aha! Uh -huh. And what about this kid you beat up using the Kyusho Dimok? Asked Itachi. Lee is just going to be out for a couple of days, Natsashi half yelled, I didn't hit any of his pressure points that hard. Then remembering what Itachi said before the start of the mission, weren't you supposed to be outside the village? Natsashi asked. Yay, and you were supposed to start your mission, Itachi said sarcastically. Natsashi's head suddenly perked up, that reminds me, I'm going to be facing your foolish little brother in a few days. Want me to bring you a souvenir? Natsashi's eyes squinted in amusement. Itachi just smacked him upside the head, idiot, you know the history. Yay, yay I know said Natsashi while rubbing his head. Alright I won't kill him, but I'll definitely have fun with him, Natsashi said in a sadistic tone. You want to use IT, don't you? Itachi said coldly. What's wrong with having him have a little brush up with death? Asked Natsashi innocently. Itachi looked at him with a stare that said you do anything funny and I'm gonna put you through so much torture you will be begging that I send you to hell. Ha ha ha. Don't worry so much, would I really kill the brother of my Oni chan Said Natsashi with a small nervous laugh. Itachi just gave him an I'll be watching look and disappeared. Natsashi sighed as he felt the sound barrier decompose. Why is life always more of a bitch in this village, compared to anywhere else? Natsashi asked no one in particular. Yes, I definitely want to use IT on Sasuke. Chuckled Natsashi demonically. Chapter 10, Third Exam. Six days have now passed since the end of the second exam. Natsashi was contemplating deep in the forest, to prepare for the upcoming battle tomorrow. Damn it, I need to get the mission over with thought Natsashi half angrily. The problem is that it has to be done in one hit. Get in, do the mission and get out of there in the village. But I really don't need to attract the extra attention of half the village, so it needs to be done stealthily, but I can't even approach the place, so I'm back to the beginning of forceful entry and way too much attention. Natsashi has just been racking his head for several days like this since Itachi's brief appearance. I'm getting anxious. Something's going to happen tomorrow. Something favorable, mused Natsashi. Maybe I should a bit more sleep. It is 3 in the morning. And with that Natsashi headed back to his hotel room. The next day Natsashi showed up to the stadium with as little time to spare as he could without being subject for disqualification. The rest of the ninjas were already there, standing in the middle patiently waiting to start the matches. As Natsashi got closer he distinctly heard Shikamaru complaining, man it's so troublesome that my match is first. Natsashi had to try very hard not to burst out laughing right there. He then noticed Sasuke eyeing him suspiciously, hey you're not late this time around. Natsashi was inwardly amused. And is that a small hint of fear that I see in your eyes, Sasuke? Natsashi kept his cold demeanor while smiling inwardly. Natsashi looked up to see exactly who would be watching these matches. He, of course, Saw the god I'm Hokage, old hag as Natsashi referred to her inwardly, Kakashi he's probably here for his prize student scowled Natsashi, Guy, Kurenai, Sakura here for her precious Sasuke-kun, Shino, Tenten, and several other Jounin and Chonin. Where the hell is Lee? Wondered Natsashi, but decided to just shrug it off. We will now begin the third test of this Jounin exam exclaimed Asuma. The first match is, Nara Shikamaru vs Sumeto of the Mist. The rest of the fighters please wait up in the waiting room and not the stands. Shikamaru and Sumeto walked to the opposite ends of the stadium, while the rest of the fighters slowly made their way to the waiting booth. Do you think Shikamaru will win? Asked Sakura. I know what you're thinking, but he knows when he needs to be serious even if he's lazy the rest of the time replied Kakashi. Thought I'm still worried about him, Miss Nin can be very tricky. Once everyone, minus the current fighters, was up in the waiting room, Asuma yelled begin. The Miss Nin instantly performed a few seals and a thick fog spread out over the entire arena. Unlike Shikamaru, the Miss Nin knew exactly where his opponent was. The Miss Nin pulled out several shuriken and threw them at Shikamaru. 
Shikamaru heard the shuriken flying through the air and managed to dodge them, although realizing that he was at a disadvantage. Shit if he stays long range like this I have no chance to win. The Miss Nin, took out a few more shuriken and while running around his opponent in a circle threw the shuriken at him. Shikamaru of course dodged the first few and instantly figured out what the Miss Nin was doing, hence could easily parry the other shuriken with his kunai. So, he started to move, thought Shikamaru, he'll probably be moving into close range combat soon. I must prepare. Shikamaru extended his shadow all around him. Damn it not enough water around here to do any good water jutsus. I'll have to settle this in close combat, deduced Sumeto. Again he started running in a circle around his opponent throwing shuriken at him, except this time once he got right behind Shikamaru he lunged straight at him with a kunai. He's doing the same trick with the shuriken again, unless he's really stupid he must realize that it doesn't work. So logically he's using this as a distraction to run in a semi-circle and get behind me. Shikamaru then moved his shadow so that it covered the ground in back of him a lot more than in front. The Miss Nin, absolutely unaware of the Nara family ability, kept running straight for his opponent with absolute stealth. Just as the Leaf Nin came into view and Sumeto was going to commence his plan, he realized that even though he was supposed to be running that Shikamaru wasn't getting any closer. What the hell? I was just running a second ago, could it be Genjutsu? wondered the Miss Nin. Just as Sumeto was about to move his arms into the proper position to dispel the Genjutsu, he found that his arms seemed to be bound by something. Gotcha said Shikamaru in a flat tone, as he turned sideways so that he could see the Miss Nin and the Miss Nin could see him. Before Sumeto could even say anything Shikamaru continued, shadow neck bind no jutsu. Sumeto saw the shadowy hand slowly crawl all the way up his body to his neck. The last thing the Miss Nin saw was the coldness of Shikamaru's eyes as his neck snapped. The mist cleared to show Shikamaru standing over the lifeless body of the Miss Nin, in that same non-caring pose that he usually does. Winner, Nara Shikamaru, yelled Asuma, proud of his student. He killed him, thought not Sashi, didn't think Shikamaru had it in him. Or maybe something motivated him. The image of Ino's dead body flashed in not Sashi's head. Sakura and Tenten gasped, was this really the same Shikamaru they knew? Their Shikamaru seemed to never be able to even win anything except Shogi and Go. But now this, he had killed his opponent mercilessly. Could Ino's death have affected him more than we thought? Wondered Tenten. Looks like Shikamaru grew up. Thought Guy, yet he didn't have to kill his opponent. When the arena was once again cleared, Asuma announced, the next match, Hyuga Hinata vs. Haikoma of the Cloud. Both fighters jumped down to the floor of the stadium and stood apart from each other. Begin, yelled Asuma. Hinata instantly activated her Byakugan and went into the gentle fist fighting stance. The Cloud Nin remained standing in her loose fighting stance, but prepared herself to throw Shuriken and Kunai. Hinata seeing that her opponent wasn't going to attack, decided to jump in and rush straight for the Cloud Nin. Haikoma instantly threw three chakra enhanced Shuriken straight at Hinata and jumped to the side preparing to throw more. Hinata saw that the Shuriken had chakra in them, so merely parried them with her chakra enhanced Kunai. However when her kunai connected with the shuriken she felt a slight pang of pain in hand, but decided to ignore it. The cloud nin, meanwhile, noticed Hinata grimace a little when the shuriken connected with the kunai, but happily noted that her opponent didn't understand what had happened. Good, the less she knows about my chakra the better, especially since she has the byakugan. Hinata noticed that her opponent seemed to want to stay away from her and would rather fight long range. Alright then, I'll just have to increase my speed a little bit more and catch up to her mused Hinata as she transferred more chakra into her legs. So it's true, thought the Cloud Nin, the Hyuga mostly only fight close range and don't really know any long range jutsus. The Cloud Nin then performed several seals, Raten, Lightning Bolt no Jutsu and from out of her right hand lightning shot forth heading straight for Hinata. Hinata was forced to stop her assault and dodge to the lightning, which continued straight and eventually hit the wall behind her. Haikoma performed a longer list of seals, Raten, lightning bolt strike. Five lightning bolt shots out from Haikoma's fingers. Her chakra is being heavily concentrated to her right hand only. Analyzed Hinata, I guess that is the only place she can shoot it out from. Hinata being unable to dodge these simply waited for them to get closer and prepared herself. Kaiten she cried once the lightning bolts were close enough and spun around making her chakra form a sphere around her and completely deflecting the lightning. Those are pretty low-level lightning jutsus, commented Natsashi though she seems to have some sort of plan. Kakashi-sensei, how does she shoot lightning out of her fingers like that? Asked Sakura. I'm surprised you don't know, Sakura, 
could Nin are well known for being able to convert their chakra into electric energy and emit it from their fingers, explained Kakashi. Also because they have used lightning for so many centuries, they are naturally born with the ability to generate it, added Kurinai. As soon as she came out of her chitin, Hinata made a rush at the cloud Nin and managed a clean hit, while the cloud Nin's shock hadn't worn yet. Hinata managed to hit the cloud Nin in her right shoulder closing off an opening point, making it impossible to send chakra to the right hand. Good I knew she was going to press this one. Now to play along with her, thought Haikoma. She proceeded to make it look like she trying to channel chakra to her arm but failing miserably. Hinata saw this as an opportunity to do her 64 hands of the haki, and finish off the match. Hinata got into the appropriate stance, but just as she was about to begin her opponent started performing a long list of seals. The most horrifying thing, for Hinata, being that the cloud nin was able to channel chakra into her right arm, impossible I had just closed it. Before Hinata could react, Haikoma finished her seals, put her hands together such that the wrists were touching and fingers were outstretched and yelled, Raten, spiral no jutsu. A bolt of lightning shot out from every single finger and formed together into a spiral, which then shot out at an incredible speed straight into Hinata. Lighting spiral, seen it done by Reiko-sensei. I wasn't able to learn it though. For some reason I can't combine the lightning from my left and right hand with stability, commented Natsashi. The spiral hit Hinata in the middle of the chest, making the rest of her body shudder uncontrollably as the electricity caroused its way through Hinata's body. Considering that the impact came so close to the heart, Hinata had lost consciousness soon after. Winner, Haikoma of the Cloud, said Asuma. Any more power or any closer to the heart, and Hinata would have been dead, thought Natsashi, but she wasn't going for a kill. Sakura and Tenten were worried for their close friend, they had, not too long ago, lost Ino and they didn't want to lose Hinata too. The medical team rushed to the scene and quickly carried the Hyuga heiress away. Shino was just watching quietly, but internally was also worried for his former teammate. That attack seems like a likely candidate for what happened to Kiba and Akamaru. The latter dying instantly from it, but there's not doubt that Kiba took that attack and was killed by something else entirely. Kakashi contemplated, still trying to figure out who had killed those five leaf nin during the first exam. Out of eleven we are down to two. Mused Guy, however Sasuke's fight is yet to be fought. Guy grimaced at the thought of what could happen to the Uchiha. Natsashi could already sense the tension that his and Sasuke's fight was creating, wait people, wait, you'll get to see your precious last survivor of the Uchiha fall from grace soon enough. Inside Natsashi was boiling over with killer intent at the young Uchiha, hoping that the next match wouldn't take too long. The third match will now take place, Sato of the Sand versus Kurino of the Snow, yelled Asuma. Both participants jumped down and waited for the match to start. Begin, yelled Asuma. Kurino instantly regathered the mist from the previous match, except this one was less thick and seemed to swirl around. Suddenly it got colder in the stadium and close to freezing down in the arena. Geez, forcing me to use my chakra to keep warm, complained Natsashi slightly. Well that's a snow nin for ya, they specialize in manipulating ice and snow. Sort of like Haku. His bloodline was a cross between a mist bloodline and a snow bloodline. Meanwhile the sand nin found himself shivering, since he wasn't used to cold weather. He tried to use a wind attack to scatter the mist, but only added to the cold. Go ahead, keep attacking me with your wind, thought the snow nin, my attack is heavily based on wind and unless he figures that out he won't be able to counter. But I better not give the chance anyway. Kurno rushed at Sato while performing several seals, when she got close to him she said, you kitten. Ice touch no jutsu. A.N. Yuki means snow, Kurino began wildly attacking Sato with mostly punches, the one thing the sand nin didn't notice was that Kurino's hands changed to a slightly bluish color. After several minutes of a taijutsu fight the snow nin backed off from her opponent. The sand nin now noticed that the wherever his opponent struck him with her hands it was slightly frostbitten. Considering that she had hit him all over his arms and upper torso, his movements were impaired quite a bit. Everyone seems to have liked my pressure point techniques and is modifying their own styles for a similar effect, mused Natsashi a little annoyed that his style was being copied. They are so far from the Kyusho Dimok style, it's just funny. Kurino, meanwhile, had already started performing a long list of seals. When she finished she put her fingers to her lips and whispered, You kitten, ice shards and then shots out several dozen small, but deadly, shards of ice in the form of needles. These needles were shot out in a semicircle that covered the entire half of the arena where the sand nin was. The sand nin was already at a considerable disadvantage because of the frostbite and the unrelenting, cold-bringing mist that kept swirling around him. 
He tried to dodge the shards that were flying at him, but was unable to get clear of all of them. He discovered that the place where the ice shard hit him became numb, shit. More frostbitten places on my body. I guess I'll have to try it. Sato performed a list of hand seals as quickly as he could and yelled, Fuuatan, hurricane winds no jutsu. An enormous amount of wind hurled itself at the snow nin, who immediately tried to dodge. Even though she was able to avoid the bulk of the attack, she was still hit by the side winds and thrown toward the wall. The snow nin managed to turn her body around in midair and land on the wall in a crouching position. Not wasting any time and before more wind could hit her, she ran up the wall and stopped near the top. Looking back at her opponent she once again did a long list of seals and yelled, You kitten, I see whirlwind no jutsu. The water molecules in the rotating mist condensed to form ice shards and the wind speed increased. The sand nin was unable to dodge or parry all the ice shards that were rotating about him and gradually the spectators could see that the numerous ice shards were turning red. The snow nin, meanwhile, hadn't moved from her position was continuing her attack. She's going to kill him, thought Asuma, this match is already decided, I should step in now. Asuma then appeared right next to Kurno and grabbed her hands telling her to stop the attack. Kurno looked up and seeing that it was the examiner, nodded slightly and released the attack. As the wind died down and the ice shards fell to the ground, almost instantly melting in the sun, everyone could see the heavily cut-up body of the San Nin. He was down on his knees holding his arms over his head just trying to stay alive. As soon he registered that it was over he simply fell down to the ground unconscious. Winner, Kurino of the Snow, yelled Asuma. Now the fourth and final match, yelled Asuma. He could hear murmuring and rustling of the crowd above him, Uchiha Sasuke vs. Natsashi of the Grass. While Sasuke jumped down to the arena, Natsashi decided to show off and used a teleportation jutsu to get down, Sasuke scowled at the technique. Up in the stands. You're looking rather confident, said Guy. Why shouldn't I be? Asked Kakashi, Sasuke's a good shinobi. Sasuke's the best. Yelled inner Sakura. You're not worried at all? Asked Guy. Why should I be? Said Kakashi flatly, the way I remember it Sasuke could beat Lee while using the Sharingan, countered Guy. Yes, and he can use it right now. Unlike your stupid rules said Kakashi in an amused tone. My rules were very smart, why should people with bloodlines have advantages in Taijutsu? Asked Guy and went on to blabber nonsense, which everyone ignored. You say something? Asked Kakashi when Guy finally quieted down. A-R-G-H, yelled Guy in frustration. But never mind that it's not important right now. You do know what style Natsashi was using in the previous exam, right? Asked Guy in a calculated tone already guessing that Kakashi had no idea. Not the style no, but it was something to do with pressure points, that's all I know. But it shouldn't matter Sasuke's Sharingan will be able to copy and counter it replied Kakashi in an arrogant tone. Guy sighed, then allow me to enlighten you, Natsashi was using the Kyusho Dimok style. Kakashi's eyes widened in shock, no way. What is it Kakashi-sensei? Asked Sakura in a worried tone. But that art was lost hundreds of years ago? Questioned Kakashi of the taijutsu expert. Supposedly. But it seems someone, he motions down at Natsashi, still knows it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't the Kyusho Dimok based on very high speed? Asked Kakashi. Yes, it is replied Guy in a grave tone. Then he wasn't showing his full power at the taijutsu exam. Was he? Kakashi asked in a nervous voice. No, you're right the Kyusho Dimok is based on incredible speed, but for a special reason. The Kyusho Dimok uses combinations of pressure points. To the normal eye it would look like he's pressing one, but in reality he's pressing multiple points. To be able to do that in milliseconds is speed. Well. It is most likely faster than even what I can do. Sakura's eyes widened in horror. Because it is based on combinations of pressure points, Sasuke would have to know where the pressure points are to be able to actually use it. The Sharingan although probably able to copy the movements, wouldn't tell where the points are or the exact force to press them with, explained Guy in a serious tone. My god, whispered Kakashi, Sasuke can't fight close range with him then. Exactly, but not only that, we don't know his ninjutsu capabilities either, said Guy, personally he strikes me as more of a ninjutsu person than taijutsu said Guy looking over at Natsashi. Well Sasuke is very well versed in ninjutsu and genjutsu, said Kakashi somewhat nervously because of what he had just heard. Plus he can copy that guy's ninjutsu. That's right. Sasuke-kun will definitely win. Thought Sakura. I wonder. Thought Guy. Back to the arena. 
Natsashi and Sasuke gazed at each other, each sizing up his opponent. He's too damn calm, thought Sasuke, and that air of absolute confidence. It's too much like Itachi's. Sasuke's frown deepened at the thought of his brother. Begin, yelled Asuma and quickly jumped out of the way. Sasuke quickly formed some seals, Kaden, Hausuke he whispered and five balls of flame sped their way towards Natsashi, who was doing his own seals. To Sasuke's surprise Natsashi did the exact same seals as Sasuke and launched his own five fireballs to counter Sasuke's. Sasuke was even more surprised when the shuriken that he had planted in the fire, clattered down to the ground, deflected by Natsashi's shuriken, which he had also placed into his fireballs. Predictable Sasuke. But how about this? Natsashi repeated his previous seals and sent five more fireballs with shuriken at Sasuke. Sasuke calmly prepared to counter-attack the same way Natsashi had done, when something very unexpected happened. Halfway to target the amount of fireballs increased, there were now at least 50 fireballs coming at Sasuke. What the hell? How can he do that? Thought Sasuke. Sasuke had no choice, but to put up a wall I will temporarily lose sight of him, but there's no other way. Doing several seals and slamming his palms on the ground Sasuke said, Doden, Earth wall no jutsu a massive wall rose out of the ground in front of Sasuke, blocking Natsashi's attack. When the fireballs hit, all but five vanished into a puff of smoke. Cage Bushin? Asked Kakashi incredulously, unable to hide his amazement, how can he do that to a fire jutsu? The rest of the jounin were equally shocked, Cage Bushin is a forbidden jutsu of this village, how could he know it? Wondered Guy. As soon as Natsashi had seen Sasuke start putting up the wall he did a few seals, stomped his foot on the ground and whispered, Doden, earth spikes. Everyone was once again shocked when they saw the earth spikes come out of the ground below Sasuke. Better to do it this was so that even if he sees me with his Sharingan he won't be able to copy, since he doesn't know the secret to performing Doden Jutsus without touching your hands to the ground. Thank you, QB, for telling me to take that scroll from that stone nin. When did he have time to do that jutsu? Asked a shocked Sakura. We must have been completely distracted by the Hausuka to notice. Replied Guy uncertainly. He didn't even touch his palms to the ground. Mused Kakashi a bit frightened, could that one be a clone? Sasuke had just blocked the fireballs and had now activated his Sharingan, so he could see some chakra forming below him. But still he only had a half a second to jump away before the first spike came out, instantly followed by the next. The spike seemed to know where he was jumping and followed him quite closely. Natsashi noted that even though Sasuke was avoiding the spikes, he was still watching him intently with his Sharingan. Fine then. We'll see how smart you really are. Thought Natsashi as he prepared to execute his plan. Natsashi formed several seals a little slower than usual and placed his palms to the ground, Doden, land bind no jutsu. The ground then quickly crawled up Sasuke's legs and solidified, not letting him move. Before Sasuke could react, Natsashi's foot had already connected with the right side of his face and sent him flying into the nearest wall. However right after Sasuke hit the wall, he disappeared in a puff of smoke. So he knows Cage Bushin. The more interesting. Natsashi smirked under his mask. After his clone was destroyed, Sasuke came out of hiding and slammed his foot into Natsashi's stomach. He then followed up with an uppercut to the chin and finally took out his kunai and slammed it into Natsashi's chest. The crowd gasped, Kakashi smirked and Sakura was overjoyed that Sasuke was able to turn the tables around like that. But their joy did not last long. Ouch, said Natsashi, that hurt. And disappeared in a cloud of smoke. A cage bushin? Screamed Sakura as her face twisted from a smile to a frown. All those jutsus were done by a clone. Muttered Kakashi unbelievingly. Down below Sasuke was equally surprised, that's impossible a cage bushin is supposed to break as soon as it's hit. How Kakashi-sensei? How? Yelled Sakura. A chirka reinforced cage bushin said Kakashi, but if that's the case then where's the real one? Sasuke frantically looked around for his opponent and saw him leaning on tree not too far away. Sasuke made to run, but found that his legs were bound by something. Looking down he saw some sort of vines wrapped around his legs. You shouldn't assume that your opponent is dead just because you hit him in a critical area said Natsashi. Sasuke just glared at him and tried to cut the vines with his kunai, but found that they were as hard as steel. What the hell? Wondered Sasuke, and why isn't he rushing at me like he did last time? Oh I see. He needs a source for these vines, they must be acting as a supplement to the roots of the tree and he'll lose control of them if he breaks control with the tree. Sasuke then did several quick seals and simply said, Kaden, 
Gukakuo and shot a massive fireball straight at Natsashi. So he's figured it out. I could counter, but I'll make it look like I was taken unawares. Natsashi then jumped to the side right before the fireball hit him. Just as Sasuke had predicted the vines instantly let go and not losing a moment's time Sasuke's did a few seals slammed his palms on the ground and said, Doden, land bind no jutsu. Natsashi expanded his eyes a little bit in an attempt to look shocked, I knew he was gonna copy me. Now will he do what I think he'll do? Sasuke did a few seals, put his right hand over his left elbow, yelled, Chidori and rushed at full speed towards Natsashi. Yes. Sasuke you are so predictable. A coping idiot just like your teacher laughed Natsashi, but Sasuke couldn't hear his laughter because of the deafening sound of the Chidori. No. He's too calm, Sasuke. Yelled Kakashi in his mind. Just as the Chidori was about to contact, Natsashi grabbed Sasuke's wrist and held him there. Sasuke's eyes widened slightly as his Chidori slowly died. Natsashi then whispered so that only Sasuke could hear, Hey Sasuke, deja vu. With that he broke Sasuke's wrist and quickly kicked him into the wall on the other side of the arena. As soon as Sasuke impacted the wall, Natsashi was already there and punched him in the chest making Sasuke spit out blood. He then kneed Sasuke in the face and punched once again in the stomach slamming him into the wall, making even more blood come out. Before Sasuke's body could fall to the ground, Natsashi grabbed him by the neck and slammed him into the wall once again. He then raised his left hand to his chest, closed his eyes and did several quick one-handed seals. When Natsashi opened his eyes again they weren't blue anymore, they were blood red with a slit down the middle. Sasuke realized that he had seen those eyes before, but could place it. Natsashi then did a few more hand seals and gazed intently straight into Sasuke's eyes. Sasuke felt as if Natsashi was looking straight through him, all the way to his soul. Natsashi whispered very quietly, Hell, level 2. A.N. Explanation at the bottom. Sasuke screamed out as the jutsu started taking effect and kept screaming as if he was being wounded, which he was. Natsashi held him like that for 30 seconds waiting for the jutsu to completely envelop him, after which time he simply let Sasuke's body drop to the ground and walked away, disabling his demon's eyes. The spectators were shocked. One minute it looks like Sasuke's going to win no matter what and the next one of his strongest attacks has been countered and he's taking the beating of his life. One-handed seals, mumbled Kakashi, he already had his Sharon gone out, but still could not make out what Natsashi was doing. He's transferring a lot of chakra to his eyes. It must be some sort of dujutsu. Then when they heard Sasuke scream out as if he was being tortured, everyone simply cringed. Sakura could not believe that this was happening, the Jounin could not understand what Natsashi was doing to him. Tsunade leaned forward in her chair and watched in shock as Sasuke continued screaming even after his opponent had let him go and walked away. Winner, Natsashi of the Grass, said Asuma in a dazed tone. That one statement snapped everyone out of their daze and they instantly jumped down to aid Sasuke. Even the Hokage was down there, examining him. Good, he better get his wounds treated or they will kill him thought Natsashi amused. We must get him to the hospital immediately, yelled Tsunade. Kakashi picked him up and disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Now wrap up this test so that I can go treat him, instructed Tsunade. Will the winners please come down to the arena? asked Asuma. The winners did as they instructed, Asuma told to report back here tomorrow, and they were dismissed very soon after. For some reason, Natsashi calmly walked out of the stadium and went to walk around the village. That damn Sasuke, getting special medical attention from the Hokage. I didn't see her do that for Hinata, or anyone else for that matter mused Natsashi angrily. He walked around for some time and somehow found his way to the north gate. Ha! Huh. I remember this place. Memories of his escape and liberation from the Leaf Village flashed in Natsashi's mind. That night, five years ago, was the start of something very, very great. He suddenly caught sight of something out of the corner of his eye. It was Hinata, walking towards him oh shit, I better hide thought Natsashi as he jumped up to the roof of the closest building and did a jutsu to eliminate his presence. Just please don't let her use the Byakugan, I can hide from that using this jutsu. But Hinata didn't even notice him. She just kept on walking straight towards the gate. That's when Natsashi noticed that she held a flower in her hands, could that be for Neji? Wondered Natsashi, no it couldn't be we left from the west gate. Then why? Natsashi decided to stay in his hiding place and observe her. Hinata reached the gate, jumped up onto it and sat there looking out of the village for several minutes before speaking. Naruto-kun, she said in a low voice, but Natsashi could still hear her using his advanced hearing. A.N. I'm gonna call Naruto by his proper name again. What the hell? 
Did she figure out that it's me? Panicked Naruto already considering several ways to keep her quiet. Naruto-kun. It's been five and a half years, continued Hinata, since you left. Yeah. She's right it has been that long, agreed Naruto considering the seasons. She actually keeps track? He wondered. Why did you leave? Why did you have to go? Hinata said now in a strained voice. I know you weren't that well liked by the village, but. Did you really have to go? As she said this Naruto could hear quiet crying. She's crying. Why? Naruto was now confused. Naruto-kun. I should have told you, before you left. I I I I was too scared, back then, but now. If only you would come back. I would tell you now. I would tell you that. Hinata hesitated making sure that there was no one around. I love you, Naruto-kun, I love you with all my heart. Naruto recoiled in shock, SHSH she LLL loves me? Naruto's mind managed to stutter out. No way. Naruto instantly composed himself again, she doesn't love the real me. She doesn't love the half-demon. She's living in ignorance and doesn't know about my past, she would hate me just like the rest of those fucking bastards, if she knew, concluded Naruto. Hinata cried for a little while longer before wiping off her tears throwing the flower over the wall and walking away, whispering please come back soon, Naruto-kun. Naruto sat there for a few more minutes digesting everything he had heard. She would be perfect, all I would have to do is. Yeah I can pull that off. Yes, yes, yes. Naruto was ecstatic. Yes, she is prefect, said Naruto in an evil tone with an evil smile and an evil chuckle. Chapter 11, Assassination. Yes, she will definitely be perfect, mused Naruto, now all I have to do is make preparations and tie up loose ends. Several hours later. Naruto dressed in black shorts and a grey t-shirt, without his face mask, was standing at the edge of the forest looking over at the three log training area. He kneeled down to pet his toad, thanks Gamakichi, and gave it a cookie. The toad munched down the cookie and disappeared. I prefer foxes for surveillance, but in this village they're a little risky. All right, here goes thought Naruto talking a deep breath and started to slowly walk toward the logs. As he got closer a small figure became more and more visible. The figure was sitting with her back to the center log and her face buried in her hands, which were resting on top of her knees. Faint sobs could be heard coming from the girl. Naruto walked up to her and knelt down, he not a chan, what's wrong? I failed him, she sobbed out, not even looking up. Failed? asked Naruto in a caring tone. I'm sure you didn't fail anyone, reassured Naruto. Yes, yes. I failed him. Hinata trailed off as a thought crossed her mind, Hinata-chan? Nobody calls me that. Hinata's head suddenly shot up to look at whom she was talking to. Na Naruto-kun? Asked Hinata in an unsure tone, is it really him? Yeah, Hinata-chan, it's me answered Naruto with a slight smile. Oh, Naruto-kun, said Hinata and threw her arms around the blonde boy, crying on his shoulder. I gotta thank Reiko next time I see him for teaching me about this kind of stuff, thought Naruto with a silent chuckle. He sure got a hell of a lot more class than Urosenin. It's alright Hinata-chan, comforted Naruto, everything will be fine. Naruto put one hand on her back and the other on her head. He gently stroked her hair while whispering comforting words in her ear. After a little while Hinata managed to calm down enough to speak coherently. Oh Naruto-kun, I'm so glad you're back she said with a shy smile. Really? asked Naruto somewhat teasingly. Yes. Oh, it's so good to have you back Naruto-kun, Hinata hugged Naruto tighter. This is like a dream. My prayers have been answered. It's good to be back, said Naruto with a content but sad sigh. Hinata pulled away from him slightly, even though her body protested, to look into his now darker blue eyes. Caringly she asked, why, Naruto-kun? Why what, Hinata-chan? asked Naruto softly. Why did you leave? She asked with a downcast eyes. Oh that. Naruto's mood darkened slightly, you know when the village that you almost die protecting hates you, the person that you save resents you for it and there's no one that really cares for you, what's the point of staying? Said Naruto softly and coldly. Oh, Naruto-kun said Hinata and started crying again. And I'm to blame for this too. I'm so sorry, she kept repeating. Nothing to be sorry for Hinata-chan, comforted Naruto. Really? she had nothing at all to do with my leaving. Naruto-kun, I should have told you a long time ago, Hinata said in just above a whisper. Told me what Hinata-chan? Naruto-kun, I-I-I-L love you, 
Hinata said blushing as red as a cherry and kissed him passionately. Naruto quickly reciprocated the kiss. Hmm. Hinata-chan is a good kisser. Thought Naruto. No. Don't lose sight of the objective. Naruto gently broke the kiss and looked at Hinata, I love you too Hinata-chan, said Naruto caringly and kissed her again. During the kiss Naruto felt moisture on Hinata's cheek and pulled away, why are you crying Hinata-chan? I'm happy. Answered Hinata, I'm so, so happy. That you're here now. With me, said Hinata in between kisses. Hinata broke the series of kisses and looked at Naruto curiously, Naruto-kun, why do you have fangs? Oh shit. Didn't consider that. Curse Naruto. Tell her about the QB? Hell no. I'm not going to wash by plan down the drain. It's a. It's just something related to my blood limit, replied Naruto inwardly happy at the look in her eyes, she bought it. Phew. Quick save. Not really a lie either. Hinata's look went from understanding to curiosity once again, I'm curious, Naruto-kun, when did you return? She asked of her newfound lover. Just now, several hours ago, replied Naruto. How did you get in? Followed up Hinata. You mean how does a class S missing nin make his way inside the leaf village? Asked Naruto chuckling. Hinata nodded, slightly surprised that he called himself a class S missing nin. Why such negativity Naruto-kun? Naruto noticed the surprise on Hinata's face, crap, I must not be officially rated as class S. Just hope she doesn't get suspicious. Damn it, I'm having too many slip-ups. Well, I did grow up in this village. I know the less guarded places, explained Naruto, but chose to omit mention of his stealth skills and jutsus. No need for her to be curious about my training. Naruto-kun is still great, said Hinata here face lighting up. Hinata then suddenly frowned, you're not going to leave again are you? Questioned Hinata with tears in her eyes. No, don't worry Hinata-chan, I'm not going anywhere. I'll stay here with you, said Naruto once again sealing their lips. At least for the time being. Thought Naruto. I'm gonna go talk with Tsunade tomorrow said Naruto confidently. You mean you came to me first? Hinata asked shyly with a slight blush. Yeah. Replied Naruto softly. How come? She continued. Because I realized during my journey that I really like you, answered Naruto in a caring tone. God, I feel so bad lying to her, thought Naruto with a pang of regret going through his heart. They stayed like that, hugging and kissing until nightfall. Naruto telling her about his adventures, a modified version of course. In turn Hinata told Naruto of what had happened in the leaf since he left. They finally realized what time it was when the cold night breeze swept by them. It's gotten late, Hinata-chan, said Naruto. Yeah. Replied Hinata sadly, we have to go home now. Um. Actually Hinata-chan. I don't have a place to go to, said Naruto sorrowfully. Well it's alright really, he continued with a fake smile, I'll just sleep in some tree in the forest. He turned and slowly started walking toward the forest. Hinata contemplated for a bit, but in the end could not stand the thought of her lover sleeping in the forest. Wait Naruto-kun, cried Hinata, don't go. Naruto couldn't help but smirk mischievously, so far so good. She ran up to him and grabbed his arm then blushing furiously said, you can sleep over at my place. Really? exclaimed Naruto. But will your family actually let me stay? He continued sadly. Don't worry Naruto-kun, I can sneak you in. Trust me, said Hinata pulling Naruto in the direction of her house. All right Hinata-chan, I'll trust you said Naruto and followed her. Hinata and Naruto successfully snuck in via a very well hidden back door and were soon within the safety of Hinata's room. Inwardly Naruto chuckled evilly, this is it. Thank you very much Hinata. Not its mission start. While Hinata had her back turned, Naruto quickly did a few hand seals. Then he walked up to her and gave her a passionate open-mounted kiss, during which he breathed out into her. Within five seconds Hinata's body fell limp into Naruto's arms. Naruto gently put her in bed and whispered, Sleep now Hinata. You've been a great help. I'm sorry for all this, but I'll at least give you the gift of life. Naruto then pulled out a scroll from his pocket, put it on the floor and quickly unrolled it. In a cloud of smoke the scroll was gone, but in its place appeared black clothing, a holster, a katana and a backpack. Naruto quickly put all this on and looked very much like he had for the Jounin exam with several exceptions. Instead of a kunai he had throwing knives, he also wore a black hat that was specially made to be longer at the back to completely cover all of Naruto's hair and end at the bottom of the neck and on the top of his left sleeve he had the emblem of the nine tails in blood red. 
Before moving out Naruto did a final check and grew his nails by several millimeters, perfect, the conditions couldn't be better, the dark of the night covers me, Tsunade is busy with Sasuke at the hospital and most of the village is going to be or already is asleep. Well, time to go, thought Naruto and with a few hand seals he disappeared. Flashback. The mission parameters are simple, you are to assassinate five Hyuga clan leaders and the head of the main family said Itachi in a cool tone. Simple? You call that simple? yelled Naruto. The parameters are simple, continued Itachi, I didn't say anything about the execution. Naruto just sighed. That's another reason you're going alone, it will be easier to get one person into the Hyuga Manor. Still no response from Naruto. Itachi then hit Naruto upside the head, hey you listening? Damn it. Let me think, yelled Naruto, I'm trying to memorize their faces here. Not to mention get well acquainted with the manor blueprints. And figure how the hell I'm gonna take on one of the most powerful bloodlines in the world. You can do that later, said Itachi absent-mindedly, I'm just trying to remind you of all the things you have to do on assassination missions. It's not like I haven't done this before, yelled an aggravated Naruto. Itachi paid him no heed, first of, remember that you'll need to bring back the heads as proof. Damn it Itachi! Screamed Naruto rubbing his temples, you're really not helping me right now. Itachi gave him an unreadable look and continued his lecture as if nothing happened. And flashback. Hyuga Hyashi was strolling around the Hyuga Manor enjoying the peaceful night and thinking about the turbulent events of the Jounin exam. He not a lost again. Not surprising really. She's gotten stronger, though still not good enough mused Hyashi. Then there was that grass nin, terrifying, Sasuke was still convulsing when I saw him in the hospital. I wonder what that dujutsu really did to him. Hyashi's thoughts went back to the grass nin, for some reason, I can't shake the feeling of danger from him. A.N. More on Sasuke's condition and effects of Naruto's dujutsu in the next chapter. Just then Hyashi heard the sound of metal hitting metal, what the? Thought Hyashi as he went over next to the door from where the sound came. A few seconds later, he heard a ripping sound followed closely by a thud. That sounded too much like a body dropping, figured Hyashi and swung open the door. He was prepared for almost anything except this. Naruto had just cut off the head of his fourth target and put it in his backpack, geez, are all the Hyuga this easy? This was the first one to retaliate. Granted the rest were asleep, but still. Naruto's musings were cut off when the door burst open, without warning, to show the last person Naruto wanted to see, Hyashi. Shit. I was going to leave him for last. As soon as Naruto finished the thought the alarm sounded, God damn it, Somebody must have found one of the other bodies. Now not only Hyashi, but the rest of the Hyuga. Naruto mentally cursed in one long colorful sentence. They looked at each other for a second, it's definitely that grass nin from the exam thought Hyashi instantly recognizing the assassin. Naruto realized that Hyashi was in shock and hence saw his opportunity. No time to lose, he's not battle ready. Thought Naruto instantly coming up with the next action. Naruto disappeared and reappeared right behind Hyashi. Naruto then hit him hard in the lower back, breaking Hyashi's lower spine. As Hyashi started falling, Naruto took out his sword preparing to cut off Hyashi's head. Hyashi, however, had other plans I may not survive, but at least I'll injure him he thought. He then suddenly twisted around a little and hit Naruto square over his heart. That didn't save him, as Naruto's katana still went through Hyashi's neck. Naruto wasn't in a very good condition though. Shit. A Hyuga death blow. Can't feel chakra in my heart, damn you Hyashi. Curse Naruto. I'm gonna have to use it then, concluded Naruto as he fell down to his hands and knees. Demon regeneration, said Naruto pulling out Kyuubi's chakra. A thin red cloud developed around Naruto and lingered there for about two seconds. It was then quickly absorbed into Naruto's body, mostly his chest. The only downfall right now is that I can't hide this much chakra. No sooner than he had healed himself, Naruto heard a commotion at the end of the hallway. Looking up he saw three Hyuga guards running toward him. Grabbing Hyashi's head, Naruto quickly shadow-stepped away without a particular destination. Elsewhere in the leaf village, Jiraiya was up to his usual business when he suddenly sensed a certain chakra, that chakra signature. I'd recognize it anywhere, it's too unique. But what's it doing here? Jiraiya instantly forgot about his previous activities and rushed to find the chakra. Meanwhile, Naruto had shadow stepped into an open field in the middle of the Hyuga Manor. Turning around he saw two clan leaders running side by side toward him, luck. Without another second's delay Naruto charged up two Rasengans, behind his back. 
the Hugo were too shocked that he had just appeared almost directly in front of them and did not have the time to react properly. So when the Hugo got close enough, Naruto slammed each Rasengan into one of the clan leaders. Unable to dodge they took the attack head on and were thrown back with immense force. Naruto gripped the hilt of his katana and shadow step to where the two Hugo were being blown. Once there he formed a cushion of chakra underneath his feet, unsheathed his already bloody katana and held it at the Hugo's neck level. Once the Hugo were right next to him, he used the chakra cushion to rotate himself 360 degrees within half a second. Back to facing his original direction he instantly sheathed his katana and grabbed both Hugo by the hair. Just as he did that the momentum from the Rasengans blew the bodies backwards, but the head stayed in Naruto's hands. Knowing he had no time to lose, he quickly put the heads in his backpack along with the rest. By this time the rest of the manor was already awake, so Naruto was being attacked by two dozen Hyuga. Shit. 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 Curse Naruto, these odds are hard enough, but the Anbu are undoubtedly on their way and not to mention any other ninja in the area. I don't need that. I can't handle the entire village. Fight off these. Make for the wall. Contemplated Naruto while parrying off attacks, and then high tail at the hell out of here, concluded Naruto. Sounds like a plan. Chakra ripple whispered Naruto and a small wave of chakra hit all the people around Naruto pushing them back. Naruto did several dozen hand seals and heavily stomped his foot on the ground, Kinjutsu, Doten, Desert Sea he said. Instantly the entire field around him turned into quicksand, sucking down everyone unfortunate enough to step on it, which was everyone, except Naruto of course. Naruto's opponents tried to counter this by putting more chakra into their feet and were absolutely shocked when that actually worked against them. Naruto noticed the looks of shock and horror on their faces and smirked, the beauty of Desert Sea is that it pulls in chakra. So the more you use to try and keep yourself afloat to faster it will pull you in. Naruto blessed his natural affinity for earth jutsus. Upon noticing that most of the Hugo were sucked in at least up to the knees he did two hand seals, solidify. The quicksand sea instantly became solid ground effectively trapping all of Naruto's opponents. Now. Thought Naruto. He once again made a chakra cushion under his feet while performing several hand seals, Katan, Grand Hausaka he whispered and started rotating around while shooting out fireballs. Making it look like he was firing them in all direction at the same time. Some of the Hyuga were able to duck under the attack and other more powerful ones were able to use Kaiden to block the projectiles and free themselves from the ground. The ones that weren't able to do either died, of course. By either burning to death or if they got lucky enough and the shuriken inside the flames hit a critical area then they died a much more painless death. The survivors instantly retaliated by firing a grand fireball straight at Naruto from all sides. Few Uatan, wind barrier said Naruto. Wind swirled all around him and blocked all the fireballs. However Naruto didn't stop there, Dokumori, poison cloud. An, Dokumori is what that Final Fantasy website said. The wind barrier suddenly changed color to green and Naruto made the wind from the barrier move outward in circular motion around himself, consequently spreading out the poison as it went. An, in poison cloud, Naruto can use any poison. Naruto had used a high-level poison that need only touch the skin to take effect. Inhaling it causes dizziness and disorientation, but once the poison has sunk into the skin, which is after about two minutes, the person dies. Most of the Hyuga just held their breath and thought that they were safe, some however did actually activate their kaiden fully blocking the poison. During the spread of the poison Naruto had made enough cage bushin to match all his opponents and instantly attack them. The clones that were fighting infected Hyuga, just fought to pull time and waited until their opponent died. However the ones that were fighting the smarter Hyuga all used Cobra Strike, a poison attack where the poison was concentrated in the hands and her claws. If the opponent was hit, death would be almost instantaneous, since it was Cobra Venom. What Naruto's opponents didn't know was that the clones, for the most part, were merely a distraction so that Naruto could escape. The fact that most of Naruto's enemies either died or were in critical condition didn't bother Naruto the least bit as long as he could get out of there. When Naruto saw his chance for an escape, he instantly took it and made a dash for the wall of the manor. As he was going to jump over, two guards tried to stop him, but fell dead as Naruto flew by them at an insane speed. Jiraiya had heard the alarm and was closing in on the Hyuga Manor along with at least a dozen Anbu and regular Jounin, when he just barely noticed a black figure running at top speed toward the western gate. Figuring that that must be the intruder, he quickly changed direction to chase him. Naruto raced through the village and the gates were soon within his sight, there were at least 10 guards compared to the usual three. He knew that it would be a long battle if he tried getting out the conventional way, so he jumped down from the rooftops and onto the ground. As he continued running on the ground, 
he did several hand seals and said, Doden, ground reaper no jutsu. The ground that Naruto had just ran on was lifted up with each passing step, Doden condense whispered Naruto. The newly raised ground behind Naruto condensed itself into a boulder, Naruto kept up these two jutsus until the boulder became about the size of a small house. He then attached as many chakra strings as he could to the boulder and yanked on them with full force, boulder strike he yelled and flung the enormous mass straight at the gate. Not surprisingly the gate and most of the wall around it, broke as soon as the boulder had collided with it. The explosion, that resulted, had caused all the guard ninjas to pass out and Naruto found that he now had a straight unguarded path laid out in front of him. Once I'm out the gate it's over. Thought Naruto contently as he kept up his speed even once outside the village. A little over a mile outside the village Naruto stopped, sensing a familiar presence, Itachi Oni I chan I take it it's done? He asked. Naruto turned around to find those two familiar crimson eyes staring at him, yes, answered Naruto in a cold tone, there were complications, but that's usual. Yeah. I heard the explosion from here, said Itachi, Naruto snorted. Anyway, you get quota? Asked Itachi. Even more, answered Naruto talking off his hat and running his hand through his hair, I got the younger of the main house heirs. Could have gotten both. Replied Itachi in a questioning tone, while handing Naruto his Akatsuki cloak. Naruto put it on, but did not answer as he turned his head sideways and sniffed the air. We should get out of here, he said quickly. Damn it. I thought I managed to avoid pursuit. And why of all people does it have to be him? You're not going anywhere. Came a voice from behind Naruto. Let's go, said Naruto, we can outrun him. What are you doing back here after five years and in his company? Jiraiya continued questioning. And why the Akatsuki cloak? Mentally questioned Jiraiya. Isn't it obvious? Uro Senen? Replied Naruto coldly with a sideways glare at Jiraiya. Could it be? Wondered Jiraiya, have our worst fears come true? Go Naruto. Ordered Itachi, I'll take care of him. What? No, it's my mess I'll clean it up protested Naruto. Go. You're battle-worn, you won't be able to handle him, reasoned Itachi in a commanding tone. Leaning his head to Naruto's ear he whispered, deliver the evidence to the Akatsuki and we'll meet up at our usual hotel. Fine, reluctantly agreed Naruto, then put his hand on Itachi's shoulder and said just loud enough for Jiraiya to hear, make it back safe, Itachi Oni-chan. Jiraiya's eyes widened at the way Naruto addressed Itachi. Naruto gave a last glare at Jiraiya and disappeared into the forest. Jiraiya tried to follow, but was stopped by Itachi, your fight is with me. Jiraiya grimaced a little but seeing as there was no other way, got into a fighting stance. Chapter 12, Resolution Itachi and Jiraiya stood in a forest clearing glaring at each other. Itachi already had his Sharingan activated and was carefully watching the Sanin's movements. The wind gently blew by them fluttering their clothes slightly. This will be a difficult fight, mused Jiraiya, almost any jutsu that I do he can copy. Suddenly Jiraiya took out three shuriken, out of nowhere, and threw them at Itachi. Itachi instantly countered with three of his own. Without a moment's hesitation he performed several hand seals and fired a few fireballs at Jiraiya not having even said the name of the jutsu. Jiraiya jumped sideways to avoid the projectiles and started several hand seals of his own, but was shocked when he looked back at the fireballs, they were still coming straight at him. He stopped his jutsu halfway through and leapt sideways once again, this time however not leaping as far and preparing a barrier jutsu. Once he landed, he slammed his palms on the ground and said, Doten, earth wall. The fireballs were successfully blocked, but Itachi was nowhere in sight. Shit. He used a tracking hausuka to distract me and hide himself. Just as Jiraiya thought that he sensed a presence behind him and just barely managed to avoid a kick to the head. Itachi then followed up with a spin kick which Jiraiya easily blocked and punched Itachi in the stomach. As soon as that happened though, Jiraiya noticed something wrong, his chakra patterns are abnormal. It's like a jutsu being concentrated within his body. Oh shit. Jiraiya could not jump away fast enough before the clone exploded. He was sent flying backward several dozen yards and finally crashed hard into a tree. I should have noticed that his taijutsu speed wasn't good at all, Jiraiya scolded himself for making such an error. Looking up he saw Itachi standing behind the crater left by the explosion. Jiraiya, it seems your skills have dulled, said Itachi, Jiraiya scowled. Here I was, expecting a challenge when facing one of the legendary Sanin. Maybe I should have let Naruto fight you. You bastards kidnapped him after he left the safety of the leaf, didn't you? Asked Jiraiya in a vicious tone. Kidnapped? Questioned Itachi, and safety? He sneered. 
No, Naruto came with us willingly, Itachi paused for effect, poor kid, he was completely hounded by you assholes. Bullshit, yelled Jiraiya. He would never come with you. You must have brainwashed him with your Mangekyu Sharingan and that's why he's acting like this. Like how? Killing the people of, as he says, his long lost village? Itachi continued coldly. He's not the same naive little kid you once knew. He could never have reached the level he is today by staying in that godforsaken village. Jiraiya's look became even angrier. What? Unhappy? Mad, that you had Naruto's potential, but you threw it away? Itachi said coldly. Jiraiya still could not find any words to reply with. We picked him up and developed him, to the point where he can develop himself. He is a good fighter, mumbled Jiraiya in agreement thinking back to the Jounin exam. Yay! He's a good protege, no? asked Itachi with the slightest bit of amusement. He'll never be anything like you, said Jiraiya forcefully and instantly stood up. Itachi gazed coldly at Jiraiya, such confidence, for someone who knows nothing about him. Jiraiya clenched his fist, you think you know anything? I bet he hates being in the Akatsuki and working with such cold-blooded murderers as yourself. Hate us? Itachi actually chuckled at this, why would he hate people that actually pay attention to him? That actually care whether he's there or not, not like your village. Jiraiya was now thoroughly pissed off. While some people would say that it was very stupid of Itachi to anger a Sanin, Itachi knew that if a shinobi lost their cool they would lose the battle. You see he likes us for actually caring about him. But about the protege thing, no he has a different path in life. I'm sure of it, said Itachi, his voice returning to its seemingly natural coldness, in anticipation of battle. Itachi then lightly touched the tree to his left, Dokumori, poison vines thought Itachi as he skillfully directed them to enclose the Sanin's legs. Jiraiya however was not caught in this trap and jumped up to avoid the vines, but not high enough. Itachi immediately saw this opening and had the vines release their poison, since the poison is naturally shot upwards. Jiraiya saw the cloud of poison rising up towards him, Fuu Atan, wind slash whispered Jiraiya and directed the wind at the poison cloud, in an instant the poison was dispersed. Itachi, meanwhile, had already thrown two shuriken at Jiraiya and whispered, Kade shuriken no jutsu. Jiraiya barely had time to notice and react before the barrage of shuriken had reached him. Shit, I can't keep fighting on the defensive, thought Jiraiya as he realized that he was still right next to the tree and hence used it to push himself out of harm's way. Itachi decided to attack him while he was still in mid-air, Fuuatan, wind slash he whispered and fired off a wave of wind. Jiraiya instantly saw what Itachi was doing and did his own hand seals preparing a counterattack. attack wind tunnel said Jiraiya. Just as Jiraiya had predicted when the two attacks clashed, his was more powerful and was able to rip through the wind slash and continue onward to Itachi. As soon as Itachi saw Jiraiya do the wing tunnel, he knew that his attack would be less powerful and instantly prepared a block for the upcoming attack. However Itachi's attack did manage to significantly reduce the wind tunnel's power and because of this Itachi simply made a relatively weak earth wall that easily stopped Jiraiya's attack. Before the wind attack was even completely stopped Jiraiya attacked with a spin kick aimed at Itachi's head. Itachi dodged, but did not have time to counter as a barrage of punches and kicks was thrown at him at an incredible speed. Itachi saw that he was being forced on the defensive, this won't do. He thought simply. Itachi, then blocked an attack with his forearm and at the same time formed his hands into a single hand seal, split thought Itachi and jumped to the side, leaving his cage bushin to hold off Jiraiya. Itachi quickly made a half dozen hand seals and put his fingers to his lips, Katan, Karyu and whispered Itachi and fired it straight at the still fighting Sanin. Jiraiya had of course noticed when Itachi jumped to the side, and had been prepared for some sort of attack from the side, but did know whether or not the Itachi in front of him was a clone or not. Still he decided not to take any chances, Dotin, spiked earth barrier said Jiraiya and a wall of earth surrounded the toad Sanin on each side preventing the Karyu Endon from penetrating and also damaging Itachi's clone when it attacked because of the spikes on the outside of the barrier. Itachi did a head seal and slammed his palm into the ground, Dotin, spike he whispered. Jiraiya did feel something coming up from underneath him, but it was too late the spike had already been formed and thrust upwards straight at the Sanin. Jiraiya managed to avoid a hit to a critical area by jumping up and out of his barrier, but the damage was still dealt. Once Jiraiya landed outside the now crumpling barrier he felt a surge of pain in his left leg, damn. This is a pretty deep gash he put in my left shin. Itachi saw that his opponent was injured such that his mobility and speed are affected and decided to attack him using taijutsu. Jiraiya saw the Uchiha charging him, I can't handle this alone. Jiraiya bit his thumb, 
did a few quick seals and whispered Kushios no Jutsu. In a cloud of smoke a toad, about two times bigger than Jiraiya with two katanas strapped to his back, appeared and easily deflected Itachi's attack throwing him back hard in a tree. Itachi was slightly phased by the rather large toad that had suddenly appeared, times like this make me regret not getting a summoning, he thought. The toad drew its two katanas and stood in a battle position right in front of Jiraiya. Suddenly the toad leapt forward swinging his katana at Itachi, who managed to dodge to the side. But only to get a hard kick is the abdomen by Jiraiya and then a consecutive elbow to the back, knocking him down towards the ground. However Itachi managed to land on his arms and pushed off right before a sword slash came down and almost chopped him in half. Jiraiya instantly made a clone to attack Itachi from the back, while he did several hand seals and put his fingers to his lips katan. Karyu and he whispered and then breathed out a great steady stream of fire. Itachi was busy fighting with Jiraiya's clone and toad, when he suddenly sensed a jutsu being prepared behind him. Turning back slightly he was the Karyu and heading straight towards him, he made a hand seal and went to dodge, but caught a sword slash straight across his abdomen. Shit. At least I got him back. Jiraiya didn't notice Itachi's clone until it successfully stabbed him in the back with a kunai. Jiraiya had of course retaliated and destroyed the clone but it almost lost sight of the real Itachi, however with his senses heightened and the fact that Itachi was heavily injured now, he sensed him sneaking up from behind. Before Itachi could even begin to attack, both Jiraiya and his toad attacked him from opposite sides. Itachi instantly went from attacking to defending, but found himself heavily hindered by his wound and could not defend everything, letting through Jiraiya's kunai, which went deep into his right shoulder. Itachi tried to put up an earth barrier, but found that his right arm now hung useless, Jutsus were no longer a possibility. Jiraiya had of course noticed this and leaving a clone in his place went underground. Doten, Shinju Uzanchu no Jutsu, inner decapitation, Itachi tried to jump away, but because of his injuries he wasn't fast enough and was caught by Jiraiya and pulled straight down into the ground. As soon as Jiraiya had him trapped underground, he stuck a kunai straight through Itachi's heart. Blood poured out of Itachi's mouth and images flashed before his eyes. Images of both Naruto and Sasuke, my two brothers. Thought Itachi, only one knows the truth. He will set things straight. And with that last though the great missing Nin died, his eyes finally releasing the Sharingan. Jiraiya could barely dig himself out of the ground before collapsing of exhaustion right beside Itachi. Used up two chakra. Need to sleep. With that the toad disappeared and Jiraiya fell into unconsciousness. Konoha. Next day in the leaf village all the ninja were on high alert, security was tightened and the village was on lockdown, such that no one could enter or leave the village. Anbu were still assessing the extent of the damage left by the Hyuga assassination the night before. The Godaim paused the Jounin exam and called a meeting to discuss last night's occurrences. At the meeting were present Kakashi, Gai, Asuma, Kuranai, a representative of the Hyuga, and several Anbu. Tsunade banged her fist on the table, where the hell is Jiraiya? She roared. We still have people looking for him Hokage-sama, answered the Anbu captain, however the last time I saw him we were both running towards the Hyuga manor but he never showed up, is that right? Yes, one moment he's right next to me the next he's gone. When we arrived at the Hyuga Manor we found out that the assassin had escaped, so maybe Jiraiya had followed him. We'll see when he's finally found, said Tsunade in a low voice. Oh well we're starting without him, how are the injured? She inquired. Tsunade-sama, all the injured shinobi have been hospitalized and most of them are expected to pull through just fine, informed a medic nin of the Anbu. Thank you, answered Tsunade. The medic nin bowed slightly and sat down. Damage report. What the hell happened last night Hyuga? Inquired Tsunade of the Hyuga representative. It seems an assassin was able to avoid security and get into the Hyuga manor. The Hyuga started explaining but was cut off by Tsunade. Tell us something we don't know, she said forcefully. The assassin managed to kill five clan leaders as well as Hyuga Hyashi, the main house leader, and his youngest daughter Hyuga Hanabi. Almost everyone in the room gasped. To be able to kill the leader of the most powerful clan in the leaf is a feat in itself, but to kill five more clan leaders that is really something. The Hyuga rep went on to explain that those are the prominent figures that were killed, but apart from them the assassin also took out approximately two dozen other Hyuga. He also mentioned that Hyuga Hinata is now in the hospital, the exact reasons being unknown to him. The medic nin caught Tsunade staring at her and decided to speak up, Hyuga Hinata will be fine, she seemed to have been under the effect of a knockout poison. She should wake up later today. Poison? Thought Tsunade, this is weird, and why would she be the only one affected? Didn't the assassin use poison when fighting with the Hyuga? Asked Asuma. Yes, 
however that poison was a lot more dangerous and killed its victims, replied the Anbu captain. I think Hinata will be able to tell us a lot when she wakes up, mused Tsunade. Anyone make any kind of ID on the assassin? asked Kakashi. No. The Anbu captain began but was cut off by the door opening. Everyone turned to see a limping Hyuga being led into the room and carefully set down into a chair. Who is this? inquired Tsunade. A survivor of the attack, Hokage-sama, said the person who brought him and excused himself saying that there were many patients he still had to tend to. Turning back to the new arrival Tsunade asked him to fill everyone in on what happened. At around midnight the alarm was sounded and I instantly jumped out of bed, got dressed and went out to find out what was wrong. After several minutes I heard a commotion in the middle of the compound and ran there to find my fellow brethren fighting with the assassin. Tsunade interrupted him here for a question, how many people was the assassin fighting with? I'd say about 20 people, answered the Hyuga, several people around the room raised their eyebrows. Anyway, he continued with his story, when I got there the assassin was doing some sort of katanjutsu that shot fireballs in all directions. After the assassin's attack was over, I jumped into battle, he recounted the entire battle like that. The last thing he saw was the assassin running towards the wall and getting intercepted by two guards. What happened to the two guards? asked Tsunade. They were K killed, Hokage sama, said the Hyuga rep somewhat uncertainly. Tsunade looked at him questioningly and asked, How did they die? They had their throats ripped out, replied the Anbu captain, also. Judging by the wound, it looks like it was done with claws. You're telling me that the assassin had claws? asked Tsunade. Yes. I see no other explanation. Unless the assassin did a summoning, but it doesn't seem that there was enough time, explained the Anbu captain. Can you tell me anything else about the assassin, height, hair color, eye color, any distinguishing features? questioned Tsunade. He's about five and a half feet tall, blue eyes, couldn't see his hair since it was hidden under a hat and I guess claws would be a pretty distinguishing feature, replied the Hyuga. Hmm. So we know nothing about him, said Tsunade. The blue eyes made her think of Naruto, but she shrugged off that thought. Actually come to think of it, said the Hyuga, he looked very much like the grass nin from the Jounin exam. A few heads snapped up at that comment. Now that you mention it, said Asuma, we haven't been able to locate that guy anywhere. Damn it we should have noticed that he was definitely a much higher level, said Tsunade, especially after what happened to Sasuke. Forest outside Konoha. While the meeting was going on Jiraiya finally started waking up, where the hell am I? Jiraiya sat up and caught sight of the still buried Itachi and all the events of the previous night came back to him in a rush of images. That's right I fought with Itachi last night and managed to kill him. Then another event came back to him, Naruto. How could you go to the Akatsuki? Said Jiraiya sadly. Anyway I need to get back to the leaf, and relay my current information. Jiraiya went to stand, but almost fell back down in pain from his left shin. After several minutes he finally managed to get up and hobbled over to where Itachi was buried. Jiraiya then ripped him out of the ground, threw the body on his shoulder and started the long walk back to Konoha. Back in Tsunade's office. If I may inquire? Asked Kakashi, what had happened to my student? His condition seems to have stabilized late last night, but we don't know when he will wake up, answered Tsunade. But what did that grass nin do to him? Asked Guy. It was some sort of dujutsu. From the looks of it, it's similar to the Tsukiyomi of the Mangekyu, Kakashi's eye widened at this. Except somehow Sasuke's opponent also managed to inflict not only mental, but physical wounds as well, explained Tsunade. But the scariest thing is that the wounds, kept coming back until his condition stabilized. As if the body was self-inflicting the wounds, Kakashi's normally stoic face showed the slightest bit of worry. But how is that possible? Asked Kurinai. I don't know. It shouldn't be, even the Mangekyu isn't powerful enough to affect the mind like that, said Tsunade in deep thought. Hokage-sama, are you saying that the Grass Nin's Dujutsu is more powerful than the Mangekyu Sharingan? Asked Guy. Yes, it would seem that way, said Tsunade, however he probably cannot copy Jutsus like the Sharingan can. Which is a relief. Approximately when can we expect Sasuke to wake up? Asked Kakashi. I don't know, he seems to have slipped into a coma. So it could be days or it could be months, replied Tsunade. Somehow I'm leaning over towards months. Kakashi was shocked, damn it. I didn't prepare him enough. Kakashi sulked down feeling like he betrayed a student. Then again who knew he would be fighting such a strong opponent, who could possibly be an assassin. Suddenly the door flew open and an Anbu came in, Hokage-sama, we have trouble. 
Tsunade jumped up from her seat, what is it? She yelled. There have been traps set up throughout the village, but they seem to be made to target the villagers only, explained the Anbu member. What do you mean they only target the villagers? Asked the Anbu captain. The traps are set up in high-density civilian areas, meant to be triggered by simple civilian actions, such as kicking a stone out of the way or yanking on a hanging string, explained the Anbu member. The things that a shinobi wouldn't do. Mused Kakashi. Exactly, said the Anbu member, we have managed to disarm several, but six had already been tripped before we were notified. There is a team of Anbu combing the village searching for any more as we speak. Have there been any casualties? Asked Tsunade in a serious tone. The Anbu member looked down not wanting to meet that Tsunade's eyes, yes Hokage-sama. How many? Twenty dead and at least thirty injured. Damn it. Why do innocents have to die? Said Tsunade angrily. What are the traps like? She asked. They are mostly set to throw kunai, shuriken or throwing knives. Some, however, made a cat and jutsu come out, explained the Anbu member. Why would the assassin be attacking the villagers? Wondered Kurinai. It makes no sense. It might be as a distraction for us, offered Asuma. But why would the assassin want us to distract us now, instead of last night? Asked Kakashi. Perhaps to throw off pursuit by making us think that he is still in the village, said Guy. Just then the door swung open and a beaten up Jiraiya came in carrying something that looked very much like a body over his shoulder. Hello everyone, he greeted. Jiraiya is that the assassin? Asked Tsunade. Not quite. Replied Jiraiya, there were some. Complications. Complications? Tsunade furrowed her brows. What sort of complications? The assassin himself got away, but I know who it was and I killed his accomplice, said Jiraiya in a somewhat sad tone. All eyes were now focused on the toad Sanin in anticipation. His accomplice was, at this point he dropped the body on the floor, Uchiha Itachi. The absolute shock was evident on everyone's face, even Tsunade could not hide it. They all instantly realized that the assassination was the Akatsuki's doing. So then the Akatsuki was behind everything? Asked Kurinai. Yes, they were behind a lot more things than we know, said Jiraiya, some that we would rather not have happened. What do you mean? Asked Guy uncertainly. Who is the assassin? Inquired Tsunade. The assassin and Itachi's partner, is someone we all know. Jiraiya paused a little for effect. Someone we know? Inquired Kurinai who would join forces with that murderer. You couldn't mean? Asked Kakashi with a wide eye. Yes, sadly I do mean that, said Jiraiya, his name is Uzumaki Naruto. The people that had just somewhat recovered from seeing Uchiha Itachi dead were thrown back into that state of complete and utter shock after hearing this. Then the Akatsuki has. Oh God, said Kakashi. The implications were obvious, the Akatsuki now had the power of the Kyuubi at their disposal. It also didn't seem like Naruto cared much for the Leaf Village anymore, instead he now seemed to be a ruthless killer. Naruto wasn't just the assassin, we also saw him before this incident. He was pretending to be the grass nin during the Jounin exam, said Jiraiya. Although that was probably a cover to be able to get into the village. We have no chance of getting him back now, do we? Asked Kakashi. No, he's a class S missing nin now, said Tsunade, and he's also a part of the most dangerous organization in the world. Yes and it seems that he. Jiraiya trailed off seemingly unable to finish his thought. What? He's what? Asked Tsunade. He. I got the impression that he joined it willingly, said Jiraiya reluctantly. What? Yelled Tsunade. Impossible. Why would he ever do that? Well, it seems that the Akatsuki took care of him and accepted him a lot more than the people of this village, explained Jiraiya. And for someone like him, well that's really what he wanted from life. The people mused Kakashi. It makes sense. Huh? What makes sense? Asked Asuma. The traps left in the village. They weren't for distraction, they were for revenge, said Kakashi in a cold tone. What traps? Asked Jiraiya. He was explained about the traps found all over the village that were aimed at harming only civilians. Hmm. Yea that would probably have to be him. He even glared at me when I simply tried to talk to him and, said Jiraiya but trailed off again as he remembered what Naruto called Itachi. And what? Asked Tsunade. Nothing. There just seemed to be a lot of hater in his eyes, said Jiraiya lost in thought. Damn in Jiraiya. Tell me exactly what happened, roared Tsunade. Jiraiya cringed a little then reluctantly continued, well. 
It's about how Naruto referred to Itachi before they parted. Seeing that everyone was confused and that Tsunade seemed to be getting even angrier Jiraiya decided not to test her patience, he called Itachi Oni-chan. What? said Kakashi. Naruto looks up to Itachi that much? Could be, answered Jiraiya plainly. Then it is possible that he joined willingly, mused Kurinai. Well then let's hope that Naruto isn't like Itachi's real brother, said Guy. Since he's bound to find out what Jiraiya did to Itachi. This is indeed a serious problem, but for now he's gone and will probably not come back here for some time, said Tsunade. So we have to focus on the things at hand and that at rebuilding. Also we can't leave this subject of the assassin in ambiguity for the rest of the village, said Tsunade. But we cannot tell them that the assassin simply got away, countered Guy. No. That is why I propose that we reveal Itachi to be the assassin, said Tsunade. And lie to the village? protested the Hugo rep. Not necessarily, explained Tsunade, we did kill one dangerous missing nin and as Jiraiya said Itachi was Naruto's accomplice. Also the fact that Itachi was apprehended should make the village happy. Several people were still reluctant, but understood that the village's reputation would be affected greatly if they said that the assassin had escaped. So everyone agreed with the Hokage and swore to keep this a secret. After that matter was done, the talks shifted on to the subject of the reconstruction and strengthening of Konoha. Though they all knew that there would be other meetings when they would talk about the issue with Naruto and the Akatsuki. With Naruto. Meanwhile, Naruto was making his way toward the mountain country or more specifically the Akatsuki headquarters. He, of course, did not travel at the insane pace that he, Itachi and Kisame had last time they were close to the leaf, but he still went fast enough so that he was at least a day's time ahead of any pursuers. Halfway to the border Naruto decided to camp out in the woods and get some shut eye, even though it was the middle of the day. Naruto had actually always preferred to travel by night, it somehow made him feel more comfortable. Influence of the QB no doubt, thought Naruto with a smirk. He then looked at the rabbit that was roasting on the fire, so nice of him to teach me to summon foxes, they can actually hunt for you. Toads are nice you can use them on land and water. But Itachi was right, better to have a variety to choose from. Naruto then pulled up his left sleeve and looked at his bandaged arm, this one isn't something to be using just for the hell of it. I doubt even Itachi knows exactly what this is. Naruto's thoughts trailed off as he smelled that his rabbit was done cooking. After lunch Naruto went to sleep leaving a guard fox around just in case. He woke up in the beginning of the night and immediately set off again and managed to cross the border safely before dawn. Knowing that he was no on much safer ground, he slowed down a little and decided to stop at a hotel in the nearest city which just happened to be the same one he had been in five years ago. This trip brings back so many memories, mused Naruto. After a day of rest, Naruto pressed onwards into the mountains and arrived at the Akatsuki headquarters by the end of the day. He quickly made his way inside and asked for a session with the leaders. He didn't wait long at all and was soon called into the conference room. Mission accomplished sir, said Naruto handing over the backpack with the heads to Rito. A.N., in case you forgot, Rito, leader, Kane, second in command, Hejeko, third in command. Rito opened the backpack, took out all the heads and looked at them. He gave Naruto an approving nod, you even exceeded quota? It was somewhere between a question and a statement. Yes, simply answered Naruto. How was the mission? wondered Kane. It had its complications, but I worked through them, answered Naruto. Damn I never did like these people. It sometimes seems like they want to rip the QB's power out of me. Yes, but such is life isn't it? said Rito coldly. Naruto merely nodded slightly. Rito then gave Hajeko the signal to pay Naruto. All right, as was promised 300,000 yen for the quota or 50,000 per head, said Hajeko giving Naruto the money in a suitcase. Naruto continued looking at him intently. Give him 100,000 for the extra head, said Rito. What? Isn't that a bit too much? asked Hajeko. No, not for an heir of the main house it isn't continued Rito. All right, agreed Hijeko and gave Naruto another small suitcase. Naruto bowed and turned to leave, wait Naruto, said Kane. Naruto promptly turned around and looked at Kane. You will be hunted within the next few months, so while you have this next week free you need to return before it's finished and we will find you a place to lie low for a bit. Naruto nodded in understanding, bowed again and left. He went to his room, put all the money in one large bag and prepared to leave for the hotel where Itachi should be waiting, but suddenly remembered what time it was and decided to spend the night here. Better to stay where there is a nice bed and shower, thought Naruto yawning. He left first thing the next morning, 
wanting to get to the rain country within two days. During his journey he thought, Itachi is already waiting for me, and not wanting to keep his Oni-chan waiting Naruto increased his pace a little bit. 